Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Speed Chess Championship. Grandmaster Robert Hess. Alongside me today is my good friend, my partner, Grandmaster Daniel Narodisky. Danya, are you ready for what will undoubtedly be an epic matchup in the quarterfinals of the 2020 SCC? <laughs> Hello, Robert. Good to see everybody. Good to be here. I could not think of a better way to start uh, the morning on my end than this absolutely epic Speed Chess Championship match between Wesley So and Jan Shishtof Duda. I don't know any other words to say. This is going to be epic. I, I can feel it in my bones. Well, I believe that Duda has a lot of work cut out for him because in previous iterations of the SEC, they have gone head to head and it was Wesley So's taking in that match. However, Duda is a new player. He's improved in the last couple of years. So what do you think? You play these guys more than anybody. Yeah, Duda has definitely improved. I've I've had a lot of experience playing both of them in, in Blitz and in the case of Wesley and Classical, they're both absolute monsters. They're a joy to watch uh, and they're both so universal. And it is important to point out that Duda has really, really improved in the shorter time controls, Robert. He is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the three minute portion, but particularly in the bullet. That might be the uh, match deciding portion, uh, but we'll obviously have to see. So it might be a tale of improvement, but Wesley is a stalwart. He certainly is. And while you're talking about time controls, let's remind everybody of the format for these speeches championship matchups. As you see on the screen in front of you, that there will be an hour and a half of five minute plus one second increment blitz, followed by a full hour of the three plus one. And then we get down to the 30 minutes of bullet. That's what Danya was highlighting, saying that's where young Christoph Duda has his biggest advantage. And we'll need to see if he can keep that up against someone who is as strong as Wesley So. And of course, if there is a tie, we get into the tie breaks of the uh, mini match, four games at one plus one. And Danya, of course, when these top players face off, they just want to crush an elite opponent. But there's quite a lot of prize money at stake. And in round two, the winner gets a cool three grand in addition to splitting the other three grand based on win percentage. So a lot of money out at play here. Wow. I'm, I'm looking at these prizes. These are these are mouthwatering. And uh, of course, we should point out that even when the match is decided, there's uh, quite a bit left to be decided by the actual outcome of the game. So there's pride on the line. Uh, there is a lot of money on the line. And this just adds to the suspense and the excitement. But just because of the players themselves, uh, we get a big portion of the of the excitement that comes with these matches. Certainly the case. And, you know, not only are these players playing for quite a prize fund that everybody who's watching can get involved and try to win some cash. Awesome. Guess the move, right? You want to bust the move, guess the move. And there have been some repeat winners that I've noticed in uh, some of these matches, but you can get involved by uh, going to chess.com slash live, trying to your hand at guessing the correct moves as the players make them. And the top three premium guessers will win cash prizes. Well, if you're not a not premium member, you can win some premium memberships. It's a great opportunity to test your hand at playing like some of the world's best while having the incentive to win some cool art cash. Robert, I'm, I'm looking at the bracket here. Who are these weak players? <clears throat> Magnus Carlsen? <laughs> Hik Hikamaru Nakamura? Ooh, Vla Vladislav or Temyev? Yeah, could they have found anybody stronger? <laughs> but in all seriousness, this is incredible. Look at all of these players, MVL, Aronian. Uh, we Chess.com could not have assembled a more elite squad of uh, Blitz, Bullet, and, of course, classical players. This is awesome. Well, before we get to this specific matchup, Danya, while I have you, I have to ask, mm -hmm. look at this bracket real quick. And I'm going to make you pick the winners of this matchup, uh, this, this round. Excuse that me, to me, Robert. This round. Pick the, your winners of this round. I really miss commentating with you. <laughs> I, I was th thinking that until you asked me to, to make the prediction, but I guess I have to stay true to my nickname. Well, we have the probability at 57% for Wesley. I think it's going to be a close match. I think it's going to come down to the bullet, but I think with Duda's recent improvement in the bullet section, I have a feeling that he might make a statement in that final section. Now, this is absolutely no disrespect to my boy, Wesley. I have tremendous respect for him. He is He's a monster. There's just no other way to say it. I think this is going to be a, a very close match, but due to his recent improvement, that might be uh, the game deciding phenomenon. We'll see. Well, you know, you're mentioning it. We have the smarter chess predictions. I have to fight those typically, but right <laughs> now I'm more or less in agreement with it. I am sort of upset hearing myself say those words, mm -hmm. but look at 
Wesley so is blitz rating. He's above 3,100. And let's be real. You add the increment to the clock, he's even stronger. But to JKD's credit, he was really a force against Fabiano Caruana. He started off slowly. He was down three games to none. And, you know, while I had the call, I was kind of like, wait, are these predictions? Can they be real? Dude is in big trouble. Then he went off and won four straight games to yep. close out the longest time control before being completely dominant in the shortest time control. He beat Fabiano Caruana eight games to one in bullet. Oh, oh that is, that is incredible. Now Fabi, of course, is known for his play in longer time controls, but let's, let's be real. Eight one against a player, this elite in any time control is uh, a, an achievement to be very proud of. And I have a feeling Robert, that the reason you, seem to imply that you're going with Wesley here. I don't think it's because of the smarter chess predictions. I think it's because I called it for Duda. If I had called it for Wesley, I have a feeling you would have sided against the smarter chess predictions. You know, Danya, I, I think I'm very uh, agreeable and I'll <laughs> remove my arrow because I was having some fun on the uh, analysis board just before, but I, you know, I don't want to go against you. You're my friend. We get along well. I always enjoy commentating with you. Wow. But I, I think we have to give, based on the history and the speed chess championship and just how strong Wesley So is. And I think one of the best parts about Wesley is it doesn't feel like he's tiltable in the same way others are. He is no. a, a stoic player. And his style, I think, is one that doesn't allow him to fully tilt. Now, I will say that if he is facing a deficit, I don't always believe that his style helps him mount a comeback because it's a very precise style. He's not taking as much risk as other players, but if he starts out in the lead, good luck taking him down. He's a boa constrictor. He He's so universal. He can play a lot of different openings. So I, I agree with you. I think the sort of one could cite the lack of this kind of absolute uncompromising play, but uh, the flip side of that is, is that he can play any type of position. He calculates incredibly well. And as you said, he almost never tilts. He's so calm. He's so experienced. Uh, and for that matter, Duda is uh, to some degree as well. I really haven't seen him had that, you know, explosive tilt uh, either. So uh, we'll see if, if either player manages to jump out uh, to a big lead at, at the start. But as we saw in the Caruana match, anything can be surmounted in the SEC. For sure. And we will be able to see the action unfold in just a second. The players... Getting situated, you see JKD stretching, and we are <laughs> off. The games are officially underway. Wesley So starts with the white pieces. We get a Sicilian. Dana, I'm 0% surprised about the opening because I just saw a young Christoph Duda use this against Fabiano Caruana game after game. And I remember JKD playing this uh, as far back as I remember how the under, under 18 World Youth. I think the under, when I was playing the under. 14. I think he might have been playing the under 10, and he was already playing the Nidorf. Uh, this guy is an expert in the truest sense of the word in the Nidorf, but knight c6. Now, mm -hmm. am I hallucinating, or is this a very uncommon way to develop the knight in the Nidorf? Yeah, and I think uh, knight a5, Whoa, I, this I have not seen. I and guess the knight's going to c4. Well, if you allow me, my knight will gladly hop right in here with the bishop's defense, and actually he'll he lets knight it happen. C5, maybe? Knight c4, knight c5. I've seen that's an old school idea exploiting that pin against the d6 pawn to situate the knight on c5. Right. You're saying that there is a queen in line with the rook. So the rook wins that battle most of the time. So knight c5 is possible here. But Duda goes for it anyway. And Danya, I think this goes to show that allowing a capture on e6 and replacing it with a pawn, that's typically not the biggest deal because you're trying to fight tooth and nail for that d5 square right it, exactly that plays right into black's hands important to recognize the rules for determining pawn structures in the night or as you hinted at robert are completely different you're fighting really over squares here and it's not about the aesthetic appeal uh, of your pawns and that's why we see wesley sliding his bishop away the fight over the d5 square is on and Dunn, I have to say that I like the knight at c4 a lot better than I would if it were on d7. I'm just going to drag the piece over the square, which is where it goes often. You go knight d7, you bring a rook to c8, you bring your bishop to e7. Very calm, you know, sort of natural developing moves, no huge risks in the early stages. But I like this knight on c4 because watch out for a potential sacrifice on b2. Of course, not right now. You have to line up some pressure on the knight on c3 mm -hmm. with a rook on c8 and all that good stuff. But I see a knight on c4. I, I just store that information. Knight takes b2 at some point, maybe, maybe a possibility. Maybe slide the queen away to e1 and, and try to capture that knight before it wreaks any havoc on the position. 
because if you play queen f2 here you might come under some knight takes c4 business mm -hmm. instead wesley sliding his king over so rook c8 the kind of move that would be conducive to uh, an idea that you mentioned robert but I, I feel like wesley's holding this in store uh the, the, the idea of of going queen e1 and taking on c4 knight takes c4 here needs to be calculated i no, it doesn't work because of queen e4 so duda does put something on the c file yeah, I actually want to bring up the analysis board and show what Daniel was talking about. It's a very good point. When you see a bishop like here in line with another bishop, right? These bishops are staring each other down. You have to watch out for tactics. So for example, if this uh, queen uh, went to F2 at some point, let's say here, you have to just look, is there a knight G4 type of move opening up the bishop's attack on one another and hitting the queen on f2 so those ideas are all in the air and donya pointed that out correctly instead we saw queen e1 which was donya's move and taking on c4 and let me ask maybe. you now that the b file is open how much do you like the fact that you were able to take this knight off the board yeah i don't know i mean one of its classical ideas here is to go knight d2 knight f1 knight e3 but uh, i also want a filet mignon steak from ruth's chris steakhouse right now and i'm not gonna get it so Duda might have something to say about this by putting a rook on b8 and maybe a queen on b7. Uh, and the, the issue is that Wesley has to be very careful about how he defends the b2 pawn. If he goes b3, Duda's going to sack on b3 and checkmate him. Maybe he wants to drop his bishop back to c1, but that entails it's, that, that, that has its own problems. Maybe d5. Uh, this gets very double-edged. Yeah, and the, I saw the eval bar just jump in Duda's favor. Mm -hmm. And we'll like just sit on the position for a moment here. We'll mm -hmm. uh, kind of think about it from a broader point of view. And Daniel, this knight went to F1, like you said, trying to get to E3 into this D5 square. If we talk about ideal strategy, white would love to take on F6 and then immediately put this knight on to the D5 square and play knight against bishop. You often hear bishops are better than knights, but not when the knight has a clear outpost and a knight on D5 against a dark square bishop means that the knight is going to be the superior piece. But that is several moves away. And as you just mm -hmm. pointed out, Danya, moves like queen to b7, and then maybe even an eventual d5. You always have to be on the lookout for this d5 move. It's critical in the Sicilian. And if this bishop can land on a3 to increase the pressure down the b file, that would be a big problem. Right. And Duda realizes that the d5 squares and everything, because even if Wesley positions a knight on d5, let's say knight e to d5, and Duda takes it with his knight. He's going to have the idea of going bishop to g5, trying to distract that bishop on c1 from its critical role. That bishop on c1, it's it's like Atlas. It's holding the world on its shoulders. Uh, and if Duda can distract it, that could lead to some major problems with the b2 pawn. So I would consider knight d7 in this position, uh, trying to include the knight in the attack, maybe also knight e8, knight c7, but opening up that line of negotiation between the dark squared bishop and the g5 square instead Due to going full on frontal assault, going, getting the rook to b6. All right. Yeah, this is, wow. this is a, he makes his intentions very clear. He, he saying, does. <laughs> I'm tripling. I am going to sack on b2 if you allow me for mate. And a big issue, as you highlighted earlier, is b3 is not a possibility for white no. because you do have two pawns protecting the square, but I also have a bishop in prime location to just sacrifice itself on b3 so when i play rook b6 you have to find another way to defend b2 and knight a4 will not satisfy white's position because after rook b6 I also have rook to b4 just trying to kick this knight out so mm -hmm. already i believe wesley is in for a tough decision he plays knight into d5 but what if you just capture it like you said and then swing a rook to b6 and try to get that yeah. bishop to g5 well, I guess maybe he wants bishop takes d5 ed, and then rook b6 he wants to take on c4. So Duda keeping the tension instead with bishop to d8. Um, okay, so I guess what if Wesley plays g5 here or something to that effect? I, I think I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to get a pulse on the position. What does Duda want to do? Maybe he just wants to leave the knight on d5 entirely, just go knight d7. Mm, that's that's I don't know. an idea you mentioned before and well wesley doesn't allow it to okay. begin with but knight d5 is met by bishop g5 you pointed out this idea earlier yeah but maybe on the other hand rook b6 is going to be met with queen c3 he goes queen c3 preemptively but okay. that queen could also be a sitting duck if uh, let's say bishop could land on a5 and that square could be supported somehow so maybe queen b5 and bishop d8 bishop a5 something like that 
it's a bit of a trek to make this all yeah, work, it but I, it's good to think in these terms of how do I improve my bishop, right? The bishop one of six staring into its own pawn. The best move for black is pawn e5 thrown off board, and then that's that. <laughs> yeah, if only we could do, imagine how much that would change chess. You just you say, hey, one of your own pieces. Let's get that out the way because yeah, my bishop one of six. Or bishop takes e5. That would be a great move. <laughs> well, isn't that a new variant? You can capture your own pieces. I was gonna say, I think I heard about that. Uh, and but you could also do that over the over the board, just kind of pretend you know, you know, I'm doing you a favor. I'm taking for God's sake, I'm taking my own pieces. Now, wow, <laughs> C3 here is a very tempting move, but then Wesley could play B3. And uh, that pawn on B3 is significantly more solid than it would be with a pawn on C4. Right. This is really heating. I mean, th this is just like a pressure cooker in here. It doesn't seem like that much is happening, but the stakes are incredibly high for both sides in, in, in this position. You're mentioning pressure cookers. You're mentioning stakes. Are, are you hungry, Danya? Like, what's what's going on here? No, I got some granola here and, and some coffee. You don't have to worry about me, uh, Robert. I got all the best uh, food that the, the Bay Area has to offer. I, I worry because I care, Don, just so you know. I, I know. You, I care about you too, Robert. Just as we look at this incredibly tense position, I, I need to waste everyone's time and, and just say this. Robert <laughs> needs that. <laughs> uh, words of affirmation. Those are important. Most indeed, people. indeed. And finally, a knight on d5. He needed it because otherwise that bishop was coming to c5 oh, where oh, the queen gets queen. trapped over here. <laughs> okay, so can do to get his bishop to one of these golden squares b4. Oh, and if he moves it, by the way, knight e7 check has to be reckoned with. That's a fork. Mm -hmm. And then d6 is going to topple. Look at the time also, 30 seconds. I feel like Duda has let this go. Maybe rook c4 tries to get his a pawn in motion. Wesley's position, not easy either. It's not clear how to make progress here. Duda I like that. Gets pawn a4. I like that rook c4 idea as well because you're trying to trap the queen, but the d6 pawn will be <laughs> hanging. So also due to down to 30 seconds, as yep. well as he's been playing, you can't win good positions if we consider his position good now without time on the clock and down to 27 seconds. And now he's sort of on the defensive, right, Donya? He put his rooks on the c file where they're not barreling through. They're just protecting right. the pawn that's gone too far. Yes, and h6, he hasn't forgotten about the idea of bishop g5 wesley could drop his knight back at some point and go after the d6 but i wouldn't do that yet i would try to make more improvements to my position uh, but that's very hard to do in this in this atmosphere maybe bishop e3 queen c1 try to retool your pieces the problem is if you fall asleep due to place a4 and then the attack has is reinvigorated so it's <laughs> it's a very hard environment to make any sorts of improvements uh, the players are at a standstill here he, h3 king h7 both trying to make small improvements in the position and wesley Ooh. strikes with a four so i like king h7 for the end game but f4 is dangerous because if some pieces get traded off i look at that e4 pawn it's isolated it can be attacked but for Oops, now c4. here comes the uh d6 uh, pawn is weak and the works in the d file who's this easier to play for uh, i have no idea <laughs> actually have no idea i think on one hand black because black can make the attacking moves but his position is kind of collapsing too. He's got eight seconds. Got to move a four, yeah. maybe just to add some Tabasco sauce to that queen side. He does it. He gives up the b four square. Bishop b seven by Wesley, maybe to take some pieces off the board while he has a chance. The problem is the a file though. If it gets opened, Duda can double on that file and deliver a lobster pincer mate, sort of on a one. Yeah, that's a good call. And you can't take on a four like you would in other variations because the bishop is now under attacking. Queen b four, offering the queen trade, just sliding the queen back. Watch out for a b, bishop Ooh. d five, rook b six. Uh -oh. All of these type of attacking moves. And look at the clock. Wesley under fifteen seconds move. now. Retreating moves. A oh, b and rook a eight. He's got something to the a file. This yeah, is... he's he nervously plays bishop b five and trade. Okay, rook a eight. eight. Queen. A Oh. Queen a2? Queen a2 and, and bishop g5. Bishop g5. That's going to be bait. He does oh. this first. So 93 Whoa. back, but queen a2 for sure. Wesley, and the less he's got to move two seconds. Oh he, my. He attacks God. the knight first, trying to get it out. Bishop d4, there'll be queen a2. Queen a2. Play queen bishop a2. Bishop b3. Bishop b3. Oh, it was queen amazing. Made on on oh my goodness. Wesley's a, he's a devil. Oh, Is there bishop some. He's got to move. He wants, he wants to take, oh. but the king runs away. And bishop oh, b3 does nothing. Just take it. Rook e3. Oh. Ho, ho. Oh, Queen C7, watch out for H2. He Not moves over yet. Over. It oh, almost so was. Bishop's H5. He wants to play H5 and open up. The oh, I don't like that move. Side. I don't like E5. He it loves all his, light squares. his battery F4 dude ahead also. But this is looking good for black all of a sudden. Take a G4. Oh, he can't. He's, move. <laughs> He's, He's not move. doing it. He's got zero. He's How do you get the move off? I don't understand. This, this is unbelievable action to this first game. Queen E4, Queen E6. the battery back up. E6, okay, he opens it up. That's correct. But now Duda stabilized it. And don't blunder g7 with mate, right? That's the only thing. And black, despite H4. being down a pawn, is better. Queen d6 and h4. I agree with 
Oh, okay. but he allowed G6. Now that's a okay. Finally, an endgame, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Who's better? White's up a pawn, but no, Probably White's white. not up a pawn. Take on G6. Now activity for black. Rook H7. Okay, black looks great now. Oh, oh black oh. might be winning. Rook G2. Bishop D3. And then F2 check. Oh, King oh. In the corner. C6. He's got to get his pawn in motion. How do you bishop get the bishop? H5 defending. C6. Wesley's got to push it. Okay, Rook C. No, Rook C2 doesn't rook work. G6. Rook, rook G6 only move. And then rook but C6. E8 is covered, so Rook E8 is not possible. Wesley's got to make a move. That is huge. Uh -oh. He wins the pawn. And now Black's on the pawn. But... This might be a draw, though. Rook, Don't rook G2. I feel like we're auctioneers here. And then I now. As well. What happened? It's going oh. to be a split. King E3. And it's how do you make progress? Fortress. Well, either side could still blunder a bishop. Or move the bishop accidentally. G6. Dudo is going to try to win this. He's going to try to get his rook to the other side of the board, Robert. He's going right. to try to deliver a side check and get that king, pry it away from the bishop, but it's not easy to do that. Don't get made. <laughs> bishop d4 was almost made. <laughs> but that's why I think Wesley's been really smart, but putting his king on f4, that way, wherever yeah. the rook goes, the king goes to the opposite side. Let me tell you, their hands are shaking. Mine are, and <laughs> theirs are too. When you're moving the mouse, it's like... <laughs> you don't want and, a mouse slip here. You know, it looks like I'm getting super red uh, looking at this game, but I think that just my camera is doing funny things. So I'm I'm pretty calm right now, honestly. I've been enjoying the action. I'm feeling really at home in my chair, though. This is this is amazing, and let's not forget this is the first game. We could not have asked for a better opening salvo to this uh, to this incredible match, and they're still going. I mean, they're trying to, you know, posturing here, but realistically, Black just doesn't have any attempts even. The defense yeah. is very easy with that increment, particularly. But I think that JKD is smart to play this on. We talked oh, about yeah. how in the bullet portion, that's where he has his best chances. He's also up a pawn. So even if this were a classical game, yeah. why not play it on? He's the bishop on H down. Yeah, the bishop on H5 is defended and defends everything. There's no yeah. risk. Okay, they finally made finally a draw. Finally But no, yeah, and people shouldn't dismiss this and, ah, you know, he's just being obnoxious. No, he's not. He's wearing Wesley down. He's forcing him to find all these defensive moves. Uh, and he's... As you said, uh, the shorter the time control, I think the more it favors Duda. And in a second game, we see the players taking a breath. Time for a Petrov. Not that it's a peaceful opening. The Petrov can explode. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I would say that from that first game, as I'm reflecting on it, before we get into the, you know, the middle of this one with the Petrov and pieces traded off. But I will say that Wesley put amazing defense together. And for Jan Kristoff in time trouble, the fact that he was able to get what looked like an attack he couldn't quite handle it he didn't mouse put it speed. together perfectly but his mouse speed was there so that bodes well for his chances come bullet time wow g3 king g2 i thought that might have been a mouse slip at first <laughs> but i suppose not i don't know that looks a little bit suspicious of that f file getting up and now you mentioned the petrov uh yesterday on my stream I, I was actually checking out the original book by russian master alexander petrov uh, after whom the opening is named in the early 1800s he authored, I think, the very first chess book ever written in the Russian language, and it's available in fully dig digitized form online. And uh, it was just fascinating to read how uh, no, even proper chess notation didn't really exist uh, at the time. Uh, what a legacy that this guy left on the game. Now Wesley and Duda are playing the opening uh, named after him. Yeah, some people call it legacy. Others call it misery because trying to beat the Petra from the white side right. It's been a task that players have struggled with for a very it's long time. Interesting, because in Russian, people don't really say Petrov. They say Russian game. Yes. But in other languages, you mostly say Petra. You don't say Russian game. But in, in, in uh, Russian, you also say Spanish game for Ray Lopez. You never really say Ray Lopez. Just an interesting little tidbit. Although, I guess in English these days, we just call it the Spanish, right? Like, I we... always call it the Ray. I mean, I'm one of the cool guys. I'm, I'm also kind of, you know, one of the, you know, <laughs> Back to the chess. Back to the chess. <laughs> but we well, got a position that's a little bit symmetrical. Well, no, these these G pawns here, and Donna, you made a comment earlier, which is a, was a very smart one, that taking away from the center opened up the rook on f8. The problem is, come end game time or middle game time, those pawns can be targets, and in particular, this pawn on g6 now, but. Wesley is using the F file to his advantage. So how do you weigh that when you're assessing this position, Danya? Do you prefer White's open F file? Because I certainly prefer the pawn structure for White rather than the file for Black. Now, normally I prioritize piece placement, but the thing is here, Duda can trade on E8 and go rookie one. 
So I kind of agree with you. And then you can situate a rook on e3. The problem is, I know people talk about the principle of two weaknesses. Uh, you know, oftentimes it's not enough to have one weakness. You got to create another one. But I think it's also worthwhile to think about it from the other side, principle of two strengths. It's often not enough to have one main asset in your position, such as an open file, because uh, the opponent can adjust to that. You sort of need two distinct uh, areas of the board or factors where you are superior. And here we only see one, and Duda is nicely adjusting to it by overprotecting that knight on f3. Pawn on f2 is protected. So I think he's got tiny pull, uh, but Wesley shouldn't have really any problems uh, holding this, particularly with that nice time advantage he's built. And I was about to say that Duda is probably trying to take with the pawn on e3 to take advantage of the pawn structure. Because mm -hmm. look at this position. Black has three pawns to white's two. But because white's pawns are undoubled and black's pawns are, creating a passed pawn is not really possible. Unfortunately, you have these double pawns. And that's the downside of the double pawns. Plus side, another open file. Downside, hard to create passed pawns in endgame. So that is why Duda took towards the center because if you cut the board at the e-file white has a five on four from a to e and mm. black has a three on two i'll put in quotes because they're not creating a pass pawn so what white wants to do is trade off all the pieces go to a king and pawn end game and then play e4 and then have a four on three advantage you essentially have an extra pawn in king and pawn end game terms that's a great explanation um could not have said it any better myself and and that's always something people forget to do, I think, is, is sort of prognosticate, okay, what happens if this piece is removed from the board? What happens if we have a pawn end game? And wait, I'm getting a call. Oh, the Robert Hess anti compliment. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm off the commentary. But the uh, committee for not complimenting Robert Hess just gave me a call, but I'll talk to them later. And here we see Wesley getting the knight to f5. So he's adding some heat to the position, Robert. And it has to be pointed out that with these three pieces on the board and attack is not out of the question. Tactics related to White's King are not out of the question and have to be considered. Yeah, the main problem I would say though, after knight f5, which is right, that there's maybe even a sacrifice later on h4, this knight can just hop into e5 where it closes down the queen from e3. And importantly, I'm just gonna show this very quickly. It's uh, just a simple sort of tactical idea is that if I can say, put my queen to c2 with check, or if I can just mm -hmm. run my queen over c2, you'll take me. Oh, free queen. Then I have knight takes e3 maneuver. So distracting the white queen is very much in play because the e3 square may be too much of a target to keep an eye on. Yeah, and, and look at Wesley now poking and prodding at Duda's uh, center c5, trying to undermine the knights. I, let me tell you that this is getting very concerning with all of this, uh, all of the stuff that Duda has to keep together. Maybe queen e4? Uh, what is Wesley Ooh. threatening exactly? I'm not sure, but it just feels like there's tactics in the air. b5 is an idea involving that other pawn. You mentioned the second rank, a2. Whew. It's not easy to keep white's position together, and that's the good sign of having this double pawn on g6, is your king can kind of have a shield if it uh, gets to this, the square, whereas without this f2 pawn, white's king feels a little bit more iffy, and so... A lot yeah. to consider here for Wesley. He's also, uh, not actually not for Wesley, for uh, Jan Christoph Duda. And Duda is down quite a lot of time for the second game in a row. But uh, maybe he should put the Grishu cut on. I don't really care when I'm down on the block. <laughs> but this is a very concerning position. After B5, but okay. <laughs> Let's see what he does. And, and in, in fact, B5 has been played. And they can start to fall apart here for uh, Jan Shishtov. I would be worried about his position for sure because now c4 is directly under attack you take on b5 you have to watch out for the a2 pawn how do you even continue here d5 d5 would be a very loose move, right? but this is the kind of yeah d5 that knight on e5 is what concerned him he puts a rook on a four he's trying to sort of you know assume that defensive stance but bc is possible then maybe he wants d5 oh i don't know and that actually would be the ideal in terms of pawn structure situation. If you could allow, you allowed to capture in c4, play d5, because then black's queenside pawns will not be connected as we head closer and closer to an endgame. And he does take there. So d5? Didn't you? Yeah, don't take queen? on d5 because queen <laughs> takes d5 check. I, I thought maybe black should put his king on h7. Wait, knight takes oh, but then that work it's, a, it's a fork. Knight takes either. Oh, just kidding. You're in check. <laughs> right, exactly. That's the whole problem. <laughs> okay, so now Wesley has to find maybe queen b6. Uh, to open up that avenue to b2, 
But Van Duda could take on C4 with a knight to cover that square. So again, this is really he heated up. And what's really good for Wesley is he's got the time to really think through this critical moment. But I'm not sure he's got a great solution to this. It's a transition that he's not going to be very thrilled about because White, towards the end game, has now two mm -hmm. unopposed pass pawns. The double pawns, we've talked about those enough for now. And the isolated pawns on the queen side are going to be a bad thing. It's mm. hard to push them when they're not connected. You know, I have a feeling that Duda's position was really falling apart, but it just seems Oops, that, that this move, Rook F4, he's managed to stabilize it. Maybe Queen, okay, Queen E8 drops it back. You, did you see me click on C6 just there? Uh, I did not. I was watching through live chess. Yeah, I accidentally uh, touched the Queen and touched the C6 square. Oh, so, so you played Queen C6. Yeah, yeah. My wow, bad. that's that's awesome. <laughs> and I, I think I'll never forget when Ro the time that Robert had pl played Queen C6. Like Queen 64, though. Not only well, is you, Queen A2. You called the diagonal. Uh, Queen A4 is just on the same diagonal as C6. Yes. I, 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 had, I was on the right path, but down to A2 Ooh, is hanging. E, but Queen E4, Queen takes G6. Queen E4, King H7, Queen takes G6 and Knight E5. Wait, what? And if King F6. Okay, so if Queen E6. Uh, <laughs> I think White could have gone Queen E6 check instead. Okay, let's uh, go to the analysis board real quick. King H7, want? Queen takes G6. Wait, what? Oh my god. King F6, Knight G4. To save the knight, and then you take the. Anyway, it's not important. Uh, I I didn't mean to derail us from the game no, because that was, dude has got fifteen nice. seconds. Now Wesley's going to do something similar. Oh, potentially. Oh. You scared me. Rookie eight played. Potentially, queen takes c four. Ideas in the air. But, but queen didn't quite. work just yet. Yeah, queen so, six. But now he's pawn starting to fall. Whew. But the knight on f five is undermined. It is, and the d pawn is ready to start rolling. D six, d seven coming to a theater near you. <laughs> that was a really good one, man. Yeah, thanks. Anyway, so Queen A1. Queen A1, I see your idea. Trying to get to H1 over here. Very subtle. But then Rook F1 shuts that down. And okay, I no. thought Queen E5 for a second, but white pieces are all perfectly placed. Except for Incredible. the king on H3. I don't think you want the king on H3, but considering where black pieces are, the king is as safe as it will get. Yeah, maybe you want to go some crazy. No, that doesn't work. I'm thinking about all sorts of crazy ideas. That's one hallmark of 2,700 plus chess, uh, which which might be a sort of a banal observation, but their pieces are always so good. I mean, even Black's pieces are good. Uh, the it, sort of superiority is marginal, but it's just enough to send Black into a tailspin. And now Wesley dipping below 30 seconds. I don't see a move. I don't see a single resource as of yet. It's amazing that undermining the knight in f5 just does so much damage. The knight on c4 really is does. great here and well-protected. The knight in f5 should be well-protected by a pawn, but that pawn's being removed in 18 seconds, counting down here for Wesley. And JKD only has 7.6 himself, yeah. but Wesley can't find a move. He can't find a move, and who can blame him? I mean, I, neither can we. Five seconds. Okay, queen a1 played rook f1, queen rook f6 f1. maybe. Uh-huh, okay. this way. No, but, but d6 this, and then queen d7. d7. Check, okay, so oh. he brings some of his pieces back. Duda has to be careful. Here comes Rook F7 and stuff and like that. Queen D5 though. on top of that. Ugh. Yeah. Queen D5, Queen, Queen F7 also. Oh my goodness. That's brutal. And he does yeah. it. Three, Queen F8 made it's it. It's over. Everybody. Takes, that's, takes, that's and he's going to resign. Wow. Oh, we'll what bring, a we'll, game. We'll bring up the analysis board. I just want to show how the concluding touch could have been really nice. If Queen takes F7, you can take either way. Rook F8 stops the pawn, but then I go D7. You move mm -hmm. your knight, and I go d8 equals queen. I give up my one pawn and promote the second, and Call that it. way you just go up uh, a rook here. So that would you be do. game over. What a display. It was surgical precision by Duda, who, it, it, again, it felt like Wesley had that initiative going, but uh, it was the structural deficiencies in his position uh, in the end that reigned supreme when Duda was able to stabilize the situation, and he delivers the first blow. What a game. And we'll, we talked about pawn structure in the last game. We might as well continue the trend. The pawn on d4 is an isolated pawn. Now, for now, that's fine. White is going to castle, and when you have an isolated pawn, the adjacent files are open. You want to put a rook on c1, a rook on e1. Great. And operate using that pawn to your advantage. However, as we get later and later into the game, and that isolated pawn remains, then I can try to attack it, because a pawn's best friend is another pawn. Look at this pawn on e6, extremely well defended thanks to a pawn f7. You're not attacking that ever. The pawn on d4 has to be protected by pieces, which means that more of white's attention will be uh, forced on that square, and that should allow black to then 
start putting pressure and taking advantage of that. So Danya, it's still very early. You know these IQP, isolated queen pawn positions very well. How do you see this game going and which side would you rather have here? Well, I like the two bishops. Uh, and I've, in, in the IQP, we have to watch for two things if we're looking at White's position. His potential to break through in the center with d5, which absolves him of the weakness. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, by the way, he's going to do that right now. It of doesn't course. work because of 95, but just what to watch for. Uh, if he can get d5 in and he can do so successfully, he'll have all of the advantages of his position and he rids himself of the isolated pawn. That's number one. Number two is, does White have attacking chances on the king side? That's what Wesley is orienting himself toward. He's shifting his bishop to d3. That queen can travel to h3. And uh, it's impossible to give mate in one fell swoop. You often want to provoke a weakness such as g6 or h6. That in turn creates an anchor or a weakness on f6 or a pawn that you can sacrifice your bishop on. Uh, but you have to do all of this while negotiating uh, and buying yourself time uh, in regards to that isolated pawn, which Duda will pile up on while making other improvements in his position. I like White's position, rook a d1 maybe, but Wesley's also got to be very, very careful. Yeah. Yeah, and rook a d1 gives you the idea of later playing d5. It also just defends the pawn. Uh, the bishop can slide back to b1 for good measure. So what I'll say, Danya, is, and how we were kind of talking about it, is that for white, you want to build up attacking chances because your pawn structure is worse. So you know that if you don't get that attack, and let's say the queens come off the board, then black is much happier, right? Bingo. Because you have this isolated pawn. So what black ideally does is say, hey, it's a... It's a fair trade, queen versus queen. Let's just get these two off the board right now, and then I'm going to blockade and then attack your pawn. So a very common idea for black is to bring a knight to d5 and say your pawn's not moving. And meanwhile, well, now you're clearly threatening things with the bishop on the, the diagonal, but you were trying to start trading some pieces and then later in the game go after that d4. Yeah, and as you were explaining, I was looking at the shelf behind me. I used to, well, I think I still have it, but I can't find it. A book by a Grandmaster Alexander Baburin who uh, I think lives in Ireland now, originally, of course, Russian. And he wrote an entire book on pawn structures, but most of it was focused on the IQP. And I remember really liking that book. Uh, and then I remember a Facebook post, I think this was a year or so ago. And I think this just happens on Amazon when a book is out of print. Uh, but somebody posted that Bavorin's book, I think it's called Winning Pawn Structures, was listed at $900 a pop or something like that. <laughs> okay. And I thought, man, if you want to understand the IQP, <laughs> you, you gotta, you gotta shell out. You gotta buy IQP insurance or something to cover part of that. Well played there. And yeah, the I, IQP it's an, it can be an expensive pawn. So, you know, the, except <laughs> the book would also be pricey. And Knight takes D4 would also be pricey, let me tell you. Oh, let's uh, show that tactic. Queen. I'll show that tactic very quickly here. The point is that there's a rook, there will be a queen, the rook wins that battle, and you are able to take on each of them with check to boot, opening up an attack on the queen. That just wins the game uh, by winning Black's Queen directly. So that's not something you can capture yet. I could see a Rook D7 move in the future that Rook puts more G5. pressure on D4. Bishop G5 idea. Bishop G5 is, is going to be very nasty, though. You're, you're absolutely right. You're right. Bishop G5 threatening the H7 pawn. And H6, I know you done it. You're going to sacrifice or try to on that square. But when you ever there's an H6 and a sacrifice there, you have to sort of be sure that it amounts to something. Now, Often in these positions, Perfect. white can store a draw by, uh, okay, let's just show this. Let's bring up the analysis board and show these kind of ideas where let's say uh, in the move we go rook d7, bishop g5, just to go through with this, that if we get a position like this, right, we have mm -hmm. a check back and forth in our exactly. back pocket. So that's important because otherwise a move like rook takes d4 would be a big problem for white in many regards, but you can at the very least go back and forth and make a draw. So you say, then it's worth diving even more deeply into this. And now that you see the draw, mm -hmm. you put that in your back pocket and say, where is more the eval bars is plus one. There must be something in white's favor. It's your lucky coin, not in your pocket. Anywhere, anywhere but your pocket. <laughs> do, you know, do, you know what, do you know what movie that's from? All right, Javier. You know, calm yourself. It's pretty, pretty, pretty good. What do you <laughs> what do you make of this Sorry. D five move? And it, that's a, actually a very thematic sacrifice. Uh, this looks like madness. He's putting his pawn where it can be taken by eight hundred eighty four pieces. But the reality is, knight on f six cannot move. If he takes with the pawn, then yes, Wesley has sacked a pawn, but he can position that bishop on e three to d four. 
centralizing it and targeting the knight on f6. He's got tremendous compensation, both positionally and tactically. So due to trying to take with the knight, uh, and after knight takes, he'll probably take with the bishop. Uh, again, taking with the queen results in a discovery. Uh, but maybe Wesley still goes bishop d4. I, I don't think that he's got, uh, you know, massive compensation, but this just seems a lot more pleasant. Bishop g5, by the way, is still possible, and there's a new wrinkle to this now that the position has opened up a little bit. So this is scary for black. I really, I'm starting to like Black's position. I'm not quite believing in the attack the way that you seem to be. And that could just be me having some oversight saying, ah, well, whatever. Uh, and I, you know, I like sacrificing people's pieces. So uh, something about this doesn't quite feel like the attack is as strong as it wants to be. But I also completely understand what you're saying. Either Bishop D4, Bishop G5 and pile up on H7. Or if you play H6, go for the sacrifice. But that's really what this all comes down to. And Duda might take with the pawn on d5. And no, keeps the bishop. Okay, never mind. I'm j I just can't get over the fact. I think some people thought I lost my mind and didn't realize it was a reference. And here, we're going to see a reference to bishop takes h6. There we have it. And again, he does have that draw in his pocket, I think. I don't think Duda can do anything about it. Maybe rook e8, actually. Rook e8 can be a very annoying resource. Oh. But he goes instead for queen e7. And the bar just freaked out. So I don't like that. I think rook e8 might have been actually... A very serious resource. So you're trying to make space for the king and eventually try to run away? Okay. Yeah, that's that exactly move, what I'm doing. That move wasn't liked either. So what do you think it was? Like, what's going on here? Why did it go plus two points? And let's bring up the analysis board so we can try to figure this out. Okay. It went plus two about to then back to equal after the very natural rook e1 move, which is trying right. to go rook e3, rook g3. Well, so rook e5. What, what so, is what does black do with rook e5? Bishop e4? I wonder, you know, Danya, I get the feeling that I know what's happening here. So let's see the rooks here. There could be a problem down the d file in some of these variations. Mm -hmm. So I believe the superior option was rook d to e1, the most oh. counterintuitive move ever because oh, you want to no bring bishop another attacker. Ah, mm -hmm. There's no bishop e4 in the end. Wow, that's. That is actually awesome detective work, Robert. Well, I see, so the cool. e I see the eval, right? And that's what's leading me to the conclusion is that you're saying bishop e4, there's a problem with the rook hanging on d1. So, Danya, how, how do we make these work in our own games rather than just using an eval bar to get the answer? It's difficult. And, I mean, this everybody can appreciate the subtlety of this, the finesse required to perceive this in advance uh, that's part of the reason chess is such a magical game. The game goes down to these tiny moments. And at the end of the day, it's all about undefended pieces. LPDO, loose pieces drop off. One of my favorite shorthands uh, that is a very helpful thing to remind yourself of. Every single time you have a piece undefended by any other pieces, particularly one that's on the first rank, that is a liability. And, uh, you know, it's not that you want to eliminate those pieces actively, but when you have one of those pieces, that opens up the potential for, kind of, for tactics. And, uh, this is hard to see because it's so natural, right? Who would play rook d1 and leave the other rook on f1 to do absolutely nothing? Uh, yeah. And yet everything comes down to concrete properties of the position. When you are attacking, uh, the rules of engagement are different than when you're just trying to improve all of your pieces. And what a lovely move, rook c5. Oh, cool. Just trying to get rid of this attacker, which is, of course, going to g5 at some moment. So rook c5 says, you go you're to rook g5, g5 though. I'll take you. And queen g5, is that a drawer's black? I always can drop I can drop my bishop to g6. So I need to think about the right Ooh. configuration, right? Because you still can't take me on g6 with your bishop with the rook hanging with check. But I I'm not positive. I'm just not throwing in ideas. And for everybody You're who's right. watching, that rook d e1 move, I would not find that in a blitz game myself. I just saw the eval bar, rook f e1 looks logical. Oh, wait, now I'm looking at rook d8 as the response. Here is where things Ooh. can improve. And bishop again, look at that rook on d1. It is really burning Wesley right now. I think he recognizes it. He, I think he's losing this. And his clock is burning too. 10 seconds under got 10 seconds for both players. Okay, he's, got a, he's got to trade pieces. And okay, but now rook takes g8. King takes g8. Okay, it's not over yet. He's got two. Let's not forget. He's got, oh, he's got only one pawn for the piece. He got a and second. One second, one second. Oh my gosh, oh, he barely got that move off. Barely. Rook d5 is possible here. What a move. I do this. He's got a move. Oh, he's lost some time. And Wesley shakes his head. He just oh, but like, even in the end, I mean, he could have tried, but uh, at that point, Duda had consolidated two points ahead. Look at this performance in the early going by JKD. Incredible defense, a chance missed by Wesley. But as you pointed out, Robert, that is so hard to see. 
Yeah, this is just something that when you have the eval bar on, you see that rook f to e1 is zeros, and but it was almost plus two. Hey, now you have to think outside the box a little bit. I'm going to store that one. I'm going to write that down later to uh, use in future lessons because rook d to e1, what a clever way to go forward. And Danya, this opening that we have now in game four, Wesley shows pawns well advanced in front of his castled king. That can backfire, but it also can use to restrict the pieces. For instance, we see a bishop on g3. We know eh, that's not the best bishop because all of these pawns on the dark squares make it uh, pretty useless on the diagonal. But how do you feel about these positions? I think that the light squares, in particular f5 in the future, could be a problem. Mm -hmm. But I now pass it over to you because you're going to be able to explain this better. Well, I play this with black, uh, and and the Italian is the kind of opening. Of course, it was all the rage in you know the 1700s. Uh, my boy G Giochino Greco and all those early masters. And then there was a period when people sort of at the highest level switched to the Ray Lopez. And now it's all the rage again because it's it's a very rich opening. It's a very hard to understand opening. There's a lot of subtle ideas. Now, of course, uh, square on f5, Robert is very weak. White can strike in the center with d4, and black's position can collapse very quickly. On the other hand. Black has very specific ideas in relation to, it, it's sort of a blitz in, in, in football, right? You're rushing the quarterback. If he gets the pass off, okay, he's probably going to find a receiver downfield, but he might get sacked. And the equivalent of that is H5, H4 ideas, F5 ideas. Black is going to try to mount that blitz before White gets his knight to E3 and plays D4. Is he going to manage to do that? That's why he played knight G8. He's trying to open up the passage for that F1. Here we see it. Will Duda mm -hmm. be able to respond to this precisely? Right, and if he gets D4 in, not only can he avoid a concussion, but he can uh, cause some harm <laughs> to his opponent. So uh, this is a position where uh, Black is in some danger of having pushed too far, overextended on the king side, which is the nature of the way you play this opening for Wesley's perspective. And for JKD, another decision, do I take with the rook? Or do I take with the pawn? If he takes with the pawn, he has to think about e4 as a possibility at some point for black, saying your pawn e3 will be a weakness rather than a strength. And if he takes with the rook, he has to look at this rook on f8 as, is that a strong rook or what, is it just looking good in the semi-open file? So now the file is fully open. I was just checking to see the last year in which the New York Giants won a game, uh, but my research failed me. <clears throat> uh, but I mean, the Giants... Have won three games this year, and just so you know, I grew up as a Jets fan, and the Jets oh, have won, the Jets have won zero games. So, <laughs> man, I'm well. I grew up as a 49ers fan, so I share in the plight. But in any case, uh, are we supposed to be commentating chess, or is this? You're the one who made the unnecessary footballers. Oh, Usually, yeah. it's sports that makes a oh, it's a stalemate out there, and I'm always like, you know, stalemate. The game is over, right. so it's not match. a stalemate, right? Like, I just want. All announcers in sports, if somebody sends us them, just so they know, when they call the middle of a game a stalemate yeah, exactly. because neither side is making progress, that's or not a stalemate. Just the game is over. The rant, I completely on the same page. To continue when, when somebody lets tell Al Michaels and all the John Madden, oh, Bill Belichick and Jim Harbaugh are engaged in a chess match here. It's going to be a real chess match. They're going to try to checkmate it. That doesn't tell anything about anything that's happening. It's just the most generically used term uh, in in sports coverage ever. But Well, how would you feel if, if they were like, they're engaged in Zook Swang right now? You'd be like, wait, what? what what's going on here? Like, what, fair. Im, Im, imagine they use that correctly. In, uh... I, I do appreciate it when chess is used, but uh, it's interesting that, you know, these terms stalemate and checkmate have made it out into sort of the common sports comparison vocabulary. I don't know. It's just interesting. But Wesley's the you. one trying to deliver a checkmate here. I don't think he's going to succeed. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't think so either. But the 9 f 4 does look very good. The bishop on h2 still does not look particularly promising. But what JKD is holding on hope for is d4. You mentioned this idea. It is thematic in the white side of the Italian game. Can I get d4 in and break open the position? But Wesley's just creating many problems along this f file where he has just better control. Yeah, and here comes the doubling on the F file. And what has he managed to do here? What he's managed to do has been to sort of close off the center, minimize the impact of White's pluses, and maximize the impact of his own pluses, in particular that knight on F4, incredibly strong. It can be replaced by a rook should it be captured. 
Uh, he's definitely better here. This is a big chance for him. Bishop h5. What Duda can try to do here is move the knight away from f3 and basically say, okay, we're at a stalemate. <laughs> <laughs> Come at me, bro, because I've got that bishop on h2, assuming that defensive role, putting the brakes on any potential g4 move because that weakens and softens up that f4 knight, which can be captured. So what, that, that was... That was very well played, Daniel. <laughs> that, that was extremely well done. Um, you're right, though, that if you can move the knight, let's say knight g1, play g3, even though it makes your bishop look not very good on h2 for the time being, if you could trade off most of the heavy pieces, you're not getting yourself in any trouble. And for Wesley, how does he actually increase the pressure here? He says my knight in c6. Let's just go back a half step. Knight in c6 dominated by a pawn three scores away. Let me reroute that piece. And... Knight to g1. So he's trying to get g3 in. Yeah, sorry. And I just found out Clay Thompson had an Achilles. Okay, I'm yeah. kind of devastated, but anyways. Yeah. Uh, that, that was sad news yesterday. I'm sorry. I did not hear that. I This is just the first time hearing about it. G3 would be a big blunder, though. Knight takes d3 is a problem now. Yeah, so bishop c2. Okay, back to the game. What dude is trying to do is shore up all of his potential weaknesses. That bishop on c2, we say the bad bishops defend. Ooh, and g3. That's a very committal decision. Look at that bishop on h2. Uh, there have been better bishops in the yeah. history of bishopdom, but the plus side of this is bad bishops defend good pawns, said Romanian grandmaster Mihai Shuba, a uh, great chess author, by the way. And that pawn on g3 is fulfilling a crucial role. It's covering the f4 square. Look at the knight on h5. It, it isn't too happy either. So Wesley trying to find alternate ways into white's position, sacking the pawn to soften up that e4 pawn. Yeah, I think Black's position looks excellent because while White is holding off Black's pieces, that's the best way to describe it. White is not attacking. White is not threatening anything. There's nothing of consequence that Black needs to be on the lookout for. In fact, everything that's weak in the position is what White has to defend rather than the other way around. And look at this, taking on the F-file, saying I can control the F-file if I want. The Queen had to stay put, defending the E4 pawn. And hey, Knight F6 wins Knight the Knight F6. Direct. Yep, knight f6 is, is going to be very nasty, very hard to deal with. Wesley trying to see queen f7 check. Uh, if he can do that in a better way, he can. He's going to take on c4, and he's going to attack e4. This is excellent work here in this middle game by Wesley patiently poking and prodding and then seizing the opportunity. Will Duda be able to coordinate his defensive forces? This is looking pretty grim, but I wouldn't rule it out. Knight takes c4 check. Mm, nice. Whoa. He's going to lose. I mean, bishop e4, queen e4, and well, some chances there for white. But should be losing, I think. Yeah, the bishop is so weak on h2. And if you play g4, I don't even have to go knight f4, but I can think about it. So this bishop, a bishop three squares away from a knight certainly dominates it, even more so than a pawn does. The knight on h5 clearly better than this bishop on h2. And black is up a pawn. Better pieces, more material, and a minute extra on the clock looks good for Wesley's chances. Yeah, and knight f6 here is possible, trying to reroute the knight to g4, the newly created weakness. In general, in the end game, it's a good idea to fully understand oh, burying the bishop on, on h2. And the pawn on g3 is now a permanent weakness. Uh, it's a good idea when, whenever a pawn is pushed to understand which weak squares have been created. That tells you a lot about how you should position your pieces. Here, for example, black now has the f3 square. He can situate a bishop there potentially. Uh, he can also bring, I mean, there's just so many attempts there. b5. I just want to be careful when you push pawns not to trade too many of them. So right. we'll see how he plays this. He is... As you mentioned, at, Robert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the king. You mentioned the F3 square. I was thinking the king could also try to get into F3. Oh, yeah. absolutely. There's room there for two. <laughs> well, no, there's room there for one, but the knight on E4 pressuring G3 now. I, I like the point you were making about not trading too many pawns or at least mm -hmm. being aware of which pawns you should trade because now Knight's B5. Knight C3. Oh, yeah. Knight C3 wins a pawn. No, not Sorry. trading pawns. Uh, but then bishop C7 at the end. Good call. Hmm. Huh. How about, so tricky. I also want to play d5 and then bishop b5 check, but the problem is, you know, we can uh, analyze it later, but nice. if if I take on um, f1, which I wanted, the king would have taken on e4. Wow, so but knight f6 in the end of that line instead of bishop takes uh, f1. Oh. So maybe, maybe well, we can show d5, that later. Yeah, maybe d5 was good. I mean, we're doing that whole GM thing where we're just analyzing to our own benefit and everybody has to be like, <laughs> what are these fools discussing right now? Uh, this pawn on g3 remains weak, but the knight on f1, stabilizing that for the time being. The bishop on b6, it was such a bad bishop before. Now it's doing quite a good job on b6, stopping the b7 pawn from moving and covering the length of the diagonal. 
Yeah, and Wesley's so good in these positions. His technical skill is basically unparalleled. And here comes the sun. Here comes d5. Now, bishop b5, trying to, of course, dislodging the knight from f1, but knight e3 check. And then the bishop assumes the defensive role from e1. Due to doing a great job apportioning his limited resources, the problem is, Robert, you called it. I think the king is coming in through e4 to f3, and that is going to be a doomsday scenario for white is that king is going to wreak absolute havoc on the defensive forces. Yeah, big issue is the g3 pawn is a weakness that Here can't be moved. And you can't, don't take on e3. I might would not five. go about and do that. Might Actually, it might not be so bad. Not king e3 and e4. You're saying that you're, you're too quick. I think it's winning, but I wouldn't risk it. And he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, that, that's definitely the safer play here. And the knight can come to f. Oh, but then there's knight d6 check. What, you, what I'm trying to highlight is you don't really want to trade knights because a single extra pawn in an opposite color bishop and, and it gives the side with the material deficit good chances to hold. So knight f5 allowing knight d6 would not be good. He instead of like king f3 giving the e5 to win g3. Yeah. And that gives you a nice pass pawn. And bishop d6 due to last ditch attempt, but that's pretty effective, Robert. King takes g3, you don't want to do mm -hmm. because it would have lost the knight instead setting his pawn in motion. But now the bishop from d6 guards g3, but he has a bigger problem to worry about. That's the e pawn. And knight f5 in the picture, two seconds on the clock. He's not making, not making it happen. No. Yeah, and it's, it's over. Winning. And a great game, a great recovery by Wesley, taking a bite out of that early lead, winning with the black pieces in an Italian. That was a great game, technically very precise and you mentioned it he's very hard to tilt very hard yeah right after losing uh, two of the first three games going down by uh, two and a half half score you would think hey does he feel like he has to win does he have to do something really impressive he, he did push his pawns from his king but that was part of a standard opening setup and then he went forward from there and look at this game right now we're in a territory where white has trade off the queens even material, but pawn structure is not symmetrical, and white is first to the threat, right? Bishop to b6 hits the rook. Mm -hmm. This rook on d1 is attacking a bishop. This rook is defending said bishop. And I'm not saying that black is in huge danger, but you have to know what you're doing. And there is an opportunity after rook d7 to play a move like knight c5 and potentially get the bishop pair as we head in more towards the ending or to play a move like c4 to kick the bishop. It's a lot to work out here if you are JKB. Yeah. And this move, rook g1 on the uh, sixth move of the knight orf, uh, is a move that uh, that basically has made a resurgence recently. It was really popularized by Ivanchuk. My research tells me it was first played in the year 1990 by the Yugoslavian international master Goran Todorovic. Uh, and it was played several times in the early 90s, popularized in the late 90s. But it's sort of been uh, re retooled in, in recent years after Gary Kasparov, knight orf specialist, made a, a dent in it. So interesting to observe the sort of uh, opening fashions here and like you said robert i think white's developed some very unpleasant pressure here with bishop h3 ideas bishop c5 dude has got to keep his position together he does indeed and not easy for him clearly he's spending clock but that has been a theme a trend i should say of the longest time patrol duda is every single game down a minute on the clock at least and right now no exception to that. He's down a full minute. He still has plenty of time, right? Three minutes and 49 seconds for a blitz game. Pieces have been traded off, but Wesley moving instantly. So, Danya, Knight C5 played here. What to respond with? I don't want to take you. Yeah, maybe you have to, though, takes and Rook D8. I mean, at the very least, you get rid of the immediate initiative, uh, but you do uh, acquiesce to the fact that White has the two bishops. Uh, what else is there? I mean, if you move the bishop from e6 to, let's say, f5, then, well, that paves the road for the f1 bishop to jump out onto c4. So he does take. Yeah, And I like I, that decision. And I also like the follow-up, king c7, because what was such a thorn in black side was this bishop on b6. Well, no b6 square for you. In fact, black, if these are chooses, can eventually play b6. As you mentioned, rook to d8 is possible. There's also, I was going to say, h6. Mm -hmm. Why does my rook need to go to a different file? Instead of going to the open file directly, let me create an open file for my rook yep. and then try to make use of it. And why can try to close that down with a move g6? That, of course, creates its own liabilities uh, because such a change in pawn structure is a very responsible decision, right? Black can play at f5 or something. But I'm leaning toward g6 here. I feel like allowing the opening of the h file, Robert, is... Something just feels a little bit off about that. I mean, G takes H6 is probably a, a draw, but 
I think Wesley's shooting for more here. He's definitely contemplating G6. Will he play it? I feel like he won't. And what? <clears throat> Let's just strike that I from just, the record. I just wanted to prove that you would be right. So if I said something, it's the opposite is going to happen. But the reason why I didn't like G6 and now H5 to follow is these pawns are closer to where Black's pieces are going to go and could fall in the endgame. The reason I like them is if you can imagine that the rooks get traded, this bishop mm -hmm. obviously would come to f8 and then try to get to the g7 pawn. There could be sacrifices that allow this g pawn to spring free. Very long story, but something to keep in the back of your mind. Definitely. I am much more concerned about the h5 pawn than I am about any of Black's pawns. That, no, I think you, you make a, a very fair point uh, because for the time being, the rook on d8 is very stably holding that that a fate square is what you really need to watch for if a bishop lands there as you said it's not going to be good the other thing to watch for if the bishop from e3 eventually sacrifices on h6 with that bishop being on e6 covering the promotion square it's going to be very hard to make that work but still something to watch for and uh wesley deciding to keep that line of, of uh, negotiation of the f8 square open maybe bring the bishop back to c5 but i like duda's activity here and i agree with you robert i i have to say even though i predicted the move, I, I'm i beginning to lose uh, quite a bit of faith in, in White's position, that rook on g1 really tied to its place because bishop g4 is going to be such a disaster. That's certainly true. And I'll add that the pawn on g6 may look good, but the pawn on h5 does not. So it's very weird. And typically we say that a uh, pawns, you know, a pawn chain is only as good as its base. The h5 pawn, it is a bit difficult to get to. It's on a rook file. That means it will take uh, quite a bit of energy to go after it, but it's mm -hmm. not that easy to defend either. And rook g3 played, causing Duda to sit and think. Is there some kind of rook to the queen side coming? Is there a c3 or a c4 push that will allow you to take advantage of your queen side pawn majority? I just like the placement of black's pieces better. Look at the knight on d4, bishop on e6, rook on d8. Harmonious piece placement for Duda. Yeah, I was just finalizing a pun, so hence my delayed response. But I'll share that maybe after the game because I know it's going to make you cringe. <laughs> but now the rook does. He takes the plunge. He says, all right, I'm going to go for activity come hell or high water. By hook or by crook, I'm going to create some chances against the black king. And I actually really, really like that, particularly in the context of the time situation. He's got minute and a half extra. And maybe something like a4 to add heat to the position. He doesn't have a lot of time to spare Robert because Bishop G4, let's not forget, uh, is a very big threat. He's got one or two Tempe at the maximum. Yeah, because once H5 falls down, goes G6. But Donnie, you- King B2. Yes, King B2 is certainly an idea. And I was going to say that your A4 idea, maybe giving up the king side pawns to win the queen side pawns, and then we have a race and the bishops are very good in pawn races because they can both defend the king side and also attack the queen side. The bishop, for example, on the d5 square would be able to threaten the corner and defend the other one. So that's just yeah. why when there are pieces go on both sides of the board, uh, pawns on both sides of the board, I should say, having bishops is, tends to be a good thing. Instead, prophylaxis by Wesley playing f3, accepting new weaknesses, but stopping, of course, the bishop from coming to g4. And Duda says, I won't be denied he's getting his knights f4. I don't, something with that move F3 seems a little off. Now Wesley seems passive again, although he does, he has shut off the immediate line of attack to the H5 pawn. Yeah. And I was thinking Rook C8, but I'm not sure I want to go into the Rookless ending here. Uh, trading off allows the bishops to shine. As king to B7, the Rook C6 was the idea. And here's your A4, Don. It's starting it to comes. look more promising for white. You're actually creating some legitimate threats. Yep. And Rook D5. Well, that pawn is, is fulfilling a very important role of guarding the c4 square, uh, which could be used as a base for the bishop on f1. But the bishop on f1 could also move potentially to g2. Uh, Duda wants to shut that down with knight f4 uh, in a timely manner. Yeah, and actually now knight f4 is even stronger, mm -hmm. and that's why the rook on d5 is nice, because if you take me on f4, I take with the e pawn, I'm opening up the fifth rank and the h5 pawn. And he's trying to exploit wow. that diagonal f4. E takes f4 would be a very bad blunder due to bishop g2. What does Duda do? Does he close it down? He does with the bishop, but f5? That, Ooh. that was clever, though, putting the bishop on e4. And f5 just puts another pawn on a light square, which I likely can go after later in the game. So, or even immediately. Yeah. Sorry, it's, to interrupt. No, no, it's a, an important decision here for 
uh, for Wesley because if you take on e5, the rook takes, and well, thank you for giving me a direct attack on your h5 pawn. Right. I was thinking some bishop g2, e4, rook d3 ideas. I mean, there are some ideas down the long diagonal. Actually, rook d3 here is not out of the question. Oh, it is maybe. Yeah. Okay, that's too much. <laughs> I, I love it. I'm going to show it. Let's bring up the analysis. Sorry, right, this I'm going a little crazy. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I loved it. Uh, bishop d3, bishop g2, e4. Danya's idea was if c takes, now this yeah. pawn is pinned. And if you take with the rook, thank you for your rook with the check. But of course, Black does not have to take on d3. Black can move the rook away. For example, rook takes h5, and then b up in exchange and move on from there. So nice idea, though. The tactics were almost yeah. working. And instead, repetition. we saw the trade. And we're seeing a repetition two times. Who is the one declining the repetition or thinking about declining? And I'm not actually sure. I think it's Wesley. Wesley Bishop G2 would lead to a, a draw. And I think he just, should. Yeah, I think he should too. He just he doesn't have any other chances. He might lose that pawn otherwise. Right. And this rook on E5 now is superb. And he, yes. he allows the... Wait, it's not a draw yet? It no, is. A draw. Okay. <laughs> That's a good decision. And we talked about this. You know, Wesley realizes he's only down a point. Uh, you don't want to do anything crazy you know, and just give up a uh, you know another point uh because there's so much time left in the match there's just no need for that and wesley did just win that game with the black pieces he goes right back to this line with the early g5 it looks risky but wesley proved hey my king does not actually get in as much trouble as it could if and i'm not careful so king, he went king g7 knight g8 last time this is a great time to share my fun because they are repeating uh the line from the previous game we've already discussed it I'm all ears. What did the Swedish grandmaster say when he came up with a good move? I have an Ikea. <laughs> oh my gosh. Where there was a reason I thought of this, but uh, the reason is way too elaborate to talk about. <laughs> talk about the position. I'm, I'm in. All right. All right. All right. I'll talk about the position now. Uh, so. What's going on? In, okay, that was actually pretty okay. I, I can guarantee a lot of people are laughing. We've got over 10,000, well over 10,000 people. And by the way, a huge shout out to everybody joining us here for this awesome match. But I can guarantee you a good amount of those people are laughing right now. Anyway, they're laughing what, at you, not with you, my friend. But that's, they're still laughing. I made bottom line is I made people laugh, whether it's at <laughs> me or with me. Eh, that's less important. You made me cringe. Um, I, can you talk about the chess? Yes. So we have a slightly different structure. And here we have the position heating up d5 by Duda. Basically, what? why did he do that? He did not want to allow Wesley to drive that wedge into the position by playing d5 himself. Now, there's a problem. Wesley takes on f3. Duda's going to take on c6. And who does this favor? How do we think about this? Well, remember, Duda's the one with the two bishops. And Wesley's the one with the weak king. So... Queen takes f3. He's, Duda's got the e-file. The c6 pawn is weak. Unless Wesley comes up with some magical way to coordinate his pieces and fast, he's going to be in trouble here. Maybe queen d7, coordinate the rooks, try to put a rook on e8. Queen d7, by the way, threatens bishop g4, which would trap the queen. Um, but actually... still, queen, bishop a4 now, I think, is very unpleasant. Oh, nice. Okay, so he rook plays a4. this first to get rook e7 check. Bishop g4... Traps the queen, but rookie seven is checked, winning black's queen. So he plays rookie eight. Now, bishop a4, your idea makes sense. Is there some Maybe kind of knight d5? Wait, uh, wait, can I trade it? Take on d5? No, it doesn't work. So I'm just bring up the analysis board so that we're not doing that thing where we're just talking in our heads. Bishop a4 puts pressure on c6. Knight d5 says no can do. I'm blocking your queen. And I was wondering if I could sack my queen to get your queen back, but unfortunately, after rookie seven check. I'm just trading everything off. I have to take first, and then rook f7 saves the day. So it's uh, protecting the seventh rank. Opposite colored bishops should just be in equal game. So we didn't get that. We have queen d1, and yeah. the action continues. Opposite colored bishops, and not opposite colored bishops, excuse me, two bishops for white, knight and bishop for black, pawns on both sides of the board. So in theory, Danya, at the very least, that should favor Duda's chances. Yeah, uh, definitely he is the one pushing for the advantage. But uh, it should also be pointed out that Wesley is he's pretty active. Uh, and, and due to going after the queen trade, which again, as you pointed out, makes perfect sense. That pawn structure on, on the queen side is incredibly concerning in the long run for Wesley. I don't think it's uh, indefensible. I think even if he trades queens, it should be a draw with best play. 
but that's a pretty big asterisk because it's you know it, it, it's hard to find all those subtleties in an endgame. Maybe you take and you go bishop to d3. Nope, he keeps the queens on the board. But now h4 ideas come into mind, and uh, a kingside attack is also not out of the question. Right. And that's an added benefit of keeping the queens on is you can attack an exposed king. But I understand Wesley's reluctance to trade the queens off. When you think about things in how we're taught, right? Bishop pair, better than knight and bishop when there are pawns on both sides of the board. Double pawns, not very promising. So the elements of the nuances of the position certainly favor white from a high level thought process. So why should I trade queens and then remove any chance I may have of uh, sort of fending off some of the bigger threats? But I still like JKD's position, that's for sure. And bishop e1, very interesting. He's going after that a pawn. He, was, he wanted to play c4, and maybe he still does, and then redeploy that bishop to c3. That is, you know, that's park place. That's a central park apartments. Oh, wait, I referenced New York, West Coast, West Coast, just for the record. But uh, when, once that bishop gets there, it's going to exert tremendous pressure on the knight. And here we see it. That pawn on a4 is also a very, very big weakness. So a double whammy here for Wesley, who is going to have to find some way to keep his position together. And we have a rare occurrence. Wesley is down on the clock against JKD. And a big problem, in addition to the a4 pawn being a weakness, how about this a2 pawn being an outside pass pawn? But what am I thinking? Eventually play a3 to make sure I keep that pawn cemented in place. Then play b3, spring free the outside pass pawn. Now d5 says, hmm. hey, I'm going to try to get some play for myself because my position is not looking good if that bishop got to c3. But now what have you done? Isolated doubled pawns, isolated Ugh. a pawn, queen in the center. Not a fan. Ugh, have pawn structure is not, not fun. Now, you don't want to rush with bishop takes a4. That would allow a queen trade at the end of the line. I think Duda needs to find some way to tighten the screw. Oh, he does play bishop a4, but I don't know about that. Did he calculate queen d4 check? Queen d4, I guess he said the outside pass pawn should be I good. Suppose. And Donnie, I'm with you. Like Trading queens seems to give Black decent chances to hold the game. But what he's mm-hmm. probably thinking about, and he's going through the motions quite quickly here, is I have an a pawn, and I also have an extra pawn on the king side. We have this three on two. So white is up a pawn. We have the opposite color bishop dynamic, but I am going to keep your bishop keeping after the a pawn and your king staying on the king side after one of these three pawns and that makes black's life very difficult as white's king will then go try to run over to the queen side so i'm ultimately with you that i think this clearly increases black's chances to hold but at the same time uh, i believe that white has really significant winning chances without a doubt and uh it's it's good that you pointed that out because a lot of people look at this and they wave their hand and ah opposite colored bishops draw uh, but and, and oftentimes that is indeed the case. But I think in recent years, uh, with these modern computers, with, with the rise of Magnus, we've begun to realize that the, the drawing margins, if you will, in many positions are a lot narrower than we initially thought. And you pointed out the two pass pawns, as they say in Russian, trousers. You have that A pawn, number one, and you basically have a passed F pawn. At any moment on demand, you can play G3 and F4 and create a second passer. And the ultimate concept here is to overextend Black's defensive resources. Black is going to have to assign the bishop the a-pawn and the king the f-pawn, but that's a very uh, risky situation. White could employ his king as well. Not going to be easy to win. Bishop d3 is coming here, I think. But but I, I, don't you like, Danya, that the bishop cut off the pawns from each other? Because Black would have loved to establish connected pawns, and the bishop won't be forced and not so yeah, fast. Yeah, that's a great idea. And, and you got to prevent that. But Black does have the idea of inching his king toward d5. Another thing to factor into the calculus here, white could go even g4 at some point in order to fix the h and g pawns on dark squares and then try to pick them off with bishop f8. We'll see what he chooses. Maybe king f2 for now, uh, just to see where what black does. Oh, oh there we g4. go. Nice. So, Danya, I think that he's making uh, both these uh, come true, right? The pawns on the queen side, or sorry, in the center of the board are split. You can't get c5 in to protect. So this pawn will either have to go to d3, in which case you free up the other pieces. And can I, so... Takes king g7 is his idea. He wants to go to h6. Very. But there's savvy. a problem with this. Very concrete problem. Gh5, uh, bishop oh, c5, bishop and bishop, our same idea. Bishop c5, bishop oh, e3, or nice bishop catch. e2. And he plays bishop c5. Bingo. Look, look, at, look at us. And the problem is that king h6, h4. That's a really cool idea. h4, and then you take the pawn. And that is not just trousers. That's 
this that's game. a pantaloons i mean that that's really <laughs> now the winning strategy very simple the bishop holds together look at the bishop multitasking that's the one thing knights can't do the bishop multitasking defending g5 protecting d2 the king saunters its way to the queen side and says bishop on a6 enjoy your stay at uh the marriott uh a6 city because your residence is about to end once the bishop once the king lands on b6. Just don't take this pawn because the king for <laughs> white is cut off. So if this bishop were to move, d2 happens and you can't stop it. So that's just the I one thing. I think he's going to do that. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. That's a that's a little, that's a tricky move though. These players they find tricks until the last drop of blood is spilled, Robert. They have no resources and yet they're finding ways to to uh, you know, to go for tricks, but Duda, of course, a professional. And what presence of mind by a JKD to to recognize intuitively that this end game is is winning. And now that I saw this played out, I think it it was winning. I've seen enough opposite colored bishop type positions in the pro, and it's a win for JKD. He goes up two games once more. But enough opposite colored bishop type of positions in the pro chess league and various commenting events to be on the lookout for. Hey, wait a second. There typically are ideas that provide winning chances and. Danya, I grew up probably similar to you. Like we learned that opposite colored bishops sh like should be a draw. Like most of the time they're a draw, but I've fought really hard against that uh, initial thought to say, no, no, let's look for the winning chances. And there goes Duda. Right. And um, again, the contributions of, of Magnus here have to be indicated. Uh, he's sort of said stuff like, I don't believe in fortresses. Uh, and, and we take that with, with a grain of salt, but, but there's definitely a grain of, of truth to that uh, in the sense that, you know, the resources are so abundant and we realize that now in, in positions where previously we would have uh, dismissed them, I think, as, as drawn or as devoid of, of, of resources. And we see another knight off, this one a little bit more peaceful. And as we've already pointed out, this time Duda deploys his knight to the traditional d7 square, whereas in game one, uh, he put it on c6. Right. He played a much more active plan, knight c6, knight a5. Here, now it's Wesley's pawn on a5, bishop on e3, trying to take over the b6 square. That's why the knight on d7 is so important. And it also is important because if this knight were on c6, I'll just uh, show you this very quickly. Let's say knight d5, knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, for instance. There's no knight on c6 getting under attack and with a fork. So the knight on d7 is much better placed. Right. And uh, h6, again, we see a little bit of posturing here, both sides improving their position. Uh, the idea of h6, obviously, uh, remove back rank problems, but also create the g5 square. Uh, that might seem insignificant, but there are some positions when a bishop lands on g5. And so Wesley drops his bishop back to f2. Interesting, interesting move. And that, you know, Donna, maybe I'm getting aggressive all of a sudden because I'm looking at the score, seeing Wesley's play. Are there ideas in the future for G4, or is that just asking for way too much? Um, no, I think there are. And actually, that's that's one thing you can do is, is lull your opponent to sleep. But Knight H5 preempting that, going for the F4 square. So he's fulfilling the same idea as in the beginning. Knight A5, Knight C4, but on the other side of the board this time. <laughs> Knight H5, Knight F4. Wesley's saying, uh-uh-uh. No, you're not you're going, not going nowhere. nowhere. Right. And Bishop G5 could have been an option, but if not for the D6 pawn. Right. I was using the Bishop move to try to show everybody that this D6 pawn is a huge problem for Black, but I guess Wesley figured the C2 pawn is a problem for him, and he wants to free up his knight, but yep. I don't like the way this is going no. for Wesley. Now D5 is on the radar. I have three defenders of that square. You uh, don't have enough attackers. And why is this... What? Rook C1 and Rook right back to D1. Back. So, I guess we have to give him a shout out for when you recognize your mistake and there are yep. no huge consequences, just say, don't be so proud as to avoid repeating uh, your piece placement. Sometimes it's better just say, recognize it, admit it, and then fix it. Definitely. And uh, we see Duda, he's a knight or specialist, as I, as I mentioned uh, previously, but we'll see what he does now. I mean, if you could get D5 in, that would be very good. By the way, he did something similar with knight h5, knight f6. That was certainly not an admission of failure. Remember, he provoked g3. Uh, g3 is a very significant and essentially a permanent weakness of the king side, and that's emphasized with knight h7. He's going after g5 and h3, potentially. Wesley can play h4 to stop him, but that's yet another weakness. He does. Maybe knight back to f6. I know that sounds crazy, but you've done your job. 
It's it's funny, Donnie, because I was half joking about this G4 push earlier, <laughs> understanding how weak the squares would be. And now look what's happening. If the knight goes to F6, will we see a G4 push? I mean, yeah, why not? Knight F6, but the other knight, that knight on H7 is there to sort of supervise the defense. Uh, and maybe Duda is preparing D5. Maybe he goes Rook D8. Wesley trying to preempt him. He's trying to put a knight on D5. That's why he plays Rook C1, so that the C2 pawn is not going to hang. So can you explain to me? Oh, actually, now I think I get it. So the queen was on C7 earlier, and if he had played Rook A C1, there could have been Bishop takes B3 and Queen takes A5. So with the queen on mm-hmm. C6 and the A5 pawn no longer be under its, under attack, he felt now was the time to bring the A rook over because the rook did not need to sit and protect A5. I was I was about to ask you why did he play Rook D to C1 earlier if he's only going to play Rook A C1 right. later? But it makes a lot of sense now that I'm reflecting. That's a great explanation. And now maybe Queen drops back to E1. I don't know, Duda, is he trying to go after d5 here? Uh, or is he trying to do something on the king side? You know, you mentioned g4, Robert. I'm going to take a page out of your book, and I'm going to say, Duda might want to play g5. And maybe he's holding that knight on h7. Uh, he's saving it for a rainy day, and maybe that rainy day has arrived, uh, and he tries to turn it back on white. Take Bishop takes d5 and g5. I know that sounds crazy, but guess what? White's king side is so weakened that maybe he can get away with it. You don't have to encourage me. I'm, I'm happy to see g5 be played. <laughs> And the bishop's already in, so why not g5 next? And then why not f5? Let's just push all these Do it, g5, right let's go. I think he's going to do it because it's not that he has infinite time. Wesley is saying, I'm not sleeping. I'm going to go c5, and I'm going to break open Black's central defenses. His rooks are well positioned to do that. Duda's got one moment. And you're probably right about that. c5 is happening very shortly and one thing i'll keep in the back of our minds queen a4 a timely queen a4 could be mm. a big nuisance to white but for now i don't think it does that much attacks the knight i'll defend my knight good for you so g5 is what i'm looking at no. in no small part because you made me and he's going for e4 is e4. that what he's going for? okay that makes yeah definitely and that makes sense as well i did like g5 i'm not entirely sure why oh, but there was something he didn't like about that Tuda knows the knight orphan and the game of chess a lot better than I do. So I trust his decision-making here entirely. Strikes in the center with E4, as you said, Robert. And he's carving out all of these squares for all of his pieces. This is heating up, but I think Black is having all the fun. I agree. And Magnus Carlsen has shown great skill in pretty much every position, but in particularly in these kind of Sicilians when he pushes E4, sometimes even at the cost of a pawn. For example, this night we're on D7, you play E4, and if it's captured, you bring the knight to E5. You're trying to loosen up white's control over the light squares and then go forward. And that's a big problem for Wesley right now, as Duda is about even on the clock as Wesley sits and thinks about the ramifications of this decision. So, Danya, it's looking better and better for JKD as his pieces are coming to life. Yeah, that's the that's the night or for you. Once once these pieces unfurl, uh, there's there's going to be a very big price to pay. And Wesley regretting the pawn on g3, the pawn on h4. These permanent and long term weaknesses are in in a very big way fueling the fire as he tries to bring, you know, life saving resources to the game. Rook to c4. He's trying to get this e4 pawn out of there on his own terms, bringing the bishop from e2 to f3, uh, so that it it lends support to these incredibly weak squares on e4 and g4. Will do to preserve the tension, play something like queen f5. Uh, will he add more heat to the to the fire? Maybe bishop f8, uh, essentially involving that rook on e8 in, in the attack. There's a lot of options here. He also doesn't have a lot of time. What does right. he do? And this rook c4, not only does it put pressure on e4 and help out the king side, eventually I was going to say there could be a rook b4 type of maneuver. What is what going, is going on? on here? E3. Watch I was, E3 be played. Oh, yeah, I was guys. about to say it. I'm so happy you said that because my first instinct, because I was thinking about E3 even before uh, D takes E5, I was like, can I give up the pawn, open up the E file? And now the point is that your bishop takes E3, uh, let's bring up the analysis board here, uh-huh. is that there is a hanging bishop on the square. So bishop E3, I can even play queen takes queen D6. D6. Exactly what takes, I was thinking too. Bishop takes, and your bishop is hanging just like mine is. We're so on the same page, general. partner. Yes, indeed. I was really happy you said that because I was thinking about it. You said it. We're doing well, Danya. Come we on, are. man. Look at that. That's that's supportive teamwork. That is for. I mean, I I'm choking up here. <laughs> you know who else is on the same page? JKD. Well, he's also leading on the clock in addition to the scoreboard, bishop in addition to the position. So he decides he, to he take could, with a bishop. You could say he's having a good day. 
He is having, a, I mean, look, you can just sense the good form, a confidence. And you, you know what's a great indicator of good form? The speed with which we went into that opposite color bishop end game. A confidence to, to make critical and responsible decisions is an underestimated metric of good form. No hesitation and accuracy in tactics. This is not looking good for Wesley. Duda has decided to take with a bishop on d6, preserving the queens, uh, which makes sense because the queen on d7 is very well protected. Oh, can he take on c5? Wesley hanging by a thread here. Right. Bishop takes c5. You can't trade queens first because there's an intermezzo. Bishop takes e3 with check. So after bishop takes c5, the bishop would recapture, it seems. But keeping the queens on the board should be good for black as white's king is a bit looser. Right? The pawns on f3, g3, and h4, putting the king in an airy spot. Bishop oh. g3 here is interesting, by the way. Yeah. And rook c4. Okay. So bishop takes g3, the points of knight takes, there's queen takes here. Knight but takes e4 first is probably... There's a whole smorgasbord of, of options here, and no, this is collapsing for Wesley's. Yeah, simply knight e4, queen e4. Oh. That's the best choice, but queen Rook e3. C2. Oh, you! Look at you! Queen e3, king h2, though, it's not over. That Look at that king. That might have oh been a little hasty. Gosh. Where is the... Queen f2, rook e2, though. And queen f2, rook e2, but there's c8... Yeah, queen c8, queen f5, is that? Oh, there's some beautiful <laughs> tactics there. You, queen f5, g6. Uh, let's bring up, the anal bring up the analysis board real quick. Oh. That way we can show. It's a queen f2 here, rook e2. If check, king h7. And if queen f5, you're saying g6. But I can take, and my king gets this square to run away to. No, but you go knight e8 after queen uh, c8, I think. Nope, he's he hasn't done it. We'd have oh to take gosh. a look. The yeah, we'll look at it after all. That. We'll look but at now it upon down, but look at Wesley activating his rook. Unbelievable comeback, Robert. He might even be not worse here. And G5 play, but that gives the F5 square. That could be critical oh. as if a knight could land an outpost and the king could get in some trouble. Incredible stuff. It, he's showing why he won the U.S. championship. This man is not sleeping. Duda may be in great form, but Wesley So is a monster. And now he's overtaken the initiative. Four seconds for Duda. He might go G4 now, Wesley. The knight takes a seven? Cement that square. In knight f7, also there is knight e5 as well as oh, knight does. e8. Very okay. good call. So one of those two first. moves. Be I didn't like taking first. Huh. G4? Ooh, that would have threatened some stuff too. Okay, well now this looks like it is probably going to peter up, but watch out. Don't allow knight e4. Lots of tactics. G4, G4 maybe. Oh, now, like now knight f5. <laughs> I, I actually don't like this at all for black. It's looking pretty bad. In 1.9 seconds, by the way. Yep. How, how does... Oh, okay. The time is <laughs> going on. So how could he have 0.7 seconds? It was going up. Oh. 0. 7. <sighs> and Ooh. great defense with no timers clock. Knight back. Knight c3. Oh, knight d2. He's, he, look knight at, d4. Look at this. King f2. He's getting out. Rook d3, getting out. But rook d3 attacking the... No, he goes there. Okay. Rook e3. So he's got to move. <laughs> it's like so... I want to... It's so get, close. Black is holding on for dear life. It is, but look at Duda. This knight hither and there. Knight to d3 is going to come. And knight on knight 4 he's going to establish his knight there. But he's got a pre the king, the king can t uh, go to attack f4, and there's knight to g5 ideas if the knight goes f4. So to be careful about that. Knight f4, knight to g5. Passing the so hot like, potato around, and white continues to try to find chances. But look at Duda. Knight to d5. He's not missing any forks. Oh, oh that's bad. That's bad. Knight to d3. Knight to oh, d3. That's it. King e6, but is the pawn ending winning? F4. Yes, it is. F4. F4. Beautiful. Game. Game over. F5. And these are the margins with which you have to beat these guys. Are we sure it's over? The king has to go to B3. This is a very yep. famous idea. Overextending the opposition. King could not have gone to B5. And now it's winning. This king up. Incredible. And the black king, you know, has to make a choice at some point, And it's running out of options. And yep, king, king C5. C5 it's over. King D6. You have made king inroads. Five, six. And now you and king F5, you're going to pick off the other pawn or king E6. Oh my Ooh. gosh. What a win. What a win by Wesley. We are Turning obviously bringing up the analysis board for that game because yes, that was a crazy finish indeed. And Duda was doing his best to defend, right? It was not an easy position, but Wesley, he put all the pressure on him. And this was the moment here. Allowing Rook C5 was devastating for mm -hmm. Duda. He needs to keep this defense alive. But once this knight gets pinned, it's forcing all the material off. And after Rook C5, he can't move the knight. Knight C3. That's by that. the way. Just that's yeah. it, but there was a very beautiful win, I think. Instead of knight c3, even knight takes g5, Robert, oh. and f4. <laughs> Not that this was necessary, but just pointing it out.
You're an evil man. But the real question is, was there checkmate earlier in the game? We don't have to look at that now. Uh, but Duda is definitely going to be thinking about this as the next game gets underway. It's so hard, Robert, to put these games out of your mind. And we see Duda here on camera. He isn't too happy. No. And he's, he, he's thinking about it. He's lifting his head up. He's trying to remember the position. He's got to put it behind him. And uh, I think he, he will be able to. And Danya, as we know very well from playing you know, over the board tournaments, even when you have one round a day, sometimes you get a position, you're like, wait, this reminds me of Hesner Ditsky from 2016, right? We remember our games. And so we're like, wait, should I do this or that? When you're playing games back to back to back to back, you don't have time to get those thoughts out of your head. You're like, wait, that game I just played, did I miss the checkmate? I mean, his king was on H3. Was there something there? And you're distracting yourself from the game at hand, and that makes you honestly play worse chess most of the time. And chess players are obsessive like that. It, it might, from a, from the side, and by the way, knight g5 is, is uh, interesting, but uh, from the side, it might seem, well, you know, what's so difficult about just not thinking about it? But this is what these players do. Uh, this is what their passion is. This is their obsession. And that is what it takes. And, and it's not as easy as turning an on and off switch. And bishop e5 here might try to switch off that e5 pawn, but e4 and queen takes g3 has to be watched for. That knight on g3 is actually vulnerable, and it's in the crosshairs of the queen. That's a really instructive tactic that Don is pointing out. The bishop on b6 staring not just at the f2 pawn, but painting the pawn. So it's not just about the attack, also about the king being behind yep. it. Knight f1, the retreating move. I'm still looking at e4 ideas, and he plays rookie a first. Yeah, he's cooking it up. e4 might be very, very strong. White's position is rattling on its foundations, and due to trying to go after that e5 pawn, it's really the only point of contact that he has with Black's position. It's it's the only vulnerability in Wesley's position. But there's already sacrifices galore here. E4. Yep, you called it, Robert. I think he's gonna crunch through White's position if he gets e4 in. Queen how do you... maybe to stop it? I, ugh. I don't know. E4. Like, does it really stop it? That's the essential question nope. that I think you and I both were like, mm, not so no. sure. So he, I think that's actually very smart. White, it is has this pawn e5 that you wanted to target earlier. Now it's well defended. So let's trade off some pieces because you know, we're getting in some trouble. You can't take with the bishop on e3. That's a really important point because c3 hangs. And if you take with the f pawn, how do you Ooh. like the pawns in the third rank? I love them. They're, they're the best pawn structure I've ever seen. Tell us how you really feel. No, they're awesome. Tell me. Especially after black plays e4 and <laughs> checkmates white. <laughs> yeah, fe3. But can he? Well, you know what Duda's thinking about. Bishop takes e3, saying, "All right, I'm going to give up the c3 pawn, and I'm going to go bishop c4 check." But nah, that's too much. That's if better he than does this, do though. this. No, this is bad. Robert, this is really bishop bad. h3 is in the air. Queen g3. This looks terrible. Yeah, this looks horrible. Like, I, you probably had to give up the pawn there. You did. I think, and he th was correct to think about it, but I think he should have taken the plunge. This looks almost lost. Is there a single move like knight d4? This bishop takes h3, as you mentioned. Queen what? h5 there, maybe. Yeah, but you're just losing a pawn and then hoping for compensation, right? Yeah. He's trying to use his knight for defensive purposes. But can you still do it and then bring your rook to f2, for example? And just bring all your pieces yeah. in the attack? Ooh. Actually, bishop takes h3, gh, immediately rook f2, sacking the rook, but that's made oh. if he takes it. <laughs> oh, let's show that. Let us show that's that. That's actually nice. You, He's going to do it. You are... Just an evil man. If rook F2 takes... even now. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I'm just going to show Rook F2. Just King takes, there's Queen H2, and the Rook comes to F8's mate. But you're saying Rook F2 even now if you're Bishop Even C6? now, Bishop takes D5, move the King away. No, too much. <laughs> but that was interesting. Let me tell you, I didn't see, our, I didn't see a direct reputation to it. I don't see it either, if I'm being honest with you, but I see that it's plus five. Hey, so. I know, folks. I know. I'm just, just putting it probably out just, there. Probably just take it. Yeah, no need for that. Because GH, know. again, he has Rook F2. It's, it's not clear. The eval bar went down after all these moves. So clearly, Black has compensation in those lines. But he said, Danya, Robert, these are my pieces. I'm yep. just going to recapture. Exactly. And, I no, and I'm all for too. that. you got to put the brakes on sometimes. Say, I'm up a pawn. I'm attacking. I'm going to go queen g6 here. I'm going to move the bishop away, even to c8, so that it potentially has access to the a6 square. And uh, you don't want to rest on your laurels here if you're Black. If, if Duda consolidates... You know, and by the year 2030, that A5 pawn, I'm keeping, I'm taking a page out of Grandmaster Hess's book. I'm keeping an eye on it. You get into an endgame nonchalantly, white goes C4, guess what? That pawn on A5 might, 
might be a, a pretty he hefty price to pay. So it's not like Wesley is playing without risk at all. He's got to be precise, but that's what he's going to do. I think Bishop takes G2 is, is interesting, continuing the trend of giving up pieces, but no, Bishop E6. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's best just to say, I yeah, got exactly. what I came for. Yeah. Now let me uh, not get ahead of myself. So this move, right. natural retreating move. By the way, Donnie, we have three minutes remaining in this time control. So unless the game is decisive in the very near future, this will be our last game in the longest time control. Yeah. And um, queen g3 here is incredibly juicy. But the problem is it doesn't really threaten anything. That knight on h2, I wouldn't dismiss it. It's actually a very strong defensive piece because it's covering the g4 square. And that is uh, prime real estate for the, for the black bishop. And it can't get there. So Wesley instead deciding to centralize his queen. Maybe c4, he wants to meet with knight c3, getting rid of the bishop. Duda doesn't allow it. Yeah, and the queen was in the same line as a rook. You always have to be on the lookout for that. And black has what seems to me to be perfect coordination of the pieces. Everything is doing an important job. Now, maybe let's bring this rook up to f6 and over to g6. He says, mm -hmm. I'm going to bring my knight back first. Right. And is he going to h5? C4. Is he is queen trying to bring five. his knight there? You, maybe to g4, actually. Okay, to trade trying to off. smoke out that knight on h2, which is the annoying piece. And we just wanted to take a, a second to thank, of course, Chesbra, Grandmasters Hansen, and Hamilton, the OGs, for their very big raid. Over 500 people joining us here. The Speed Chess Championship match between uh, Wesley So and Jan Justoff. Duda, you join at a good time. Uh, we are moving toward the tail end, the last portion of the five-minute segment. We have so much action left. Yes, indeed. Appreciate that to the bras. Good to see you. And well, I'm not sure if JKD is so happy to see them at this particular moment because he <laughs> yes. would have preferred they rated when he was winning exactly. the games, not in this situation where, hey, this king is in trouble. White is a pawn down. But I just saw the Eva go up to minus six and then back down to minus 2.75. I don't understand why he didn't go knight g4 immediately. Uh, that move looks completely devastating because if white does not take the knight, well, if he does, he gets pinned and, and everything is lost. And if he doesn't, then rook f2 comes. I think Wesley's trying to finagle it and find the best moment in time to play knight g4, but I don't know if there's a need to, to finesse this. Should he try bishop a5 just to attack something? And Ooh. actually, if I can get my bishop to this diagonal, it will be a good defender. Yeah, but your knight g4 is coming no matter what. Still, so. yeah. But still, I'm okay. Black is a I agree. Still, but still, okay. I just don't know what else to do. Bishop e1, maybe just to defend the f2 square. It seems Bishop a bit e2. sad. Everything yeah, seems sad. Yeah, I don't sad. see a move. Maybe you don't move the bishop at all. <laughs> but no, that would, that would, that's a great idea. Yes, let's give up the bishop and allow knight g4. Yeah, this, bishop. look at the time. Minus four, knight g4 looks really strong. But then rook f1, I think he's found the best of the worst. Because then, um, okay, Bishop G. Ah, that's nasty. <laughs> Whoa. This is over. Uh, Run for checkmate. Wesley, G4, Queen H5. too strong down the And there's five seconds left. So if this game is resigned right now, <laughs> they would have a uh, one more game. Nope. Time's so up. clinical by Wesley. Bishop G4. He just finds the most surgical way of winning. Queen H4 here is just, well, then G3. Due to trying to give up a couple pawns. And again, let's not forget about that past A pawn. Wesley can't just get into an endgame willy-nilly. That's why knight e5 comes to mind, trying to swing that knight around to f3. That seems like an interesting idea as well. You're, you're just a mean, mean man. He does this. I'll bring his queen back to h4. Queen h4, yep. And then knight e5. <laughs> your, your point is very well taken about this outside pass pawn, because if you trade queens, that could end up being a bit of a problem for you, even though black is still doing very well. Right. But he keeps the queens on the board and... Do it? Trying to trade at all costs? Yeah, rook d8, rook f4. Okay. Uh, some intrigue left. Pinning and hitting e4. And this a pawn, we keep talking about it. If you trade pieces, then I have an outside pass pawn that you're going to struggle to deal with. Yeah, definitely. And, and great thing, again, Wesley's time management has been superb. And he's left himself uh, quite a bit of time to, to think through these critical moments. But uh, yeah, he's got definitely some, maybe rook b8 to stop the rook from moving away from the the first rank so that because of rook b1. I think maybe rook b8 is the key. But then maybe bishop c3. Aha, uh -huh. bishop c3 pinning the knight because you're threatening uh, the g7 pawn. I could buy that. 
Yeah. And what's happening here with the watch the clock. taking his time. He is up plenty of it and he trades. This is the last game officially of the five minute portion. And okay. he decides to go after White's pawn, if that makes sense. Yeah, but A5 is coming. A5. Yeah, but queen C... yeah no, I agree. Queen. Okay. Ooh, that's a nice move because G6, Queen H4. That queen is uh -oh. trying to sneak in here. And you can tell that Wesley's not very happy. He's no, he's let. I mean, th this should never have. It should never have come this close. But knight e5 now. Finally, the Oof. knight gets... Ooh, and that is crunch. Knight d3, queen of... He's going to go after white's king here. Yes, yeah, c4 is hanging C4. for good yep. measure. Everything's a problem. So how A5, do you... Dude, to try and everything he can. I would play... Queen e2. And then a6, knight takes d2. And then the a6 pawn hangs at the end. Knight takes a5? Knight a5. Just get rid of that pawn. What? There must be someone like queen g5 or something that he was worried about. Wait... I didn't like that decision. Careful. Queen d3 check. Careful now. Lost the... Oh, I thought he lost in time. Oh. It was so close. Queen oh, and he, will, he, oh, he lost on time. This is not clear. No, it wasn't clear oh, at all. Goodness. Queen d7, queen c7. Oh my He's gosh. He's back in the game. He, was he lost right back in the game. Because oh, he has lands. an outside pass pawn. Oh, my lands. He, I, I know this is crazy, but these positions can be lost. But in a perpetual attempt there with queen f4 as well. Wow. Wow. And okay, to be fair to Wesley and yes. to Jan, Kristoff, Wesley was dominating the whole game. So even if JKD had some chances toward the end, Wesley was still better. And it would have been a tough sledding for Duda. However, the score is now four to four. Danya, any final thoughts before we head into our break? Incredible action. Both players having their highlights and their lowlights. We expected a close match. We are getting one. Uh, Duda showing amazing form early, but some missed opportunities for both players. They're going to have to think about their strategy, think about their opening, and they have uh, a little break to do that. I can't wait, Robert, for the three-minute portion. We're going to see these players reinvigorate, and we're going to see another 60 minutes of incredible action. Well, we are going to take a break. We'll be back in a few minutes, but... For those of you who are subscribed to the channel, you will enjoy a primetime smackdown of the one and only Gotham Chess taking on the hammer. We'll be right back, everybody. I have a little public service announcement. I've been playing this uh, opening in uh, one minute chess since I was 12 years old. And it's horrible. Do not play like this. But it, it's good enough to beat Levy, though. You, God, that is just so <laughs> evil. That it, that like, I, I didn't even have a chance to concentrate. This man just, <laughs> I was like ready to start an open. Oh. Gotta focus. Gotta. Oh, man. <sighs> this opening, it's so bad, yet it's so good. I, I don't know how to explain it. I still have not fully adapted to this format. Normally, I'm just talking into my own camp. Okay. I'm just talking into my own camera and talking trash against people who can't hear me. And in this particular case, I have somebody who can hear me and it's unnerving. I don't think I played that very well, but I'm, I'm winning on time. I'm winning on position. I'm winning on pretty much every, everything you can be winning in. Yeah, this format is a bit strange. I already feel like I'm making inaccurate moves. Uh-huh, because I have to talk and fill the airtime or else they're not going to pay me for showing up. And it's like, it's just, yeah, it's it's it, it's weird. Like, I want to just sit here and, and try to win and not just be a content farm, but I think I'm just going to end up being a content farm. That's okay. And then it's like, I don't want to talk on my opponent's move because I feel like that's a little disrespectful. But maybe I'm just going to do that. It's the only way I can beat Hammer. I think definitely will be doing that. I have no qualms about such such things. Okay, good start. You, you have no idea how many times I have uh, won a, a piece like that. You're, you're not the first one to, uh, to drop a... Uh... Uh, a fork on D4 how, do, or D5. how does uh, yeah, but the fact that you know theory in this is like even more terrifying how, how can i not know theory i played it like you know are we still in theory 30 40 000 times no i never played anything like this actually my move knight h6 was a recent discovery i made a very a big improvement on the way i played uh, this previously 
Do you, do you have you trained this with Magnus at all? Or? No, but I think he's warming up to this opening. Because sometimes uh, when he's streaming, he will go, oh, I'll test out the hammer. Oh. You know, once upon a time, when we were kids, I legitimately considered myself a better uh, one-minute player than Magnus. I think that's probably still true. No, he, he, he got good. I don't know. Really? Yeah. He almost lost to me once. Yeah, but he, he was dominating some, some online one-minute tournaments. He, he wasn't able to do that previously. It's like so slow. Oh my. Yeah, but this is this is my trick. This is my trick. So I, I will, since, since you're being generous and kind of just giving me checkmate in one move, uh -huh. I'll, I'll share a secret with you. And do not forget to get involved with Guess the Move. You see some of the top guessers here. Uh, International Master Vanilla 03 with a great score. And if that were the game that was selected, we don't know what it will be. I believe it's chosen at random. That would be a cool 75 bucks in your pocket. So please do get involved on chess.com slash live while you follow the games. And speaking of cool things on chess.com, not cash related, but Beth Harmon is pretty cash when it comes to chess. Now, Danya, I have not finished... The queen's gambit yet i'm only okay, four episodes in still haven't watched more so i don't know quite how good beth Harmon gets and there are seven different ages in addition to 70 other wow. adaptive or celebrity bots on chess.com available but i don't know quite how good she gets so don't ruin it for me but you okay, should play that's good her. for me to know because i was about to uh but you yeah. know what i don't know is the outcome of this current match that we're watching i think beth Harmon would have loved to see Wesley So and Jan Zistov due to duking it out. Of course, Wesley, the pre-match favorite by a relatively slim margin, according to Smarter Chess predictions. We called a close match, and we're getting one, Robert. All tied up after the five-minute portion. And, of course, we have Smarter Chess in the chat saying, good start for Duda. And, yeah, it is good because Wesley So is predicted as a one-game favorite in the longest time patrol. He was not able to get that lead. And so with that being the case, and as we see here, well – he has his work cut out for him because the quicker time controls will favor 
Jan and Christian. Well, I should say the quickest time patrol because this one, a three game favorite for Wesley. So, what do you think about that, Donja? I don't know. I and, and I explained this before the, the match. I think that Duda has improved tremendously in uh, faster time controls, and it's hard to factor in the trend, right? The trend is something that's less tangible when you look at the ratings, you look at the results, but. Uh, as far as I've seen from Duda's bullet games, he's gotten faster. He's gotten a little bit crisper in the decision-making. Not that he's ever been bad. I mean, he's been a beast for, for years and uh, he's, he's awesome in, in every sense of the word. Uh, but I think that that might play a role. Now, Wesley, again, that boa constrictor style uh, can serve him very well. He really knows how to shut people down and we'll see which of those styles and tendencies reigns supreme. For sure. And Wesley is so strong at the three minute, segment in these sec matches that he actually defeated magnus in that in their uh, match in the eh, only that i mean previous, previous champion. Yeah, you know not a big deal that really right? indicate anything though i mean, uh, I mean who hasn't defeated that yeah. so, i mean just an everyday occurrence these days just super right. easy but uh in all seriousness wesley obviously an absolute force and we are switching from a sicilian which we've seen been played when jkd is black to now d4 on the first move for wesley so what do you make of that opening change by Wesley. Interesting, interesting stuff. I mean, I think during the breaks, I was going to say, you know, I wonder what the players do. I think some players just go take a breather, you know, drink their espresso, but some players, they look at the games. Uh, it's like you imagine that boxing break, you know, the coach tells them the motivational couple of words here. You just quickly decide, all right, am I going to keep this opening? I'm going to keep that opening. Maybe they look something up really quickly. And that really adds to the intrigue uh, because we really see the decision-making of these players in action. Uh, which I always feel like is awesome. It's a window into these players' minds. You can see the wheels turning. Wesley, very interesting. And Duda taking the first long think. Uh, it, I'm sure this is theory, but this is a very dangerous position if Black doesn't know what to do. That knight on e4 could get trapped after c5. F3 begin, becomes threat, and he plays F3 immediately. Right, so the knight does have the d6 score, which is why you mentioned c5. And I have played this from the white side before, so I know that the common idea is to play d5 for black, and I could have been mixing up my line. So that actually happens, even at the game's very highest levels with players of the caliber of Wesley and JKD, is they know the different ideas, but maybe a subtle change in the move order or will say, well, the idea with d5 in the other variation will not work out here. So that's why JKD was just ensuring that he remembered the right line. But now Bishop D7, there could be a problem with the Knight on F5 hanging. Important tactic. Right. Ooh, that's very interesting. And look at the time and, and do that. When you, whenever you have to move the King tab, that is a very bad sign. This is opening domination, Robert. Unless I'm getting the wrong read on the position, this looks absolutely horrendous by, for uh, JKD. Well, you're a voracious reader. I see all those books in your shelves. You're uh -huh. absolutely correct here. Uh, the one issue that Wesley will have to solve is his problem on E3. You would love to put your bishop on B2 and just yep. aim at the E5 pawn, but then you lose the defense of the E3 square. So A5 played. I think that's a very good choice by young Christoph Duda here to open up the queen side as his king is on F8, which makes his rook on H8 pretty useless for the time being. Right. And uh, Wesley just shifting his rook to B1. He's saying, you know what? Jan, take that A-file. I don't care about the A-file. Take it to your heart's content. He resolves the tension. Now, you mentioned the E3 pawn. Wesley can resolve that gradually. He can castle, go rook D1. Eventually, he can try to push that pawn to E4. Uh, the problem for Duda is just, I don't see how you stop Wesley from doing that. If, if White consolidates and completes his development, and here we see it, Duda trying to do something to, you know, to change the trend of the game, but E4, and there we have it. He doesn't care about the past pawn. The bishop on B5 doing a great job protecting the d3 square and knight h4 it's trying to be a nuisance but after you mm -hmm. castle where's the attack coming from f4 is interesting f4 right saying hey you're not going to attack me i'm going to attack you your king's on f8 my rook's on f1 and danya you called it here it goes yeah knight g6 might be a sad necessity here trying to hold things together yeah he does it but <laughs> man yeah. fe and knight f4 even just very natural play look at the time disparity as well terrible Terrible position for JKD. I wouldn't discount him. These people are monsters at defending. And what a move. H3. H3, just... calm. <laughs> I don't that know if it's good, but it's a move I would not play. I was thinking of Bishop to B2 to hit at the D4 pawn another time and then eventually take on E5. But Wesley just goes, I don't want your knight coming to G4. I don't want your bishop coming to G4. Mm -hmm. Let me take away that square from your pieces. And now Bishop B2. Yeah, I really like that move. I was thinking about something more concrete but the more i look at this yeah you, you, you don't want to take on e5 prematurely 
because that gives up some squares. So bishop b2, okay, bishop c4, stopping king h7. Look at Wesley just, again, the boa constrictor mentality. Let me stop all the threats first, but bishop b6 here, maybe is an interesting defensive attempt. And he goes, for, I think you could take it by queen b3 is what I'm imagining. The problem. Or queen c4 might even be stronger. But after uh, if bishop e6, if you take back, queen but into c4. Then maybe king h7, and at least I evacuate my king. I go rook e8. You know, I'm not sure. I think Wesley might have played a little bit too slowly here. You have a good point that with the king going to h7, even if it costs you a pawn, yep. don't forget about this open a file. We exactly. liked a5 earlier, and if we start trading off pieces, that rook can infiltrate, and I'm with you, Daniel. The pawn e4 isn't exactly so stable. It's uh, not protected by another pawn. Yeah. I think that JKD's chances have improved greatly, but his time, he's down to 21 time. seconds. But Wesley taking a long thing. That is perhaps the most indicative of, of the fact that he recognizes something has gone astray. This move, bishop c4. I liked h3. Bishop c4 took it a notch too far. I think he should have went. He should have gone on the offensive. Now, bishop d3. I like this too. He's preserving the tension uh, based on black stock. But f5 now. Oh, just a winning piece. Wow. Rook b2. I think Duda. Yeah, not sure. Just too low on time. It's impossible to defend this. And good job by Wesley, hunkering down, finding the move, and. Now he's a piece up. And really winning. Do you think Duda is just playing it out to get closer and closer to that one minute time control? Yeah, I think so. Maybe he's entertaining some hopes. King H7. At least he's made his king safe. It's going to have to cost a small price of a piece, but eh. Because if this were a classical game, he of course would resign. Oh, totally. And knight g3. And it's not just a piece. I mean, look at the dominate bishop on d3 blockading the pawn. White's pieces are perfectly arranged. He's going to resign here, I think. He's going to. So. No, still. Bishop c1, queen f2, by the way. Interesting idea. That's in when Wesley's style. We'll make sure to ask the players after the match, but th this is a question that we will probably continue asking ourselves in the audience. Is Jan Kristof Duda trying to waste as much time as possible to get to the bullet where that is his biggest chance? He's seeing the smart chess predictions and he made sure to exit the five minute portion even rather than down a game, which was the prediction. He wants to you know, minimize the damage in the three minute portion. Mm-hmm. No, and these players, they strategize. You know, they think before the match, all right, oh, Bishop H, Bishop yeah. H6, that had some tapatio sauce on top of that, <laughs> and uh, Wesley jumping out a point ahead. But to complete my thought, it, it, you know, these players, they strategize. They think about where they're the favorites, you know, what they want. Uh, it's not that they resolve to lose a section, right? They, they want to win every segment, but they're also realistic. And uh, this isn't just Jan getting tilted. I think this is all very measured and thought out, <laughs> and I agree. What? I laugh because Wesley was fixing his camera. He knows oh, how to play to the crowd. <laughs> he was like, looking at the position and then grabbed the camera so it had a better angle. So thank you, Wesley. We appreciate it. Looking up at the camera. Hello, Wesley. <laughs> all right. You're allowed to focus on the game now. <laughs> <laughs> give us a smile. Give us a wave if you can yeah. hear us. No, of course, he cannot hear us. But uh, about the game. We have a position where we had one pawn traded per side. The C pawn has gone for white, giving the queen on C2 a longer uh, file. The rook on E8 similarly has a semi-open file to work mm -hmm. with, and white has not castled. So what do you make of this dynamic? What are the ideas for black? Are you going C5 in the future? Is that too yeah. risky? Help us understand what's going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know these positions too well. I do think black deploys this bishop to B7, which might seem weird, Right, because the bishop is biting on granite. But b6, as you pointed out, has the uh, alternate intention of preparing c5, which Jan uh, Zistoff prevents with b4. So what's happening here is I think the battle will revolve around whether black can play c5 in the correct version. What Wesley can do, he can play bishop b7, rook c8. He can still try to go c5. Now, yes, at the end of the day, you'll have an isolated pawn on d5, but white's pieces can get sort of tangled up, the queen on the c file. The alternate plan, oh, not, oh c5 immediately. Here we go. Here we go. Now he's going to try to eliminate that bishop on d3 and get the two bishop advantage. So very interesting position. I don't know who's better. Duda doesn't have to take on c5, but he can go bishop b2. Right. B2. And I kind of like that Wesley played c5 immediately without putting the bishop on b7 because the bishop on b7 would have been under attack when the rook comes to b1. Now he can play c4. He can play g6. You called all of this. And there are pluses and minuses here. The good thing for black, you have sort of protected pass pawn on black c4. The bad thing is that this pawn d5 can be undermined or attacked at some point, but the biggest issue that Duda is facing is this bishop on c1. You want that bishop to be out here on g5 yeah. to hit this knight f6 to get after d5. The bishop's not going anywhere. 
E4 maybe is a crazy attempt to muddy muddy the waters, but I, I, honestly, I do think this calls for desperate. Robert, I may be overstating this, but if you take the knight on D7, bishop takes D6. I think dude is seriously contemplating move E4 here because he's got to do something about this. But uh, yeah, this is or some sort of other sacrifice, knight D5. Uh, but this all just this can't work. Wesley's disconnected, unless. Ooh. No, you're right. I see that one bar. Nope, he's back. Okay. Okay, good. I was I like, mean, we see him. Wait. Still showing the red bar on my end of this, on my computer, but hopefully we'll, he'll be fine. And do what it takes on D7. Yep, he's back. Whoa, G4. G4? What Whoa. in the world is that? Can you, I'm well, taking that. Well, he wants that. to play F3. I, I would, I'm, I'm taking it. Don't, bishop I'm... G4. <laughs> Whatever, take me, take with whatever but, piece. Okay, bishop g4, uh, hg, knight g4, king g2. Oh, queen h4 resigns, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, goodness. My lands. This looks so tempting. This is the most tempting move in the history of chess. Like knight g4, or bishop g4. Oh, yeah, knight g4 also not that dumb of an idea, I think, because you preserve the bishop on d7, it can go to f5 later. I think Wesley's deciding not whether he will take on g4, but which piece he'll take it with. Right. And then and he takes it. Oh, bishop f. Oh, no, that doesn't work. Okay. That, that queen h4 coming. Here it yeah. is. Bishop f5 at the end, like you were just saying. Yep. Okay. So there we go. Bishop f5 is a threat. Knight d5, maybe. Oh, bishop f3 on top of everything <laughs> else. Oh, oh, this is nasty. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, Danya. This isn't the best game from JKD. Bishop f3, For, by the way. Yeah. Bishop f3, just, queen h3, and me. Oh, Very lobster clearly. fencer. And look at young Chris off. He's just like, takes a swig of water and is like, nope, so not this Wesley. game. <laughs> not to be outdone. And the water theorem comes into play. I mentioned this in a previous yeah. match, Robert. When And I have to give credit here to my good friend, uh, Peter Giannata, so the Charlotte Chess Center. He coined this. Whenever a player is like comfortable the way a match is going, you immediately see whatever beverage is nearby. They're taking that sip of water. There's no, there has never been, well, due to just violated the, the rule, but usually when you've got a bad position, that water remains untouched. <laughs> and what a win by Wesley. But yeah, not the best game for Duda. As I see Smarter Chess making his way, very proud of his prediction, in the chat saying Wesley in three plus one. And that's all you need to say. Wesley is untouchable, it feels like, in that time patrol, even against Magnus Carlsen. So yeah, Duda, he's... he's in trouble. Yeah, it's just the right balance that Wesley's able to find, right, between intuition and calculation he's got that style where he does a little bit of both and both uh, of those skills for him are so well developed dude has got to put the brakes on this and and maybe just draw a game with black uh hit a free throw stabilize and then it's only two points but he doesn't want to let the spiral out of control yeah you and your sports references today i forgot about Wait, Thompson's earlier MRI down. just came back and i'm pretty devastated yeah um you know I I... season and can you believe this anyways <laughs> I actually can believe it. Uh, I'm not happy about it, but uh, it's terrible, it's terrible, terrible. He's, he's my favorite player. I, well, behind Steph Curry, but oh, devastating. So, not, so in other words, you lied. He's not your favorite player. No, they're 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 sharing first place basically. And I'm guessing James Wiseman is also your favorite player. Now that the uh, words. Okay, we'll talk about this later. Yeah, we'll talk um, about it later. The knight on e5, good piece. The pawn on d5, not so good pawn. So mm -hmm. these seven positions. Isolated pawn, we talked about those earlier, where you want to blockade the pawn, make sure it can't push and trade off, and go after it later in the game. So Wesley has a calm approach. He's saying, I could put my queen on d4 and just say that pawn d5 is stuck in his tracks. Yeah, even d4 might be something to consider for Duda sacking. We saw Wesley do something remotely similar in a previous game, sacking the pawn to open some air up. I don't think the occasion calls for that. But I would consider a way to maybe go queen d6, something where you eventually want to absolve yourself of this weakness. The, the good thing about queen d6 is also that black eyes the h2 square. He'd have some knight g4 ideas. I'm not saying there's any chance that black delivers mate here. Dude is definitely worse here, but I think he can hold this together. He goes queen f6. Okay. I want to show something very quickly, and I think it's important. And so we'll bring the analysis board just to um, call attention to it. Your idea with queen d6 and knight g4 is really nice. And the one thing I was going to say is that a really cool thing for white is you can play him with a queen c7. So just because Ooh. mate is under attack beautiful. doesn't mean you need to block the attacking piece or de defend it more directly. Oh, that's a the queen idea. protects h2 through the enemy queen, offering the trade, taking over the c file, hitting the queenside pawn. So I just want to show that little trick very quickly. I love and the x-ray ideas. 
you know, I'm just trying to be a, an accommodating co-commentator. So I'm here well, for you, buddy. Eh, mostly you're succeeding, but we'll talk about that afterwards. <laughs> well, yeah, we have some stuff to renegotiate. Well, the state of affairs in, in Denmark uh, or in Duda's position are not great. He's a minute down on the clock again, that where'd narrative. You, and well, where's Denmark come from? It's reference. It's Shakespeare reference, right? Oh, okay. Got it. You know, I'm not really well versed on my Shakespeare at the moment, but no, I, I've never. I trust me, I've, I've only read Spark Notes. But what's the? <laughs> state, isn't it rotten in the state of Denmark? I think. Yeah, we can we can talk about you know, the Hamlet and things a little bit later. No, I think we should talk about Hamlet now. All right, so let's just be clear. Blockade the queen on d4. Very happy. You can replace that with a knight. Knight f3. Yeah. And I'm getting to the end game where the knight is very strong. The bishop on e6 is stuck protecting the d5 pawn so not a very good piece whereas white's pieces have a free range oh, here's the rook on c7 rook b8 might be a sad necessity it is now the knight's going to come to b3 or f3 most likely um from i kind of like b3 more because you have more squares to go to even a5 but he plays bishop b5 not allowing the knight to go to e8 to kick the rook I would seriously consider d4 and knight d5. Just saying, all right, I don't care. I'm just going to get some activity for my pieces, and I'm going to get that rook out of c7. I would, I would play d4 here if I were okay. Duda. How about a6? Maybe Wesley goes e4. <laughs> don't, not even take it, just push through. He plays a6, okay. Maybe d4 now. You can also... I why. You know, rook c8. You, can you get rook c8 in you here? Can try. Ooh, and rook b7, he does it. Rook yeah, f1, and mm -hmm. then d4. <laughs> Finally. And then it happens tactically, and white's in big trouble. Exactly. So rook c8 is forced. Now white preserves an advantage, but that is a huge win for black to trade rooks. That This should be a draw now. Right. King comes to d6. But white is still better because the pawn isolated. You need to defend it. And we actually saw an endgame like this. Who was the match? It was a, was a Duda against Fabiano, where it was light square bishop, Bad one versus good one. And the bishop came to b3 and put pressure in the pawn. And eventually e4 was played. I think that was the Duda Fabi match. And that, as I'm thinking about it, you don't want to eliminate in our minds the chances that White has here because he is certainly better. Yeah, without a doubt. And and 26 seconds, he's still a minute up on the clock. Uh, you don't want to fall asleep here if you're White. There's, you know, you can let things out of control. F5 is an interesting resource by Duda trying to trade some pawns, get that king out of d4. Even h5. The more pawns he trades, and he goes g5, he fixes the pawn on g4. I think he's going to play one of these moves, f5, at some point. Maybe knight g6 also. For now, he brings his pieces into the game. An idea for Wesley to play f4, potentially. So it's hard to generate chances here for white, Robert. I, I'm beginning to think this is just a draw. Yeah, f4 does invite f5. And yeah, exactly. You have to be careful. If you push too far, it can backfire. Yep. And this knight... Would like to kick the king out, but I do not want to give up the knight for a bishop. That's a really important point. The bishop on e6 is quite useless, and then white would take over all the dark squares. So knight c6 check would be a very poor decision. In e4, I thought about that, but f6 stopping e5 check, uh, and maybe b5. No, could black. Wesley's got to be careful here. I know that sounds crazy, but he really does. I was asking you the same thing. Like, can black be better? The f4 square yeah. is blacks for the taking. I yeah. I, I again. Okay, he does go b5. I thought bishop d7, but then b takes a6. No, <laughs> bishop a4. Oh. Bishop d7 here is very nasty. Okay, he doesn't do it, but... I guess there's e takes d5. Chance. That's why. Yeah. You want to keep this pawn you're as right. as possible. But no, you're, you're coming up with clever shots there. And by the way, due to down to 9.4 seconds, he is holding very well. He should not be in any big trouble. But when you don't have time and maybe one tricky situation arises, he will not have... At f4, hmm. though. Has He's it the well. tricky situation or isn't on the other side? Okay, Wesley trying to distract his attention, maybe move the bishop away to b7 or something, c6. Yeah, he was bishop c6, and that's Wesley's offering a trade of bishops. Is knight f4 possible? Oh, he goes for it. Knight c4, knight e3. The f3 is hanging, so you have to. Knight e4 give... check is interesting, trying to inch the king closer. Knight f4, go. So. What now? Wesley is kind of playing for a win, but he's playing with fire. He can be worse. 96 check. 96 check. And then King comes in. Black King is saving better. also. That needs to be factored in. On oh, H5. Trying to give this pawn to H4. Wow. Splitting Wesley the pawn. takes it. Now he's got weaknesses all over the place. Knight back to F4. Bishop F5. That's what he wants to accomplish. Just have a more active piece. But look at this. There's a problem on the other side of the board, Danya. Uh-oh. B5. 
What's through. going on? He takes it. Bishop f3. He's got a oh. he's got a chance now. H4. Wesley trying to remove the pieces from the board. <laughs> he's gonna succeed. He's gonna yeah, move. If he took the pawn, it was king e3, forking uh, the two pieces. So black can never lose this game. But Draw. does he have any winning chances? Not really. Yeah. Take Draw. it. Take this pawn. Wow. And that was more interesting than it looks. Like if you look at that game casually, ah, you know, equal end game. Okay, they drew, but. There's a lot of tension underwater there. And Duda, in a certain sense, succeeding and drawing with black, he's got to make something of the white pieces. And we were talking about this, Daniel. White initially was better because of the isolated pawn, but we saw Wesley start pushing a little bit too much, and Wesley knew it. He was very conscientiously saying, I'm going to try to press for win because Duda doesn't have time. I think he understood he was risking his position as well but now due to with the white pieces as you just said Danya, he needs to prove an advantage here rather than allowing wesley to have simple play where frankly he's the better of the two players in the three minute yeah and uh we have another nimzo another variation of the nimzo and uh this one i don't know too much about i mean these bishops on b2 and a2 produce kind of an amusing effect uh they're the kinds of pieces that could be monsters they could be terrible I, as far as I remember, uh, Wesley, well, probably black goes like knight c6, and at some point e5 to stir things up in the center because that bishop on a6 is definitely a beast. We know where that bishop is uh, going to be in the bishop's hall of fame. <laughs> c4. First ballot hall of famer there from uh, right. the bishop on a6. Not anymore, though. Now the bishop's closed off. So this, right. was, this was in its prime. It was bound for the hall. Now it's like, eh, I mean, he's yeah, play a couple more the bishop years. Bishop on a2, though. I don't know about well, that. That's like Carmelo we, Anthony. We knew that was going to the Hall of Shame, okay? Say, what? You going after the Trailblazers now? They just signed Robert Covington, and you're going after them? Oh, they got Dame Dollar. They they have Nurkic back. No, I love, I love Lillard. Trust me. I'm just I'm going after a very specific player. Okay, well, I mean, CJ McCollum did nothing the basketball to you. again. Yeah, but it's your fault. So I think it's your fault. Watch out for E5. Your, I don't think I'm going to commentate anything. Right. <laughs> so what's E5 is the threat, so Queen E2 is that the But then you pin yourself against the Queen on A6. So you, what you're essentially telling me is you don't really like the isolated pawns on the queen side for white, and you prefer black's structure. Yeah, I don't know why, but I feel like I, I do. <laughs> so Duda's thinking about where to put his queen. Queen a4 is possible, but every one of these moves is a drawback. Queen a4 brings the queen away from the king side, and Wesley's going to play bishop b7. And then if white castles short, he's going to regret having the queen on a4. Black's going to go knight g4. All of a sudden, that attack is going to come so fast. This is a very that. hard decision, Robert. I think Duda's in trouble again, and again, he's low on time. Yeah, I was just showing that uh, very quickly. Come back to live position, but it's a very important point that if the queen gets distracted all the way over to the queen side, your king is not going to be happy about the consequences. So he plays queen two. That's reasonable. Protecting c4 another time, even though you're walking to a pin. Perhaps there's knight to b5 just to attack the queen and make c4 feel a little bit more uh, defended. And Danya, the bishop on b2, it is now... In the open, so is that enough for white, or is the c4 pawn so weak that? Oh, look at that move! Ooh, cb queen a5. Look at check. that move! That's that really is, cool. That's technique. That is skill right there. Playing yeah, it really is. I love that. It. Is such a classy move, and, and and it puts dude in such a difficult spot. So the idea is c takes b5. It seems like a blunder. Right? What are you doing? Queen is hanging. Bishop is hanging. But queen a5 check. And if bishop c3. He can take on b5, but he can also take on a3, attacking the rook on c1. Spoiled for choice. And just yep. very, if we play a little bit more simplistically, now we have an isolated pawn and black has control of the square in front of it, the blockading square. Oh, and not just control, but domination over, I mean, just total dominance over the d5 square. Now, Duda, one should mention, has a solid position. These positions are sometimes overestimated because it's actually hard to make progress here in the long run. Look at Duda's pawn on c5, pawn on d4, well protected. So work to be done for Wesley. A lot of work indeed. And we talked about the attack that Wesley tried to drum up in that game where he, he had an isolated pawn rather than the backward pawn, but they have some similarities, right? You blockade a backward pawn and you put pressure on it. So this pawn D4 isn't the happiest, but White's bishop pair, that will give him chances here. Now G2 under, look at that. Look at Dudas, please take well, me on G2. Saying, yeah. He might throw in a D5. Absolutely. Right? If Bishop takes, she's daring Wesley to take on G2. I don't think he's going to do that. <laughs> because D5, Rook G3. Now you have two bishops staring at the black king side. And There's I know I'm water. drawing a ton of arrows, but it's worth it. 
Right. And again, the time is going to factor in here. Duda be well below a minute now. I mean, as soon as this gets tactical, that's the issue. It's not when the position remains close. It's when the position gets tactical. It's just not going to have the time to, to process everything. Queen C2. Now he's got the battery going against that. He can complete the rook left. Wesley will have some stuff to deal with on the king side if he does that. When he does that, potentially. I'm into it. And do not take this pawn on d4. That, okay, no. I thought for a second he did. I saw the rook go yeah, up. What? <laughs> if I, I was like, don't do it. No. No, he puts his rook on d5 to actually help himself out and maybe try to land an attack. And rook g3, of course. The bishop on b2 still defending this pawn. And black, to his credit, He's really stabilized mm -hmm. his position. The bishop on c4, rook on d5. Uh, it's not like white can make easy progress here. No. So how maybe do you how do you score? Well, maybe the well, first mm. of all, the moment the rook moves away from d5, uh, white's gonna play d5. He's just gonna you know, <laughs> like a shark coming out of the water, you gasping for breath. It's you know, he's that rook on d5. It, it's good, but it's also. Uh, holding the world on its shoulders. Bishop d1, bishop f3 is a maneuver that I think Duda's considering here, trying to get that rook out of there. Well, he doesn't have too much time to consider things anymore. No, he He's doesn't. on 13 seconds. And I do like White's position, but I trust Wesley so. And as we, are we going to see a rook g4, okay. knight f6, back and forth? I think rook f3. I don't see a downside to that. No, he does go rook g4. Told you. Well, yeah, you're really, you're really he's good. Eight, it, he's eight seconds, Danya. Rook f4, he's got to decide something. Four seconds. Wesley's not repeating moves, is he? Yeah, he is. See, my camera may be doing funky things today that make me seem extremely beat red. I, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. These draw by repetitions, sadly, I've grown accustomed to them. I want to see action unfold every single time. But that was well-played defense by Wesley, just making sure he wasn't getting in trouble. And he has a two-game lead, Danya. So right. I don't think he could have done much there. Yeah, I wouldn't dismiss that decision. I actually think that the more I looked at that position... The moment you do something a little bit inaccurate, Duda gets his bishops active, and it could turn from looking good to getting checkmated in a moment. And Wesley, again, he's up two points. He believes in his skill. He's got half of the three-minute segment to go. He's got the white pieces. He sees no purpose in taking what he feels is unnecessary risk, of course. I also am a big fan of action, but that's that's the decision he's he's made. Yes, indeed. And now we have... A pawn that can be captured on e5, or do you capture the pawn on d5 first? That's, That's what, what he's what thinking about. <laughs> he's trying to figure out. He takes on d5. And the, one of those examples of a known position, but you just want to make sure that you're remembering it correctly because you make one inaccuracy, and all of a sudden, white gets the initiative, and you're like, okay, why didn't I take on d5 before taking on e5? So he, he right. did do that. The bishop on d5 looks good. The bishop on e5 also looks good. Will bishop h6 be a thing? Will bishop h3 be a thing? It's essentially that white's up a tempo in, in the entirely symmetrical position. Right. And uh, these are actually very unpleasant. Uh, you know, it, it seems it has this air of a symmetrical position, but it needs to be played with great accuracy by black uh, in order, as you said, to not allow this extra tempo to spiral out of control into an initiative. Queen b6 yeah. I like. He's kind of preempting queen b3. He's preparing rook d8. Wesley, though, deploying his bishop to h6. This, this thing is heating up. It certainly is, and rook d8 looks very natural here. The it one does. downside of rook d8 is if the queen is forced away from the defense, mm -hmm. there could be a bishop takes f7 check, right? Because rooks tend to win the stare down on an open file when there is a piece in between a rook and a queen, but you can get a discovery at some moment. So instead, bishop g7 was played. Looks reasonable. If this queen needs to help the diagonal, you can go to f6, but importantly, you're stopping the queen from getting to d4. Danya, white is up more or less two developing moves at the moment. Yeah. But he's because there are, no, there are no weaknesses, right? So that's how relevant is that lead in development? Well, he's got to make something happen in the next couple of moves because what is Black going to do? He's, well, knight a4, that's what Wesley's trying because if Duda gets his knight from b8, let's say to f6, okay, the problems have been solved. This king is safe. So Wesley he's trying to get that d4 square for his queen. And Duda might want to slide his queen around to f6 to prevent that from happening. That, however, contains its own drawbacks. Wesley can then imitate him and position his own queen on b3, attacking right. the b7 pawn. So Duda, that knight a4 is an amazing Danya, move. Sorry to interrupt you. There's rook takes c8 there as well. Right? After? Rook takes c queen f6, rook takes c8. Let's show the analysis. Oh, board no, quick. you didn't. That's oh, that's yes, I evil. did, my friend. Hey, I'm just stealing a pawn. You know, why well, not? You're just evil. I'm a pawn grabber. But knight a4, Robert, that's the kind of move you look at. Ah, okay, let's move on. It's actually a brilliant move. 
it forces Black to make a very committal decision. And Queen and he, B4, he had to stop that. A3 yeah, he, is possible. He's keeping B7 defend and keeping D4 in control. Goes Queen G4. Rook C8 is meant by, don't forget, Wait, Queen's can move back. Oh, Queen C8. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. But, oh my, there's a crazy line. But anyways, Queen B3, I think, is the safe continuation. But there's right. so many choices here White can make. What else can he do? He can try to keep the queen away from g4. He can play f3, although that's pretty weakening. Yeah, that doesn't come recommended. No, definitely not. e4 even. But Wesley definitely correct in taking his time here. He senses that this is a moment he could really press while the iron is hot. He doesn't want to mess this up. And rook takes d5. Let's say black can move. Would look like a threat because you take one piece. When the queen takes back, you take a second piece. But the issue is your bishop on c8 loses defender. So I was thinking about ideas with a rook takes d5, the knight not defended any longer on a4, but you can't get away with it because bishop hangs. He plays f3. He Who are you, do Danya? I don't know. That move looks so bad to me. It but really does. No, I agree. But he sees something very concrete. I think he really wants to get that queen of his to d4 at all costs. And he thinks that if he does that, his problems are going to be solved, but actually queen d4 check. I was a little bit worried about e5. I was worried about e5 here because queen takes e5, f6. Oh, and then queen c7. I see. Also, you're not actually attacking the bishop on d5. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, because no, that falls apart. Thing. That's rook f d1 now, but then knight c6. And there's also e6 ideas that you have to keep an eye out for because uh, the bishop's pinned. Yeah, so rook f d1, knight c6, and knight c... Yeah... I don't know. I think knight c6 is almost forced. Okay. So knight c6, you're saying? I mean, so e6, there must be some tactical flaw. There must be. Or like but knight what, c5 maybe or something. Queen takes d5. So maybe not knight queen c5. Queen a4. Uh -huh. Oh, so it was knight c5. Ha! Let me show that real quick. <laughs> I was like, that was my intuition, but now it's not loving it. So is there queen... Guess we're about to find out. Queen I'll takes d5, queen talking. a4. It's going to happen. Is there some B5 there? No. Wait, so Wesley falling for the same trap that I just fell for? Because I see the eval bar. Oh, is... queen, I think it's queen E5. Oh my gosh, you just picked queen F7. That's it. Instead of capturing, instead of being greedy, he just went queen F7. And, well, huh. that's a problem. It is, this is a pretty serious problem, I'd say, because that bishop cannot move. Now, wait no. a minute. Knight A7, what is going on here? The speed of the, what, what? Robert, rook d8. Is this going to sustain itself, though? Well, for, on a worst-case scenario, Duda can play rook a6, rook b6, give the knight back up, uh, right. and, and win b2. I think he's preparing for that. Yes, because this is a long journey. Maybe it's just going. King d6, and then knight d7 if you take on g6. But the problem yeah, is... that's too many pawns. And the pawns are fast. Draw? Is it draw? He plays b5. I think Why? Jiggity sees the score. He wants to win, but he's six seconds. And I think it's more likely that he blunders than he but I don't know about that. b5, now he cannot extricate his knight at all. He has no ideas here. I but think if we're king e3, if king e3, there's b4. So he has like one little oh, trick to that, that. That, is a, oh, that is a vicious trick. b4, you could even ignore. Okay, wait. Oh, but this doing? is spiraling out of control. There's yeah, just no way just, this is good. I almost feel like Rook takes g6 and, or f5 first and just pushing these pawns is good. f5, and you could even sack something and get these pawns rolling like f5 gf ef king has to go to b7 right you need one more move on rook a6 this is bad here here it comes rook takes b8 there was interesting but instead he just pushes the pawns straight through g6 here it's just that easy just push, push him it. baby push him baby but it's not gonna be that easy as it seems maybe you need the king's support right because g7 king... rook takes f7 this is not over the... oh, it's so rook close e8. rook e8 have rook f8 I'm just trying to be a clown. But he was rook e8, now g7. Oh, oh knight check move. doesn't do anything. <laughs> g7, uh, but this is... Oh, g7, rook f7, he had some forks. Oh, he's going to move, but it's over. Yeah, it's he was indefensible losing. and oh, heartbreaking loss. It seemed there for a moment, Robert, that Wesley had let this out of control, but no. Resources coming everywhere and a huge win extending the lead to three points now. Let's bring the analysis board up quickly wow. just to... Show everybody how Wesley not just escaped, but even thrived after blundering Incredible. a piece, right? He Incredible. blundered. Incredible. And we'll just go back to that moment real quick here. He thought that he had pressure. There were some tactics. Queen F7 says, well, down goes your bishop. But look what he did. He gives him a piece for just one pawn, understanding that black cannot fully develop because the knight is pinned. And so 
as we got forward here, you were right, Daniel. Rook a6, rook b6, go after the b2 pawn and try to make a draw. Yeah. But he went for the win. He was all in at this point. Even if objectively the computer likes black's position, now the pawns were too quick. to defend. Yeah, that was that. So let's go back to the live board. As Wesley showed his might in that game, he is up eight to five, plus three for Wesley so far in the three plus one. Smarter chess looking, well, for lack of a better term, quite smart <laughs> with the predictions. And Wesley, once again, probably in a position that he's happy about because I yeah. see these pieces all in line in the center of the board. And there's not even a threat right now for white. This bishop is not actually under attack. Right. And smart chess certainly looking smarter than some commentator who shall remain unnamed, who may or may not have predicted, well, something going in Duda's favor. But yeah, this position, he's got that blockade going. Look at those light squares on the queen side, the C4 square, B3 square. Duda has control of the center, as you indicated, but even C6 would blunt the bishop on G2. So all of white's alleged strengths are are sort of dulled here and and i think blacks again got the initiative reeling here is duda and wesley so confident you could just sense it complete control over the light squares blacks uh pieces queen and bishop lined up these pawns for white on dark squares what meet what happens if all your pawns are dark squares the light squares are your opponents for the taking so queen c2 he's claiming and Daniel, let me know what you think about this that the three pawns and the C through E files, or let's just two pawns, D and E file. So an extra central pawn for white. Is that enough? Do you look at this position and say, oh, I like white's center, or do you see the flow of black's pieces is overwhelming? Yeah, so that's a, that's a good way to look at the position. Now, I would say this. Uh, in the context of a blitz game, white's got, in a certain sense, and I know this sounds crazy, but he's got the more stable position. What does that mean? If black messes up, he goes after a pawn, things spiral out of control. White center could really make its presence felt. From an objective standpoint, I absolutely think black is better. Look at the, and Wesley is doing a great job. He didn't take on a four there, allowing bishop b4. He's going to put a knight on c4. He's going to establish a blockade. I think the window of opportunity for Duda is shutting closed very, very quickly. Maybe bishop b4, try to get some a5 stuff in. Uh, so there's stuff to worry about for Wesley. He's got to be careful. But objectively, I think he's significantly better here. And one big thing is that Black can actually play e4 followed by f5 and close down the g2 bishop, which is trying to make its presence felt at some point. And we're talking about the queenside light squares under Black's control. That remains an issue. And if you play e4 for white, challenging the bishop, you're undermining, in a sense, your own pawn structure in the center. The pawns are not protected by pawns anymore. They have to be protected by pieces, and that could be a problem. Exactly. And now Duda, wow, one minute again. It's, you know, I sound like a broken record, but it's a huge narrative of the match. Uh, at least here, well, night B3, I was going to say the time situation. Look, again, the confidence, intermediate move attacking the Rook. Does Duda have to play Rook A2? Can he sack? No, he does. Now may Wesley maybe will take back on E5, or maybe even not. Maybe he's looking for something better. Exploiting that discovery on the Rook. Night I'd be D4. careful about that, though. But then CD, I thought, I thought about that, but now CD. I feel like white really stabilizes in the center. I'm not sure about that. I agree with you, actually. And look actually, at the extra sure material this. for black. You get a rook for just a knight and a pawn. But look how many pawns are in the center here. And you can't get e4. You would love to play e4 and d5 now. Really just would. continue pushing those pawns. Can't get away with it. There's nothing protecting the e4 square. Definitely still better for black. And now what Wesley can do is take on f3 and take on e5, exposing the attack on the bishop on f3. And white center collapses. I had a moment of doubt there, but I don't know what I was doing doubting Wesley, who is don't, don't doubt yourself. Spectacular Daniel. chess. You should be confident. I'm confident in you. Oh, you should also be confident in yourself. Well, thank you. This means a lot to me. And c5 might make me confident in Wesley's position. But bishop c6, perhaps, just to perhaps uh, attack your rook. But even You're, there, uh, I think we might see that. What's that guess of guess the move context again? I think we might uh, <laughs> contest. We might have to participate in that, Robert. Honestly, I, I've been looking to see the people who have been leading. Indian lad, Grandmaster. Nice. Uh, Narayan has been doing very well in it. Dragon B70, as always, and Vavrikirk. These are like the three people that are always at the top of guess. And here, D5. To but now, let's C4. But I'm looking at this diagonal. <laughs> and you're looking at that diagonal. I am looking at that diagonal. You're also looking at the file. I'm looking at the F file and Queen F3. <laughs> 
can happen on the F file. So, so based on what we just said, should we just call it a draw? You're looking at yeah. one diagonal, I'm looking at another. Yeah, looking you're looking at the other, and diagonals cancel each other out. Yep, exactly. The, Rook d5. Okay, he did not like the presence of that bishop on c6. Wow, that's a pretty Black drastic retained. decision, though. I like it, though, because Black has this pass pawn that's much clearer. White's f2 pawn. Is that really a pass pawn, or is it a target? Oh, that's I think you only like that because it might lead to a draw. <laughs> <laughs> I did ask for a draw, so. Uh, okay, bishop d4. Middle. I think it's a draw. Just trying to trade. and You, you do have his pass pawn, but it's not going anywhere. Is what your claim at least. And queen c7 potentially just tying yourself to the a5 pawn. White's got to be careful, I agree, but still. Check. And back. Okay. And back. Like so they're just going to repeat? Can he bring his rook to c8? He can sure try. I feel like but the thing is, Donnie, if we trade queens, right? Black will be slightly better in those end games. Yeah, definitely. With a, with a pass pawn like this. So, no, Duda... He has to go for the attack on Black's king, as weird as that sounds. Rookie one. I would mm -hmm. go for the back ranker. And after h6, maybe try to orchestrate some h4, h5. That's probably too slow. Okay, going for the activity. Now queen d1 and c3, Robert. Ooh, wait a minute. He's going to play rook c4 and queen c6. So he's just going to gang up on the pawn uh, anyway. Or this queen d1, it. just rookie one. But no. Oh, uh -oh. trying to go for an attack. Be rook careful. Four maybe. Ooh, that looks... F4. Oh, but now rook back to d8 is possible, and rook d2. Oh, this is spiraling out of control. Three seconds. That's why he, he's not doing well in the clock. Able, yeah. Okay. So a, I mean, c2, rook c4. Now he, he's covering. Oh, and queen f1. Here comes the king hunt. Queen f1 forces queen F1. the king out. And where does it go? So he goes. He's going back g2, and he has oh. c2 under control. So queen f1, king h4, I guess. And g5. It's just risky. Yeah, there must be some mate there, but Wesley also not a lot of time. G5, I think. Okay, but G5, you could lose that game. King, like, you king absolutely could, but I think you have to do it. That's the only check. Four seconds for Wesley. He's got to move. Oh, king G4, right? Queen H3, king G6. Oh, queen, queen H3, queen F5. Queen F5. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. He does this king F7. He's got to run. But there's... Okay. Oh, takes what calm to do that. Which, there playing. has to be a mate. Oh, queen, queen C3. H3. Discovery. <laughs> oh, he stops him. Where does the king go? What is Wesley? King, king six F7, check. King H7. Queen D3. Queen D oh, no, Queen D3 is Rook G6. G6. He loses on time. Oh, he lost on time. But no way. Wow. <laughs> what an ending. Fireworks. I don't think that was that easy after Queen D3, Rook G6, and King D7. No, that was... Yeah, I mean, he's no The second time. time we've seen that incredible comeback, and he loses on time just when it seems he's completed it. That was an insane king march. Right, His king went from G1 into... Where did it end up? An E6, E6. territory? Oh Wesley shaking his head. I can't believe I let that king out, but <laughs> he'll take it. And that time management is paying off in a big way. You know, Donya, we've made many sports references thus far, and you take a timeout to gather yourself. In chess, when you time out, you, you just lose the game. So, unfortunately right. for JKD here, he has not found his footing in this time. But he is down four points right now and That's we know great. how talented it Don, uh, donya you too you also are a very talented <laughs> bullet but duda is in the one plus one he beat fabiano eight to one in that time control that's ridiculous but something about wesley so there's something about him yep, that just is, is kind of duda's kryptonite no he's just he's just good and he keeps the pressure going and by the way this d5 move that is a trap actually Wait, where wesley uh, just i've fallen into that is he bringing and his cat in trouble screen? again. Sorry. No, you're good. There's e, uh, e4 ideas is done his point, but Wesley got up from his chair and I'm hoping he's bringing <laughs> his cat. That's what I'm looking for. I haven't seen Wesley's cat actually. Wow. I, I, I do like that chair though. I think we should analyze that. That's a pretty good idea. So yeah, Duda is just, he's reeling. And as you said, Wesley is playing all of the games at once, the time game and the chess game. And he's not taking his foot off the gas pedal. It's not that Wesley doesn't make mistakes. He does. But when he makes them, uh, he doesn't make them in pairs. He recovers. He keeps the pressure going. And it is producing some excellent chess here. And once again, Duda is down quite a lot of time here. And you said you've walked in this E4. Yep. So you have three Bad. pawns for the piece? Yeah, but it's not enough. I think the end game, end game is good for white. Uh, and I'm pretty sure... 
Well, Wesley's thinking about taking the knight on c3. I don't necessarily think he has to. I mean, he can take the queen and just drop his rook back. And it's hard for black to coordinate his pieces. Uh, and he might end up losing one or two of his pawns. Yeah, I mean, this bishop on g2, sort of Catalan-style bishop, always strong in the diagonal, and you will have control over the light squares. But it is three pawns. Danya says you have a difficult time defending. I, I totally buy that. But I don't have experience in these lines. I'm just counting the material, looking at the position. White is better. How much is the essential question? Yeah, uh, not winning for sure. Uh, but Duda's got to be very precise. I think queen takes queen would at least take the heat off of the B pawn, give black a tempo, which he uses to bring his rook into the game. <laughs> Whilst he says, no, 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 you're going to defend that pawn. And the move B6, it creates a structural weakness. It leaves the C6 knight undefended. Might not seem important, but guess what? That Catalan bishop you referenced, that could uh, make his presence felt as well. And the problem for black is when you have extra pawns, you want to start mobilizing those pawns. But white is the one actually attacking the a7 pawn. If the a7 pawn moves to a5, then b6 is weak. Now 91. Somehow, you know, I wouldn't think this would be an essential pawn, but this a pawn, having the ability to play a3 at some point to make sure the knight doesn't get into b4 is really important because otherwise black could play a5 in knight b4 himself. Right, that's a great point. Uh, every little detail is significant. Wesley creating that g5 square for his knight with a move h4. Very classy. Duda trying to cover up all of the bases here, but you can see he's hanging on by a thread. That knight from g5, it can come to e4. And then the b6 pawn is overloaded. He can take on c5. This is exactly what I sort of thought might happen, you know, with, with Black's pawns. He's got a lot of them, but it's so hard to sustain them, Robert. This is looking very bad. You're totally right. Knight e4 takes c5, a nice thread. Of course, you would like to take this bishop as well. So what if I put my bishop on d4? I know I don't want to give up my opposite color bishop, Dark sword bishop with control of the whole diagonal. But if you take me and I can take with the C pawn, don't I get a pass pawn to work with as well? That's a that's a great call. I think bishop d4 has to be played. Uh, you know, whatever the objective evaluation, and he's got to play it very fast. Again, he's down a minute. He's trying to put his bishop on e7, but I don't know. That's also interesting. I liked your idea though. Active. Yeah, this is a bit more passive. You can play f5 later, right, with the knight on e4 to kick it. And he goes for this. So he doesn't want to trade pieces. And maybe that's a reasonable choice. Wesley, Danya, look at the clock. Wesley, well ahead on time here. It's the story of, in many ways, it's it's one of the, and not to take away from his uh, superb play, but it just adds to his mastery, that this management of time. It's so not too fast and not too slow. It's just perfect. He always leaves himself enough time to think through the critical moments. Knight to C3, what is his idea? How does he break down Black's defenses? He doesn't have forever Duda deploying his pieces very nicely. Yeah, and how do you get at this a7 pawn again? Well, you don't, just black is tied down. This rook on d7 mm -hmm. would love to start moving in to d2, for example, but you drop the a7 pawn. Once a7 falls, down goes b6. So black tied down here, white sort of tied down as well. Who is going to rook get the d upper hand? Well, rook d1 is possible. He can swap a pair of rooks. The question is, is that a good thing? They're delaying, Wesley delaying on that for now. Duda can just bide his time, but that, even that's not easy to do. Does he play King G8 or something? It's not easy to make a single move. How about F5? Just say the heck with it. I'm, I'm getting yeah, active here. I like it. He's 20 seconds. You just got to move. You, you, you can't gotta think. You got to make a decision. Come on, young Kristoff. Not that we're rooting for either player, but it just feels like this is a trend that we need him to fix yes. for his own sake. Not exactly. For knight to C4. He's trying to dislodge the knight from A5. He's using the opportunity. Black has left the D file. He has a moment in five seconds, Robert. They're just impossible to play in this position. Okay, he's attacking this. This rook is trying to come down D2. Okay, the rook's not getting to D2. Knight C5 uh, is possible, but then rook D2. But look, he's giving up his bishop. I think the bishop on D4 earlier would have been a better placement for it, but he's mm -hmm. been playing fine. It just now you can take it if you want, but I don't think that Wesley does because the knight covers D2 as well. It's only a matter of time. No pun intended. Right, certainly is. Horrible. <laughs> Wait, wasn't Back knight takes to c7? Is that a repetition? I feel like they had this before. <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned knight takes c5. He didn't play it. And okay, bishop attacking this knight. Back. <laughs> One second. Oh, he barely oh. got the move off. Oh. Okay, but knight g, I mean, Wesley has so many ideas here. Look at him just tightening the screws. 1.3 seconds when he made he's going to flag. It's sad to see. Because he's actually defending really well, Robert. He's actually not letting Wesley make that much progress. And, and Duda just 
puts his hand out, shakes his head, and is like, what? Uh, I mean, you have one second for many moves throughout this match. You're going to be losing on time, unfortunately. Well, something that's in, I noticed, and not to be the Monday morning, you know, armchair general here, they both of these players have put me to shame in the opening. But I feel like Wesley's just better prepared. It seems like in a lot of games, there's a position in the opening where Duda takes 45, 50 seconds. In the five-minute portion, that's kind of washed away by the time. In the three-minute portion, that's what sets things off. Yep. It, I, that's just one thing. No, you, I mean, you're right. You also get in some sort of comfort zone in five minutes. You start playing eight games of five minute. I can spend a minute on move 12 if I want in five minute because I still have three and a half minutes after that the time has been used. But when you're playing three minute, you spend all the time. Now you're down to 55 seconds to your opponent's two minutes. And you just don't have time to calculate when the action heats up. Right, exactly. And here we see again, Move 11, Duda taking his time. Wesley over two minutes 15. And And again, it's the same. This is what I'm saying. There's that moment in the opening. He takes a long time. He's out of theory. It seems Wesley's still in prep. And Wesley has also been doing a good job of looking at the match timer. So he's trying to probably strategize around that. As I don't even know how big of an underdog Wesley will be in the bullet, but I would definitely not say a five game underdog and that's what his lead is right now, but he has been keeping an eye on the match clock and he has experience to know if this position say looks level, do I just make a quick draw? So I get another game in, or, you know, the position is slightly better for me. Let me just play it out. I don't mind getting into the bullet as long as uh, I can maintain my lead. So that's what you have to keep in mind as we get ready for the final segment of this match. Indeed. And look at the time, but, in terms of the bullet, if we look at the ratings, well, yes, Duda's 3230. <laughs> Wesley at these are crazy, 3004. But that doesn't again, that just doesn't tell the whole story. I don't think Wesley plays that much bullet uh on chess.com. And one plus one, we, we've talked about it many times. We'll discuss it again uh before the bullet segment. Uh, but that changes the dynamic of uh, you know of of the games of the match because it really adds that element of thoughtfulness and takes away some of the crazy time scrambles. But here, Duda. He's almost below a minute. That's a crazy time disparity. He's down a pun. I don't know. He might be worse here as well. The wow. clock situation. I was doing knight to b5. He is going after the a7 pawn. Knight c7 traps the rook or doesn't wait. There's rook c8 pinning the knight. So there are some ideas, of course, in the position. He has the bishop pair. But Dania feels like he's playing this out of more desperation than actual strength. Yep, and knight c7, rook c8. Such a tricky... Wesley always finding the opportunity to pose problems to his opponent, force him into a decision. Black is better. I don't think white, white is enough for the pawn, Robert. I, it's just looking bad again. Wow. Just not even easy to attack. He's going to bishop h3 to go after e6. That makes sense. But when I see him move g3, Danya, I immediately think knight e5 and knight into these weak squares. He plays knight yeah. g4. And uh, now he can absolutely take the bishop, fix the pawn on the dark square. Duda trying to deploy his pieces actively. H5 is interesting. He defends the knight with knight f6 instead. So confident, so fast, and, and so strong. All around amazing play here. And Duda not able to stem the bleeding. Black's pieces perfectly defended. White's pieces look good. They are not accomplishing much. And as you said, H5 to defend this knight on G4, even if it gives you a second set of double isolated pawns you open the h file you're trading pieces you're in good shape you are and 20 seconds now Duda's just he's he's just not yeah he's shaking his head he can't can't find the zen uh it, it seems like each each position's just not in his style and wesley's able to channel these positions into his territory of preparation and this is I, yeah this is looking very bad again I, I wonder what's going on with duda though because there have been moments throughout this much like right now his vision yeah, is particularly bad, but he's spending a lot of time. He's got to move. It, it doesn't feel entirely necessary. So I just don't think he he has the confidence that he had to start out the match. He was up two games early he on. Really, Yeah, he was. Let's not forget. That's how he started. He started with a bang, and he was playing amazing. And then just something gradually happened over the course of the five-minute portion, which continued in the three-minute portion. Yeah, that's right. And... I'm glad to see so many people here. We have over 16,000 people on Twitch right now. Always awesome. good to have such an audience. 
And yes, I am keeping my right eye on the chat and my left eye on the, the game. So uh, trade of pieces. So an extra pawn still for Wesley. Eight seconds left for Jan Kristoff. Do you trade rooks and get into a minor piece end game where you have a knight, which means you can go from color complex to color complex and the bishop can't? No, he goes straight for it. We've got to keep the rooks, Robert. You know, you've got to keep the rooks and try to try to increase the pressure. But knight d5, now he's got black tied down, white tied down, rook f5 is coming. Oh, the bishop can win the g2. And so methodical, right? That's the word that comes to mind. Thorough, methodical, doesn't rush, activates all the pieces, and uh, just torture here for, for Jan. I feel for him. I feel for him. I, I just hard to make moves at this point. It is. And at the very least, Wesley, what, five minutes left? This will not be the last game. Uh, this will be the penultimate game. And does Duda have chances to hold? He really cannot afford to lose this game. Three seconds. If if he had a little bit more time, I would have said yes. The knight's jumping around. Hit there in 95, knight up three, d3. There's so many squares to account for. Uh it doesn't matter who it is. It's almost impossible not to blunder eventually. Yeah, hither and thither will make Duda shiver, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. I was like trying to, to, you know, I was uh, trying to come up with something there. I was wondering but... where you were going with that. <laughs> well, I was, yeah, I was going to, whatever. We'll talk about that later too. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Seems like we have some stuff to discuss. Okay, so Wesley... Oh, king e5, just total domination. Rook c1, rook e1, mate. And I'm just shaking my head. Just g5 is just a, nope, not mate. a single move. Just taking the air out of him. Hey, one more time, flag. was it rook c1, rook e1, mate? Well, rook c1, bishop takes e4, and then the pawn endgame was winning for black, which is the original idea. Let's which show that. We'll bring up the analysis board. Yeah, so rook c1, bishop takes e4. King e4, rook takes d3. So you sacrifice a bishop for a pawn to win the knight. But after rook c2, Danya and I were thinking this is just winning because of your active king, and you can just go start taking pawns. Yep, or e5, anything wins there. Yeah. Wesley uh, singing. Is he pulling a Parham, or what well, was Parham pulling a Wesley? <laughs> uh, pulling a Wesley means playing exceptional chess yep. and having a very lovely cat who joins you for interviews. And what else? Being super humble. I don't know. I'm just throwing out all the things about. No, Wesley. he's awesome. Wesley is he's a he's a class act, and he is he lets his moves do the talking, and that is the hallmark of a true professional. And uh, that's exactly what Wesley is. He's he's been amazing for a long time, and he's putting that on full display here. Not to take anything away from JKD, he's still very young. He's so accomplished, and he's trying his best here. We feel for him. We don't root for anybody. Uh, but this is just an amazing display by, by Wesley. And for Duda, he is down six points, and he played a line here in this kind of Benoni structure. And his pawn's on g5. He has the pawn d6 that will need to be tended to. Not ideal. He's tilting, Danya. I, I feel pretty strongly that he's just yes, yes, angry. Yes, at five square and Benoni. There's certain openings that they're not bad, but you just – don't really play them un unless you're kind of like, all right, whatever. <laughs> not that he has a terrible position here, but definitely not what he was looking for. Well, he wanted to play F5 and swing that rook over. Uh, you're not getting an F5 when all of these pieces are stopping that pawn from pushing. Right. Dying. This isn't good, man. This is not good. It's a Sibelita's balloon to six. Again, Duda... As we've referenced, he crushed Fabi with a seven-point margin in the bullet. So we won't rule anything out, but he needs this break, Robert. He really needs it really badly. I'm just trying to figure out what he can do in this game, and he's about even on the clock, so that's the good news for him. But the problem is he is struggling in both areas of the board. Uh, the right. Center is closed, so the both areas means the king side, you have to keep an eye on the g5 pawn, the f5 square. The queen side... The a6 pawn will need some tending to. The b6 square could be loose after uh, a knight c4 uh, for, not bishop c4, knight c4. You could also get a b4 type of push in that's thematic. And white's king is going to be safe no matter what. And you can also castle. You could keep your king in the center with king e2. You're spoiled for choice. I was just thinking about what Wesley's singing. It's, it sounds like an opera of some sort. I feel like Wesley, Wesley's opera kind of guy. I don't know. Puccini. It sounds, you can hear him? 
No, it just looks it, just the sort of expressiveness and I don't know the the motions. It doesn't seem like a Eminem. It seems more like I don't know Giuseppe Verdi or something. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to ask him later. Whoa! What, oh, you see Wesley just like I, I thought he was upset. I'm looking. Wait, well, he seems that way, but he has an amazing position and he's up six. But yeah, I saw that shake of the head. Maybe he's saying the wrong lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, his position looks good, so I don't know what he'd be upset about here. <laughs> Maybe a song came on that he didn't like. Well well, <laughs> well said, Donya. That was funny. He fell into a mondegreen. That's a word I learned recently. Why is he so, why is he shaking his head? And you with your fancy vocabulary. No, it's, I, I was, I didn't know this right, but it, that's what it means. It means a lyric that is commonly mis mis uh, cited right like in a song you think it says one thing and really it says another thing how would you just uh you know teach it's people interesting. It's really maneuvering interesting. i don't know are we supposed to be commentating any something else i mean no, why did just... they hire me i thought i could just discuss this look at the c file queen to c7 is coming in <laughs> yeah this doesn't look very good no i, I i'm actually appreciative that you taught me that word i, I now will undoubtedly use it incorrectly <laughs> and i i do enjoy miriam webster you know so my boy miriam <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what else is my boy the c file and this is this is very very ugly this position is a, just a catastrophe for duda yes this doesn't look uh so nice. D6 is weak. F5 is still a problem. The C file under White's control. Wesley singing, having a better time, it looks like right, now. He sacks the exchange. Look, Queen D6 even, but Queen D7, and he's just mowing, vacuuming up the pawns and Black Knights stumbling against each other, and the Rook on C1 is not doing anything. That's a very nice idea, by the way, sacking the exchange here. I like it a lot. And King on H2, perfectly safe. The King on H8 may find itself in harm's way in the near future. But for now, it's just all Wesley in this guy. I'm out of words. I'm out of words. Yeah. I mean, this again, uh, to reiterate, we, you know, we, we want to see great chess. We love both of these guys. Uh, it can be painful to watch uh, this sort of thing happen. But at the same time, we have to give tremendous credit to Wesley. He's been, he's been amazing, uh, for lack of a better word. It takes G7, so measured, so methodical and universal. And here he trades off as two pieces for the rook. He's a pass D pawn for good measure. And it's not actually that easy, at least right now, to see how the game concludes, but it's clear that white it is. It will conclude. <laughs> yes, it certainly will conclude. There's no choice in that matter. But my point is that sometimes we think, oh, two my pieces against a rook, obviously that's winning. And you start looking, wait, if I get a king F6 and knight F7, right. is it that bad? Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. The minor pieces can have a very hard time supervising a passed pawn all the way to promotion, particularly, as you said, in the presence of a rook, which is why Wesley's sort of trying to stabilize, consolidate, maybe get the knight from e3 to d5 and c7. Yep. Yes. And he gets and that he, one. That's a better passed pawn because it's protected by the other pawn. Now knight back to c5. And, and yeah, Duda's done a fantastic job here resisting. Bishop d3, though, tying the knight down to the pawn. Looks like Wesley's going to grind him down one way or another indeed and what what's wants to bring this other knight into the game and he plays wait knight c4 oh that was a chance now knight c3 yeah that this looks better than knight c3 still knight c4 still. <laughs> okay blind spot for both players yeah bishop a4 by the way that might be a nice little win oh you <laughs> not gonna finish this... my thought but you Ugh. I know that's a, that's a perfect descriptor. Still, Bishop A4. I like Bishop. Oh, 90, A4, how about ninety six King H4 G3 mate? <laughs> Put a piece in A4. There yeah, it is. There we go. Rook C3 though. Oh no no. G I thought G3 check, but the King has H3 square. <laughs> well, Jan Christoph Duda will be thrilled to be done with the three yes. minute portion. Um, I am probably looking about as red as Duda feels. But Danya, what a performance by Wesley So. Absolute domination. Every game, every position, preparation, middle games, tactics, positional chess, technique, worst positions. He pulled it off this way and that way and the other way. And on top of that amazing time management, uh, just a tour de force. 
But we still have 30 minutes of bullet. We know what dude is capable of, Robert. So I hope nobody's going anywhere because there's still some intrigue left. Let's see if there's gas left in the tank for JFK. James, sorry, JFK. JFK. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> wow, that was a... Uh, it, that, yeah, okay. So uh, for Duda, he did beat 5 minute car one, eight to 8-1 in bullet. This is a seven-point lead for Wesley. So on this wild note, we are going to send every, send us a break, but we will yeah. have more of the primetime smackdown From between... JKD. No, between Gotham Chess and the one and only oh. Olympic Hammer. If you're a subscriber, please enjoy that. Otherwise, enjoy the ads. Okay. My entire one minute strategy is going into an end game. And oh. I, I just know that in an end game, I'm going to win. Okay. Yeah. It's I feel a good like, strat, though. I feel Serves like this is well. This is like going up against Khabib. It's like you know what's gonna happen. And there's nothing that you can do about it. I, I'm I'm familiar with that reference. Uh, uh ha Hammer, what can we talk about? I, I tell me like, what like, the reference like, is. And you like I'll, sports? I'll, I, I I like sports. Yeah, I like soccer, the best sport in all of the world. Aren't you Norwegian? Aren't you like not supposed to call it soccer? Uh, I lived in the U.S. as a kid, so I, I got into some oh. bad habits. Wow. Never recovered from saying soccer. That's that's pretty, uh... Uh, okay. Where'd you live in the U.S.? Uh, Berkeley, California. I feel like this is way too polite for the SmackDown. I know. But, you it's know, just, it's just... just... <laughs> I feel like I feel like you need like a degree of comfort to engage in like vicious smack talk, and I, I just feel like we've met like a few times. You know, I I can't really sit here and be like, yeah, no, that's my superpower. I'm just too nice. People don't, you know, they they are they're afraid to, to off me. Um, not too happy about losing all my pieces, but what are you gonna do? Yeah, now I have to like buckle down here and try to. actually focus and not have you flag me which is or or that you know you okay say so this, this is my strategy the end game always works okay yeah. that was a blunder by me but it works out kind of okay i'm really not happy with the way i played it wow <laughs> no way you just did that i i this dirty I... dirty man Oh, I'm actually losing on time. No way you did that as well. That was an accident. That that was unintentional. Man. Okay, no more Mr. Nice Guy from me. I grew no up in a, I, I grew up in New York City. If you want to keep talking about childhood. Okay. Th this looks th this this looks pretty decent for me from the opening. I yeah, no, like... I mean the entire opening is just horrible. It's horrible for Black, but somehow now you close down the H file and I'm just better. You think you're better here? Yeah, of course I am. Good control everywhere. I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm creating a little bit of. Uh... How is there I, meta? I'm, I'm... The thing is, when you play an opening as bad as this, when you're equal, you pretty much feel like you're better that's the advantage i see that's fair see i i never make it to that phase of the game generally when i'm playing so aren't you just aren't you just like aren't you just worse now we're, di we're discussing some serious like meta strats here but uh it's, it's, it's bullet it's bullet it's bullet oh, that 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 is good that is good that's nice and positional there positional is my style that's what i do um well, look what we have here Danya <laughs> the cat's meow it's made its appearance finally this stream wouldn't be complete without it this commentary wouldn't be complete without that adorable image and uh wow 
You know, you don't West. sound like a cat person based on how you're reacting. I am. No, I love cats. What are you talking about? I, I love dogs doesn't... and I love cats. It really sounds like you're a cat hater based on how you're talking right now. Whoa. I'm going to tell, tell Wesley. I'm going to let him know. almost going to agree with commentating in the next time, but you just forfeited that opportunity. <laughs> so. The cat, I mean, the cat is live. This is live footage of Wesley. Oh, adorable. Oh, bring the cat back. Yeah, well, we're Okay, well, now we're going to be back to the chest. Wesley So has a seven-game lead. And as you can see on screen, look at the avatar next to Wesley So's name, right down over here. It's that is, that's a cat. Wow, that's now cat. I understand. I actually, I didn't know he had a cat before today's match, I'll be honest. Well, now you know. And the cat I, makes a very frequent appearance on Wesley So's um, matches. Right. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to rub in the fact that I didn't know he had a cat? Not really, but it, so you are a cat person. No, I, I mean, I, I, I like cats and I like dogs. Like, I'm not one of those people who runs away when I visit someone and they have a cat or a dog. Gotcha. Like, I, I wouldn't never... necessarily spend an hour petting them, but you know, I'm somewhere in the middle. Don't worry, a cat will not let you spend an hour petting. Them, <laughs> yeah. so it's, it's okay. Um, <laughs> much less than a minute that's, that's what i've heard <laughs> yeah I mean, the thing is i'm never understood what we can have this conversation later as well but people are like oh, i'm a cat person or a dog person you could be both it's not that hard yeah. anyway chest 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 look <laughs> at jkd note. look at jkd he's back in his chair i think the problem for him right now besides the seven nothing deficit seven nothing seven game deficit that he's facing he needs to start winning like he doesn't have a choice yeah. to oh, make a couple draws to get himself in the you know heat of the moment ready for the next game he needs to just go he needs to be out there sacrificing pieces yep. playing very quickly donna can he do it can he win by seven against another super grandmaster one game at a time it's a cliche but he's got to win this first one in 30 minutes let's remind everybody there isn't an hour there's 30 minutes of bullet there is enough time to play over seven games there are about eight nine games uh somewhere in that neighborhood which leaves his margin for error practically zero, Robert. And he, yeah, he needs to win game after game. He needs to forget about the lead and say, okay, I need to win this game. He wins this game, I need to win the next one. Put everything behind him. It seems he's done that. Let's see how he fares. Yeah, he's going and for there G4. We go. there that's, it is. that's the way. That's the way to do it. Now, Wesley, of course, is not just going to let him checkmate him that easily. He did take, though. He opens up the, uh, the G but file. Be careful. Might have to yep. check. Right, that's very important because you would like to take and then take and then open the whole board up, but there's knight f3 check at the end of things when this knight gets here. Right, and, and again, he wants to get knight takes d5. Maybe f6 to cover the bishop, blunt the no, whoa, <laughs> that is bold. Okay, that looks strange to me. Rook takes d7 and knight f6 is a threat, like those kind of ideas. Nice. Wesley trying to create that tension along the c5. I don't think that helps, though, if he no. takes. Because bishop e5 is still a threat. You lose your queen, but then you take on g7 and you make Oh, nice. in the windmill. Wesley is not happy. Now, he's got a small, you know, uh, he's, he's up seven points, so he can okay, afford wait, to Rook takes e7. Rook d7. Oh, Rook nice. Oh, he missed oh, it. Beautiful. Knight f6. I was calling for it missed earlier. It. You, you did. You saw it immediately. F4, Stop. though, still winning. Yeah, this is still looking great for Duda. But that was but... awesome. Bishop e5 now. Bishop e5, rook d7. Ooh, oh, intermezzo. Not so... Whoa! Bishop e6 and knight takes e4. Three pieces for a queen. Oh, bishop f8 first, even. Yeah, that's, that's, that's nice. Smart. So now it's what? <laughs> Two minor pieces and a rook for a queen? You know, Robert, from my experience, in bullets specifically, this can seem winning. It's very hard to play against a queen. Mark my words. It's very hard to play against a queen. Where do you want me to mark them? Let me know. I, I want. I have an idea of where I want you to play. <laughs> I, I have several I have thoughts a, about this. I have a pen, so I'll mark them. I have a pencil. Wait, why is there a king on d2? So the rook was sacked for the bishop. The king is out in the open. <laughs> plenty of checks. Yeah, you're right, though. Wesley's got good chances here. No, yeah, this is... And there's so many squares to queen e2. It was almost mate. Queen e2, queen f2, for example, and you start mopping up the pawns. Right. That's a lot of pawns. Queen h2, I mean, you can just start vacuuming up, turn the Dyson on, and just take him. <laughs> but look at this. Bishop takes b6, and then white has a pass pawn. Right, yeah. 
well, I don't know who's pushing, Robert. I think Black is also pushing. They both are. The Bishop on F3, multitasker. Stopping yeah. with A8. There's Knight C6 ideas, right? To stop Ooh. that Bishop from uh, Queen G, keeping the A8 square under control. So maybe Queen G2 to stop that. But then the h bond is a progress. Bishop C5, so he's going to B6, B7. He's just going to mm -hmm. push the pawn slowly. Yeah, the gates have opened. E4, he's got to try, but I don't think that works. But this was close. I mean, I, I'm telling you, this took a lot of time off of the match clock, but he can afford that as long as he carries this home. Wesley the game's still going. <laughs> but I think White's going to win. Yeah, Queen D2 now. King is safe. Time. Black King is safe for now, but not for very much longer. Yeah, sacrifice some of your extra material, trade off <laughs> yes. pieces. And Queen G2, nice. Queen G7. Bleeding the clock, which is fine. Queen seven made pre move. Pre move it up. And he's gonna flag him. That is a win for JKD. And he did miss that tactic earlier. And of course, his bullet chest things are going to be missed. But he put together a complete game. And that's what he needs. He started off on a good note. Danya, can he get two, three wins in a row now? This game, this is the crucial game. Six has a different ring to it than five. Wesley is so solid with white, even in bullet. We have a slob. Slob is a good opening that you have B5. There's sort of a Moran structure. This is a very combative line. Wesley's well prepared here. This is super theoretical. He's got to not get caught up in preparation. I know it's weird to talk about prep and bullet, but the stakes are high. They certainly are. And I agree with you. Duda should not be venturing into theoretical waters. Uh, he needs to make Wesley think and then outplay him. That's very difficult to do. Outplaying Wesley freaking so. But it's possible. And he just should not be going into theoretical territory where Wesley has seemed better prepared in this match. Yep, and he is again. Again, we see, and obviously, Dudo not thinking for as long as he did in the three-minute portion, but I think he's in huge trouble already. Look, where is that knight going? Good night. Oh, my lands, and again and again, he's just getting in trouble in the opening. Wesley's so well-prepared. He's, he's dead. I think he's lost for black. Oh. Mm. Yeah, no, maybe he... some chances, but Bishop Look at this. such a nice move. <laughs> it's like an intermezzo that isn't even necessarily Surgeon. needed, but uh, he does it. And why are you not just taking on F6? H6, excuse me. Take well, it he's thinking about F4, I think. He, he might be contemplating whether to play. Nope, just takes it. And I like that. Okay, Duda manages to more or less stabilize, move the rook away. But um, Wesley can try to get his queen to G5, potentially. Cost him a pawn, but the king on H2 mm -hmm. isn't the safest king in the world. He gives up the B oh. pawn. Wesley but he's going after, it. He's going after E4. This is a queen B6, threatens some kind of knight discovery. Oh, as well. nice. Knight G4 ideas. Yeah. Why Time, though. Oh. He's trying to get knight g4 here as well, but it's not going to work knight out. Knight e4 and bishop b4, bishop g3. Wesley brings his rook and he saw it. But queen h4 is definitely on the dock. Definitely. Ooh, king knight. King h8. Yes, now some discovery ideas, but I don't see anything specific. I really want to put that queen on h4, but he's refraining from doing so. Well, bishop takes g3 as a threat. I would sack on h. I would just take on e4 twice, give up that bishop on h6 potentially. Nope, he keeps it. Bishop a6, though. Okay, so you can win in exchange with queen takes d5, gets the queens off. Oh, I blooded the queen! I blooded the queen! What does he think? He doesn't take it! Oh, he missed what it! Are you <laughs> oh my god! That dude just shakes his head. Has Wesley oh not seen god. it? Oh my god, he didn't see it. Wesley didn't react. Yeah, no, he didn't see it. <laughs> oh my lands. Oh, and it's. It, <laughs> this bishop were on f3, you know, that could be a mating net, but no, it's this still is... over. Well, and it's honestly wasting more time. Right. Didn't Wesley did it on purpose. <laughs> oh, that would be next level. He didn't take a free queen. <laughs> no, that goes against such base instincts that I don't think even if he wanted to do it, it would be wrong. It's like the... Well, we'll pull, we'll pull up the uh, analysis board real quick just to show that one more time because... I was oh, like, is my... it pinned? Am I missing oh, a my... pin here? No, 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 no. You were totally right. Bishop E3, where the bishop was, was here. It moved back. Oh. Queen H6. And the move bishop takes h6 was not played. <laughs> what was the idea of queen h6? Can you, like, let's forget about the middle. <laughs> what is he threatening? <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. You're asking the wrong person. Well, unfortunately for JKD, we get back to the live board here. He is now down seven once more. Not too much time on the clock. And for Wesley, if you're looking at this, 22 minutes left. That means there's still time for JKD to win every single game and tie the match. But the clock's ticking against you now. Right. Well, we've seen KD pull out some comebacks in basketball. Will JKD pull out some comebacks in chess? 
I was, I've been roasting that like <laughs> pot of bad coffee for the entire commentary. Yeah, I'll, I'll forgive you eventually, but people are suggesting, hey, maybe it was a mouse slip. He wanted to go to G6 instead of H6. And maybe. That potentially was the case. Didn't look so good for Black regardless at that point. <laughs> but... Yeah, when Wesley was... started to think, I was like, is he, is he going to miss it? Well, I thought maybe he was just bleeding the clock before taking the queen. And it is possible that if that was a mouse slip, he was just being very kind, saying, oh, he slipped. I don't want to take his queen here. But it wasn't kind in the end because he mopped up all the pawns and won. Right. And now not a position conducive to too many winning attempts. Wesley with the strong bishops and the open defile controlled by him. Yeah, this just doesn't... I mean. Duda is, is a fighter. He's going to fight to the last drop of blood. But if Wesley can get another one here, that makes it very, very unlikely. Rook d3 is possible as an intermediate move. That's very nice. Plant that rook on the square. You can also put the bishop back to, no longer back to b5. But let's say king e2, you had bishop b5 check. And here comes the rook. Yeah, b5 or bishop a3. I mean, so many attempts. f5 even. Is good. I like f5. Just go for the center. Mm -hmm. King e2 probably... And necessity. Yeah, then even e4. And there's rookie three check. Yeah. Look at those bishops just cooperating. All of the people. Wesley always has such well coordinated pieces. I know it's, again, it's a trivial statement, maybe, but so healthy in his pawn structure, the way that he arranges his pieces. He's a little good at chess, Don. I don't know if you know. Can you take, yeah, on, G uh, can you take on F3? I was thinking about two? that, too. <laughs> Wait, you I think you might, might have been able to. Huh. Taking yeah. on F3 seems it's very six, possible. I guess. And I'm just trying to <laughs> sacrifice the pieces. But yeah, look what he did. He put his bishop on d5, bishop on c5, rook on e3. The guy plays perfect chess sometimes where all of his pieces are optimally placed and his opponent is just struggling to come up with ideas. He sees everything. He's, he's a machine, as someone tends to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is so the Eva went down, but it wasn't yeah. because of rookie one. Well, he didn't make the most out of this, but now he's got the pass pawn, and, and again he's bleeding more clock, so he doesn't even really need to win. I mean, as long as he even makes a draw. Yeah, but Duda, very nice defense here. He sort of stabilized the situation. Knight on a three doesn't look so good. No. <laughs> and yeah, offering the exchange of bishops. See, that's just. It goes to show, right, Daniel, that if you trade dark square bishops, you're not going to make progress because a light square bishop can't attack dark squares and their inherent limitations to the piece. Mm -hmm. This is just a nightmare. This is a lot lost now. Yeah, I mean, with two seconds on the clock, king c4. I mean, Wesley has so many. It's bishop d4. Stopping every threat. If you notice, it can be easy to miss in the heat of the moment how he's just strangling him. I mean, not a single idea he allows, and that playing style has is uh, a rare sight nowadays. Well, not really, but Wesley takes it to an absolutely different level. Epic. That's why he's so hard to beat, because he is an extremely precise player. Yep. Oh! He did. Okay. Not I, quite. <laughs> just quickly bring up the analysis yeah. board. If White had one more move to take on E4, it's a draw, because wrong color corner with this bishop. So you need those to match. And if you could take on e4, you just sit your king back in the corner to theoretical draw. King d5 says, resign time. Sorry, buddy. That's that. And we have a new game. We have Wesley with an eight-point lead. Yep. Danya, 18 and a half minutes left. I don't think these will be the happiest 18-plus minutes of young Chris Abdul's life. No. He's, yeah, no, definitely not. And uh, when it rains, it pours. Uh, I think that under different circumstances, you know, maybe he could have pulled out a bullet comeback where we won't rule anything out. Uh, you know, the intrigue is possible until the last second. And we remind people that a big portion of the prizes are based on the actual results. So there's a lot on the line. Uh, but yeah, Duda is just, and, and one can only feel, feel the pain. These kinds of matches, you have no recovery time. You talked about this before. Can't take a breath and that's part of the fun, but it's also part of the pain when things don't go your way. Absolutely. And as you said, the prize fund, there's $3,000 to the winner of these quarterfinal matchups, plus $3,000 split by win percentage. And right now, Wesley So, he's getting a heck of a lot of money. Yeah, he that's is. What, <laughs> that's what I'm noticing. And the confidence, 52 seconds. He's, every move is just increasing and en enriching the pressure. It's incredible. He's trading off the queens. If well, the knight goes to b5 to avoid the queen trade, e6 comes, and you get pressure here, rook f1. The rook has to go to f8, and then you take rook on a7. a7. He's in flow, and... 
you know, that's a famous concept, I think, in psychology, coined by the most unpronounceable psychologist of all time. But we just feel it, you know, he's in the zone, one second per move, increasing the pressure. And, uh, and here comes the Nigel Short King walk. Yep, <laughs> exactly. So I'm looking for I'm looking for this king to run out here. Due to trying to hold things together with his knight. Okay. If you could play knight takes c5, that'd be a good move. Right? We talk about yeah. capturing our own pieces. So. <laughs> That's right. Knight d4 to c5. And here comes the king. Yep, king e4, king d5. Sure as the sun will rise. Oh, first he's got to set up. Uh-huh. So now the knight can't go back to e6 because of rook takes e6. It can't go to f5 to win h4, but I don't think that Wesley's so worried about that. No. <laughs> Going after the pawn. Back to d7. And finally, dude, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, knight c5 is a threat, so careful now. I've had enough. That's what he said. And by the way, Wesley's rating, 3,026 in bullet. That's absurdly he, underrated. Yeah, I think he, he might just be a little bit better. Oh, yeah. I, I actually played him quite... Re I mean, this he should be at least 3,200. I mean, it's weird to speak in those terms. All these ratings are astronomically high, but this guy is a... He's insane. Well, here, oh. actually, Duda with a massive defense. It's a draw now. Oh, knight knight of four. No, okay, with oh, D, check. Yes. Oh. <laughs> we both have the same rating. Knight of four, maybe? But I feel like knight D4. Oh, yeah, knight D4. Knight, oh, knight D4. D4. Knight D4. Winning. It wins. Oh, it takes, Duda it wins takes this. Oh, and look at Wesley. That's the first time I've seen him be upset about his mm -hmm. gameplay. He was upset about the music earlier. Right. But now <laughs> he's like, how did I allow this fork? And now I'm down two pawns. Yep. And now it's over. How much time is that? 15 minutes for what will yep. be seven games needed by JKD? He's got to win. He's got to give some scholar mates. I think Wesley's known to miss them once in a while. <laughs> well, maybe we'll see you know, some sacrificial play. Mm -hmm. no, this yeah, we tend to see some fireworks toward the end when and that's fun. Indeed. And okay, the E5 pawn is just done. Rook H4 check. Nice little Kaboom. technique. And there's nothing that White can do here. He's going to go King H1. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh look at Wes. He's trying not to laugh. That's why his hand over his face. <sighs> yeah, it's always funny. <laughs> because you it's never see. GMs on super GMs playing out until checkmate. Right. right. Every second matters, though. There we go. Duda wins one. Seven to 14 is their score. And Duda, the kind of face that is like, yeah, this just ain't going my way. And he's trying to go into the King's Gambit. He's had enough of all the talk about the Queen's Gambit. So here he's making Bobby Fisher proud. And as you see, the odds to win the match, obviously, Wesley's dancing head at the beginning. Didn't look very good because Smarter Chess thought that Duda would win the bullet portion, but then after Wesley went on a tear, won all those three-minute games, of course, he's on top. Right. And, um, well, Duda with the Michaela Maroney not impressed face, <laughs> the universal symbol of, like, meh. But he's trying, and I respect the grind. King's Gambit now going back old school. Yes. And the Queen's coming to H4. There's <laughs> pawn on F7. The pawn F4 is falling. I kind of like this for white. I do, and I think what I've learned is just don't argue with smarter chess because smarter chess is not smarter than chess, but smarter than me also. <laughs> I think it should be renamed smarter than me. <laughs> uh, I don't like the name. That's bad for branding, but I, I see your point. <laughs> All right, h6 played. Bishop takes f4, kind of possible. Bishop e5, yeah, but at, okay, but now f3 becomes possible, trying to shatter the defenses around white's king, potentially. I'm into it. Knight g6 instead. Very clinical. Again, just keeping the f4 pawn, which is shutting down white's pieces from playing to their full potential. Wait, why didn't he take the bishop first? So he could have taken the yeah. queen f2 and went right after f4. Instead, he allows the bishop to reroute itself. This is bad. The problem... Sorry, go ahead. No, I didn't say anything. Uh, no, he just made a very profound point. I wanted want you to repeat. Bishop f4, queen g3, by the way, is, is an interesting tactic. Mm -hmm. uh, but... I was going to say, like, openings like the Queen's Gambit, <laughs> like the King's Gambit, <laughs> are, you know, they're fun, but at a high level, it's important to understand they're just so well analyzed that 
it's just taken some of the intrigue out of these openings. Some people sometimes wondering, why don't they play those openings anymore? It's not out of a fundamental lack of respect for old school openings. Uh, it's not that the players don't want to have fun. It's just engines have, you know, they've made a dent in some of these speculative lines. They have indeed. And, you know, just not going to work out for the most part. And one thing that Black would like here is put G7 to G5 to protect that pawn, but you would have to move the knight first. Four. Oh, that's it's so We're, sad yeah. as a chess player when you win material, but you actually lose material right back. So right, he won an exchange, but the rook is hitting both bishops. Look yeah, at Duda. Pause the game here up an exchange. He bobbed a little bit. Do you see that? Yeah, he's vibing. Bishop c3. Or it's just take on g4, either one. Whatever. Yeah, but rook f8, some chances I would try to create Meta, a back right four. potential. Rook f2, king g1. Rook is trapped. Look at that. And he sees it. And Duda, another win. He's giving himself a fighting chance. Eleven here. minutes, and it'll be and a six-point game. Mm. Mm. Is there enough time for six games if he plays very fast? Remember, remember, you just need to be able to start the last game. And start time. the last game. So, so you basically, need to win five games. Right, which is still difficult considering eleven minutes. But okay, but he needs to start pre-moving everything. He can't start thinking about how to convert this. He needs to get down to business. Yeah, now I have Mulan stuck in my head, so thank you for that. Let's get down to business. Yeah, let's, let's not sing that song in the middle of a chess broadcast, but it is stuck in my head. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't see the new live-action Mulan, did you? 96. 96. Rook, rook no. And that's me. Back okay. Cross, go home, you're through. <laughs> and uh, Duda's not through yet. He's trying his best. Yeah, he's, he's having a better time. I wonder if the stress is kind of off because he knows that Wesley is going to win this match, more or less. So he's a little bit more relaxed, which allows him to play better bullet, perhaps. But on the same uh, token here, Wesley might be too relaxed because he got out to such a big score. So you never know how right. that's going to play out. Yeah, you never do. And uh, now Wesley with a peaceful opening, sort of stabilizing. All he really needs is a draw to stem the tide. And here we do see Duda. Look at the time. He's moving fast. He recognizes the urgency. He hasn't lost hope. And I actually love that, Robert, about these matches and the fighting spirit displayed by these players. You never see them sort of, you know, hanging just, ah, you know, that's that's it. Let's just uh, screw around now. They're fighting to the last drop of blood. The problem is we have a very symmetrical endgame. Wesley with a very savvy strategy because he doesn't lose these endgames often. Just typical Wesley so. Just yep. playing a nice, solid approach. And I think black is better. You have Very both your rooks out. Your king is then f6. It seems like you're a little bit ahead. Oh, 94 is nice to call. <laughs> just to be cool. Takes with the pawn. Just to... I Ma like imagine if he, if he pre-moved 94. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, well, actually... Take d1, and then go rook d2. Don't laugh, Robert. Do not laugh, ladies and gentlemen. Black is better again. Black is much better. You're winning a pawn. He needs to go very fast. He needs to win this within 30 seconds. No, that's not happening. Wesley also has 31 seconds remaining on his clock. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, sometimes you make good points, Robert. I have to confess, despite myself. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, there's a, a doctor in spite of himself, and there's a Danya in spite of himself here. So I, I didn't get it. It's a play. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, so it's pawn B4. Can you just capture it? Yeah, but this is not very winnable, is it? With the spawn structure as fixed as it is. Dude has to try to get his king over to d5 and c4. So push the pawn to b3, get the king to c4, and win that. The good news nice is, move. in this structure, though, Danya, is the g6 pawn isn't all that important because look at how black's pawns, B3's remaining over. pawns, they stop, they stop the play, right? So you have stolen a pawn, but it's like you're not even up a pawn on the king side. Ladies and gentlemen, you took your seatbelts off. Thought we arrived at the garage, turned the car off. Let's put those seatbelts back on for a second. And who's going to rev up the engine? Is it going to be you? I'm, re yeah. I always rev up the, I'm the kind of rev up the engine kind of person. <laughs> you seem like it. Very high energy, needing to prove yourself and just totally. show everybody that you're in a In my cruising in my Ferrari. Yep. So. Yeah, totally a Ferrari kind of guy. <laughs> Hey, you know, I, I hope that Wesley's listening to the song Fast Car by Tracy Chapman. That'd be a good one. Cars by Gary Newman. You've, you've plenty of options here. And Dude is completely winning. He's got to go over the speed limit here, though. <laughs> I was done with the car references for now. 
Wait, I'm he's not, only gonna so. be down five, but there At will four? be. In your case, your mate, pre-move it. Yep, Wesley. Does, Wesley doing. By the way, anybody who's saying, "Ah, oh, why is Wesley?" This is completely within the rules, and he's doing the right thing. Okay, the time match clock is as legitimately a part of the match as the position on the board. He's doing what he can. Yeah, and I know that I saw mention of Fedoseev's match against Alirisa Frusia. What Fedoseev did almost cost him the match. So this is and not. What did he do? Can you remind me? He made a draw in a position where he could have just kept playing for a bunch of moves mm -hmm. and still made the draw against Alirisa. And then oh. Fedoseev did end up winning. Yeah. Uh, but it was a nail biter. So uh, it's not against the rules. It is actually not unsportsmanlike. It's perfectly reasonable thing to do. Both players know the strategy. Both players um, have done been on both sides of wins and losses in these matches so wesley is uh, within his rights and doing absolutely nothing wrong so i no you know, exactly and he's also just a classy person and, and a true professional so he's he has a reputation and then he yeah again well within his rights and and here he's got a great position something went terribly wrong Duda with another vienna king's gambit but this one went terribly wrong he stacked a pawn but look at wesley's pieces sandwiched there in the center not enough compensation. This not looking good. No, it is not. And, and the knight can't be kicked. Down. You you want to play G two takes imaginary piece on F three. That's the best move. <laughs> That's been the theme of the match. Imaginary <laughs> piece. <laughs> Imagine if bonds could move diagonally one square but they, without like capturing. Every now and then. Levitating over to F three. I'm he I'm here for it. Wait. Yeah. Uh, Bishop G five Queen E five. That's a nice find by Wesley. Oh, there's always you, these small tactics. 94. Yes, sir. Nope. Defend the pawn for just so surgical. Yeah, this is not fun for this is, no. JKD. This is a horrific position. But he tries what he can. He's six to open up the bishop. He needs to catch maybe Wesley on some pre move. Some, the queen some trick from my book. <laughs> queen d4 and hope that the queen moves away from the g7 pawn. That's your only hope here. Well, you know, oh, one of the wait. dirtiest tricks in the book. He did it. Whoa. It's exact C5, though. Shutting down all hopes and dreams. Wait oh. a minute. No, 92. Oh, that is a net. That is just, that is beyond nasty. And you can't even stop it. Like, rook no, up to this queen one. God. And it's over. I was going to say, one of the dirtiest tricks in the book is when, let's say, you play rook C8 and your opponent has a rook on C1, right? So, white takes rook takes C8, and he assumes that you're going to recapture the rook on C8, so he pre-moves. But instead, you make another move, for example, attacking the queen. Right. And so, yeah, I actually, I think I called this the Ferruja Trap or the one random trap. I, I'm i here for it. I'm here for it. It makes a lot of sense. If you, you know, your opponent anticipates a um, re response or recapture, they pre-move something, and so you make a move like knight to b5. Right. You've got to do it sparingly. you got to do it once in a while. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, your opponent catches on, and it loses its effectiveness. Agreed. Anyways, I'm not sure why if, if uh, chess.com is paying me to talk about dirty bullet tricks, but Wesley, he doesn't need them. He has the skill. And look at this blockade on e4. He's going to put a bishop on e4. Whoa. Yeah, then you move your king away and play f4. And, H6. and just open up this f file against Crunch. double pawns. Exactly. That's, this is a good illustration of, well, first an attack, but in general, double pawns, right? People are like, oh, well, they can't protect each other. Another thing is if you capture with a pawn in an adjacent file, you leave yourself with isolated pawns. So you can just threaten a pawn and then try to open up the file. And rooks don't do well behind double pawns because you can defend the first one, but not the second one. So it's just a mm -hmm. nightmare of a situation to have. And that's why Duda gave up in exchange. That's a great insight. And um, rook h1, now Wesley trying to prepare h5, although Duda can keep things shut Uh with with the g5 and he's trying to create chances himself queen f5 very resilient even until the very last second of the match okay don't play f3 the queen comes into e2 and even here look at that don't take on e5 because f2 is hanging rook takes f4 threatening both rook h4 and rook f2 this looks like a disaster yeah wow what a turnaround but wait a second there's some beautiful lines here rook f4 queen d8 king g7 h6, h6. Mm -hmm. king g3 exposing the discovery I know what you were trying to do. But okay. I don't know what to do for black now. 18 seconds. And he doesn't know what to do either. So what do you do here? What queen, do you do, da? Okay. He took. 
He was afraid of that H6 move, so he took. No, this is not what you want. Nope. But, but still, I mean, okay. I think Black is winning, okay. Black is not winning. Yeah, you are again with Vladimir Kramnik, okay. No, but I think, <laughs> no, but I mean, okay, I think White is winning. No, but maybe somehow I mean, Rook G5, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Rooks are too good here. Rook takes H5. Yeah, this is maybe not winning, but it's definitely good for White. E3, Rook H7. Now it looks winning. So Napo, 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 Napo wins Pistol for sure. Rook seven, I mean, Rook is on Dota. But okay, I think this is completely winning clearly for, for White and uh, Rook H2. All right, yeah, this is winning. Oh. For somebody. E2? E2. Uh oh. Severing the connection between the rooks. And wait a sec. Why can't even deliver perpetual, Robert? Rook G7, King F8. You can take and take on F2. F2. Oh. Yeah. Wesley always has that trick in the end. Oh, or Rook G7 and Rook F7. Oh, that was also an option here. I don't know why I'm getting this excited about this game, but. Because you love end cool. games. You love end I games. I do love end games. I always say I don't like them on my stream, but at my heart, I, I feel like end games are. They're beautiful. Look at the perpetual. There's so much tactics and so much under the surface of an endgame that looks completely innocuous. And that's amazing. And what speaking of amazing, this repetition here. Yeah, it, it is amazing. The king can't, can't, can't escape. <laughs> Not every day. Yeah, exactly. And we enter Bizarre. the final game of quite possibly the final game of the match with a minute left on the clock. And a six point lead retained by Wesley Sell. Wesley's a little bit good. Just no, I'm not doing my Wesley Sell impression, by the way. No. Everybody asking. No. But Wesley, he'll move on to face the winner of Hikaru Nakamura versus Vladimir Fedoseyev. And Hikaru, of course, is the favorite in that matchup, but I would not be counting Fedoseyev out, out if I were all of you in the audience here. Uh, Fedoseyev, a very strong player whom Hikaru respects a lot and said as much in the post-match interview um, last time we saw him. So that match will determine who Wesley faces. And if Wesley does face Hikaru Nakamura, we saw Hikaru beat Wesley in the championship last year. I, I don't know. It, it's always difficult for anyone to play Hikaru, but Wesley has the style that if he's in tip-top shape, he really can go head-to-head -head with Hikaru. Maybe the bullet is where Hikaru has the biggest advantage, but yeah. Wesley will definitely make that a very serious match. And if Fedoseyev wins, of course, Fedoseyev has a chance against anybody, including Magnus, Hikaru, and... Bullet. Yeah, Fedoseyev is a, is a good friend of mine, and I you know, I believe in him. I think he's, he's an amazing player. He's given Hikaru trouble. But, of course, Nakamura is unmatched across the board, really. And uh, we'll see. I mean, Wesley will have to really bank on the five- and three-minute portions. We see his prowess in the three-minute portion, particularly now in two matches. Uh, incredible. Yeah, well... And it looks like we have some. We have some. Wesley's like, what? Yeah, Wesley's gone. He's like, come on, this match is over. I'm getting my cat. Although, if you think about it, a draw, because some of the prize money is based on win percentage, a draw helps, at the very least, helps Duda, right? So, not that they're really counting the dollar bills. Maybe they'll just agree one in the spirit of the gentleman that they are. I mean, that's not the worst timing for... I've had some issues with uh, internet disconnections and timing recently. I think I know all about that, but... <laughs> yep. Well, we know how the match has concluded in yep. Wesley So's favor. We were just talking about you know, a potential matchup with Ikaru Nakamura. We'll see if Ikaru can get through Fedor Uh Danya, it was really impressive by Wesley, though. I mean, we really have to give him credit because he was losing to start the match. He was yes. down two games in the five minute portion before winning the last couple to even that up. And then the three minute Wesley. So is the Incredible. best player in the entire world in three plus one time control. You heard it. Here. I mean, the speed confidence, the ability to recover from a loss, especially as you pointed out, Robert, the first two games Duda went out of the gate so strong, but the, and also the opening preparation legendary. Let's not forget Duda himself is an opening juggernaut in so many games. Wesley displayed incredibly deep preparation across the board in many different openings, both colors, as well as surgical filigree precision in converting advantages in every time control. He had the whole package today. This is a well-deserved win. We feel for Duda. He tried his best. He fought very hard, but today was not his day. And then congratulations to Wesley. Indeed, we will have the players on for a post-match interview, but for now, enjoy the finale of the primetime SmackDown between Gotham Chess and Hammer. Flagged. When here I'm just getting annihilated.
Oh man, and people will see this. I will yeah. be humiliated. Yeah. It's a disaster. Yeah, it's it's really it's really not good. Oh, man. man, it's gonna we, we have it comes down to okay. Oh yeah, you do this thing where you don't resign, right? No, I never resign. That yeah, it's a it's a decent strat. Wow, this is the it's a close it's a close match. Are you nervous? Shut up. Yeah, so here I didn't put my knight on h6, mm -hmm. which I should have. Now this becomes a bit uncomfortable. Like this the other day on stream. Oh, you played should... against me on stream the other day? Yeah, remember toward the end, you like challenged yeah. me. It, it did not go well. How did that go? Do you remember what I said right before sending you a challenge? Uh, love your stream, B uh, big fan from Norway. Uh, I don't believe that is what I said. Okay, what did you say? I believe I said something like, play me noob. I don't really, I don't have recollection of that. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I can definitely see you saying that. Uh, what was the score again? <laughs> it, it, I just like, we played a bit, you know? Yeah. It was interesting. It was, comp it was competitive. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I believe the score was quite significant to my advantage. I, I, I don't remember, I'm sorry. I, I, I think it was 6-1. Positions also resembled this one, I should say, in, in, the, in that match. I'm, I'm liking my chances. Yeah, this is, uh... Oh, you clutched it out. You clutched it out. Let's go, good. let's that go. That That's good. how you do it, people. After an excellent quarterfinal matchup, we have both players on the call, Wesley and young Christoph. Thanks for joining us. Wesley, have to start with you. Congratulations on what was a very impressive performance. And I must ask, you started off down two points. How did you write the footing, you know, not only tie the score, but then go on to really have one of the most impressive performances ever in the three minute time control? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, actually, yeah, I just, uh, I started with half a point out of three and uh, I just took a deep breath and uh, tried to move on, forget about the past and focus on the current game. That's, you know, with Blitz, it happens so, so quickly and you have to focus on uh, one game at a time and, and forget about what happened in the past, win or lose. Yeah, how do you keep that composure though? Because a lot of people will go on tilt, but it seemed like you were still pretty calm throughout. Yeah, I just took, take a deep breath, try to play solidly, try to play what you know the best. Uh, try not to blunder anything. If you can make a couple of draws, usually the tilt will go away. Um, try to play positions that you that 
you are comfortable in and try to get opening positions where you're happy and don't take uh, unnecessary risks. Uh, but of course, it's easier said than done. And also the, uh, if you're, it depends also on your opponent. Yeah. Well, Jan Christoph, uh, sorry that the match did not go your way, but congrats on a very well-played match nonetheless. Uh, from your perspective, what do you think contributed to the turnaround after the initial uh, great start in the five-minute portion? Yeah, I think that this night of game was good pressure. Like, um, I think I outplayed him, but somehow like I couldn't have found like, a pincher, and I decided to go for his end game. And it was very like uh, heartbreaking when I lost this one versus two. So yeah, and after that, I mean, it started uh, to go downhill. Since then, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and in the next day, in the next game, I yeah, I think I lost due to the disconnection. Like, okay, it was I was. Definitely lost in this Queen M game, but still, uh, it felt like you know, it was good. I mean, to reach this <laughs> Queen M game at all, so yeah, yeah. And since then, I yeah, started to drink definitely like I tried to yeah, forget about it and to focus on chess, but I was, so it wasn't, yeah, I, I just couldn't do it. And yeah, and Raji also played very well, like especially in the three plus one section, I just couldn't yeah, like, predict any of his moves, so mm -hmm. yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. And one question for you, Wesley, and congrats again on an amazing match. Uh, do you sort of think through the strategy before the match in terms of where you want to be after each section, where you consider yourself a favorite, or does that is that not part of your preparation? You just decide to play one game at a time. How To what extent do you think that through? Yeah, I mean, it's very hard to predict exactly what would happen before. But I think it's pretty obvious uh, that Jan Kristoff is a better bullet player than me based on ratings so I kind of needed to be ahead by uh, preferably two points before the bullet so I was keeping that in mind and uh, also I don't really want to be behind in the five minute portion either and uh, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah I just have to keep in mind that hopefully I'll be up a game or two before the bullet but and then uh, because of my lead during the bullet games, I could kill time in, in many of the games. And, and that worked well. Yeah, but uh, I'm yeah. sorry. Sorry, Wes, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to ask uh, Jan Kristoff, you know, on your side of things, when, when it wasn't going your way in the three minute, did you have a number in mind that you need to be down by this many points to have a chance in the bullet? Yeah, I actually lost control over the score. So, you know. I was quite surprised to see that this, you know, 12-5 or so, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, I just, you know, yeah, I was blundering like in every game, I, so three plus one, so it was definitely like, um, you know, hard, hard to keep the score and uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely, I mean, I yeah, should have done something, I mean, but I don't know what exactly, so. Um, right. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, but I must say also that it was I knew it was going to be a very tough match because I played Jan Kristoff two years ago, but he's improved a lot as a player. He's become more stable. His openings are better. And I knew he felt very comfortable in unclear and complicated positions. So actually, he was getting very good position with this Bishop G5 Italian game. So so I, I, I had to avoid that at all costs. Before the match, I wasn't sure exactly if I'm going to get good positions out of the opening, but I was just trying to, to get the feel of where I'll get comfortable positions. And of course, what happened in the three minute portion was totally unexpected for everyone. Yeah, and you know, speaking of getting comfortable, it seems like your cat is uh, very comfortable in your arms right now, Wesley. So uh, <laughs> we all love your cat. And I, I do have a question for you because were you listening to music during the match? No, I actually, no, I, I was singing. Okay, that's right. We, we thought you were singing, but we weren't sure if you were also listening mm -hmm. to music. So, you know, what kind of music do you listen to or were you singing to, you know, help you out to the match? Oh, yeah, it's funny. I was listening to Bee Gees yesterday. Nice. So the songs are stuck in my head. I was Where's listening that? to Bee Gees this morning, you know. But from the you stayed alive. You stayed alive this match. Yes, yeah, you did. Staying, staying alive, yeah, joke, jokes on me or... <laughs> yeah but 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 it's fine because i was i knew i was tilting in the very beginning of the match so i just had to change the rhythm and i had to change the setting right away 
<laughs> so I figured singing and talking to myself with the microphone off, with the microphone muted won't hurt anybody. And uh, it, it worked. It made me feel more comfortable than just try to forget about the tilt. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And young know, Chris, if you weren't listening to anything, right? You were just playing no music or anything? Yeah, trying, trying, yeah, to play guitar, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of soft, right. obviously. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Like some players are very distracted by music, while some players, like Hikaru, I guess, play better with music. Or I don't know. If Daniel, do you listen to music? Well, sometimes, but I play worse. But I still listen to it because I'm too, <laughs> addic too addicted to music. <laughs> I know I'll play badly regardless. So. Yeah. Well, we're going to let you two go, but one last question for you, Wesley. Uh, you will face the winner of Hikaru and uh, Fedoseev. And, you know, we know your history with Hikaru, including the final of last year's speed chess championship. Uh, but what are you going to do to get ready for that matchup? Or are you going to wait to see who you play? Uh, yeah, I have to wait to see who I play. First of all, I think they play on December 3rd, right? I, something like that. I haven't checked the date. Something but very not for a while, yeah. Yeah, so first of all, yeah, we have the Magnus, uh, the first Magnus chest tour this Sunday. So it's going to be a longer time control. And I'm going to play in that tournament. That's going to take quite a bit. And uh, we'll see what happens. Hikaru is clearly the favorite in that match. And uh, in any match, unless against Magnus, he's the favorite. So it's going to be uh tough uh yeah i don't uh, really want to think about hikaru yet but i'm going to have to play <laughs> a lot of bullet games and and blitz well that makes sense and in the meantime again young chris i'm sorry the match didn't go your way but we always love having you in the field you made it through a tough invitational just to get here so uh we're definitely proud of you M many fans out there who are supporting you and wesley to you another great performance another excellent match and Please say hi to your cat for me. Uh, you know, Zanzibar, cute, the cat. I love cats. So uh, we really appreciate you joining us for the post-match interview. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank you. Yeah, great match. Yeah. There you heard it from the players. It was a tough match. They really have great respect for one another. And we're starting to have great respect for Yavrakurt 40 because, no, this isn't a repeated graphic. This FIDE master wins the $75 guest the move every single time. And Dragon B70... It looks like the throne. You've been kicked off it. You're in second with 50 bucks. And Indian Lad and Grandmaster, $25. And congrats again to Lapri and Ananth uh, Narayan SE for gaining some memberships to chess.com. That's fantastic good fun stuff. Good to see people engaging uh, with, with the match. And speaking of matches, we got so many more coming up as we see these mouthwatering names. Wesley, uh, of course, advances, but Vladimir Fedosev and Ikara Nakamura, that is a heavy hitter matchup that we'll have on uh, December the 3rd, I think we said. That's what Wesley said, so. Yeah, yeah, that's the word on the street, but we got some guy whose initials are MC. Uh, that guy might have something to say uh, about the proceedings of the SEC as well. So, so much stuff coming up ahead. Certainly, we have our remaining quarterfinal matchups before we get into the semis and eventually the finals. But Danya, this was an excellent display of chess from Wesley So. As he said himself, when he got down two games, he was trying just to find his footing over the board, get positions that he felt comfortable in. And most importantly, he did not want to freak out and let the match get away from him. He is amazing, right? The way he played that match leaves a lot to study, honestly, on just how he was able to outplay such a strong player like Jan Christoph Duda. Absolutely. Uh, we talked about all of the amazing skills that he displayed today, uh, including, but not limited to opening preparation time management and just uh, presence of mind, lack of tilt. He talked about some of it in the post-game interview and uh, all of that came together in a nice package, a consummate professional, very classy person and a joy to watch, not to take anything away from JKD who put up a tremendous fight, but Wesley, the deserved winner today, Robert. I would agree with that. And, you know, he plays so well that I feel stumped and I'm always just calling his chest amazing. And I was like, well, Robert, mm -hmm. you're getting repetitive. But that's is the amazing. type of performances that Wesley so gives us. He moves on to the semifinals. His record in the Speed Chess Championship is really something that you just have to look at. And be like, that guy only gets defeated by Hikaru Nakamura. And if you look at his match history, Magnus, Hikaru, those are the people who have taken them down. So Wesley, 
He knows his work's cut out for him. He calls Icar the favorite in any matchup he plays, except if he plays Magnus Carlsen. He has more chess to be played in longer time patrols, and that adjustment can be difficult too. But Danya, enough about the players. I want to thank you for Uh being my co-host today. I know we have our friendly ribbing, but at the end of the day, I'm always so thrilled that you join me for the commentary. I have a great time. I also learned quite a bit from you. So thanks for teaming up with me today. I wouldn't think of doing it with anyone else. I always enjoy it, Robert. You're awesome. And yeah, ribbing aside, I always have a great time and you're a big part of the reason why. And the other big part of the reason why is of course, the thousands and thousands of you who were joining, joining us throughout this match. A, a huge shout out to everyone taking time out of their busy Tuesdays uh, and watching this amazing match. Wait, by, Tuesday, by Tuesday, you do mean Thursday, right? Thursday. <laughs> I can't even say this properly. I was thinking about title Tuesday. And so it, it escaped my mind, man. But who knows what day of the week it is anymore? It's times have changed, haven't they? I, I quite literally just told you what day of the week it was. It's Thursday. I know so, it's Thursday. Yeah. No, so I, we were, I disagree, Robert. It's Tuesday. It's actually, it's by my, my uh, rules. It's Tuesday. Oh no, not this. With the T it's the same. Okay. Anyways, we'll leave that for the next match, but all, <laughs> all jokes aside, an amazing match. And Robert, thanks to you. And thanks to everybody for, uh, for watching. Yeah, I definitely want to thank all of our moderators, our producers behind the scenes, making this such a seamless broadcast. You really make it our lives so much better by chatting with us. It becomes much more enjoyable. So thank you once again for being a part of the chess community and for uh, being a fan of chess.com and the events that they uh, put on for you. So on that note, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. We will see you (laughs) soon for more chess action and more from the Speed Chess Championship brought to you by chess.com. Give up that bishop on h6, potentially. Nope, he keeps it. Bishop a6, though. Okay, so you can win in exchange. The queen takes d5, gets the queens off. Oh, I'm blooded the queen! I'm blooded the queen! What does he think? He doesn't take it! Oh, he missed what it! Are you <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> that dude just shakes his head. Has Wesley oh not seen God. it? Oh, my God. He didn't see it. Wesley didn't react. Yeah, no, he didn't see it. <laughs>